Hello? Ayan. Check. Check. Naririnig ako. Check. Check. Mukha na naman akong kalbo rito. Check. Check. Kailangan na kaganito talaga. Kahit magulo, kahit walang supply. Check, Mike. Check, check. Magtatanggal talaga ako ng isang headset. Ayan. Okay. Backdrop, no? Iba na nga pala backdrop natin for today. Yeah, so yun, we'll send another one. <laughs> Hindi yung audit, national deployment, participant, block drop. Ay, shock, bakit ba dito? Okay. for today. Change the backdrop na po tayo. Fifteen to sixteen. Mike, check, check. Mike, check.
sakita, laging matamlay. Kami na rito, handang umalalay. Tumawag ka lang, aming kaibigan. Pagkatangin, abot lahat, mamanggagaw ang Pilipino. Sa may kalayunan at sa kabundukan, magparamdam ka lang, kami nandyan na kaibigan. Abot ang pesta ng testa ang iyong probinsya. Ika'y mangarap kahit na mahirap, kung tagumpay ang iyong hala. Magsalay ka at huwag mong sayangin, panahon mo, aming kaibigan. Itanin, abot lahat, mamanggagaw ang Pilipino. Sa may kalayunan at sa kabundukan, magparamdam ka lang, kami nandyan na ka. Abot ng testa, ng testa ang iyong probinsya. Good morning po. Good morning, ma'am. Morning. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Good morning, 
Morning po, magandang umaga sa lahat. Sa may kalayunan at 
Diyan na kaibigan Abot ng testa Nang testa Ang iyong probinsya Magparamdam ka lang Kami nandyan na kaibigan Abot ng testa Nang testa Ang iyong probinsya Abot ng testa Nang testa Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. As we are live stream today via YouTube, may we uh, request that for some of our participants who will not present today or who will not be uh, part of the presentations today with our program, uh, you may uh, you may attend this uh, activity via YouTube. Our YouTube link is here in the chat box. Maraming salamat po. Good morning again. As we uh, before we officially start our program today, we will have a temperature check for our participants. Kindly access our Mentimeter link here in the chat box. Uh, we highly encourage all our participants to 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 take part on this uh, mini activity. Let us know if you have any difficulty in accessing the Mentimeter link. Uh -huh. As you can see in your screen, you may you may notice that majority or most of our participants feels good or great today. It is delightful that uh, most of our participants do have a positive perspective today as we go through this program. Some also feels happy and energetic. You see in our word cloud today that um, many of our participants are still having or doing their response or responding to our Mentimeter. So please keep it coming. 
happy and energetic we see here. Of course, scary boom boom lang. And we have here, we have your very much good. All right. So that's a good sign for all our participants that they have a great, uh, great breakfast today. Also in the chat in the chat box, we also see some of the responses from our participants. They they feel blessed, excited, and also they're doing good. That's great to hear that all of us here do have uh do have a great morning. So we hope that uh at the for the rest of the day and up until tomorrow we'll have a good uh, a very positive uh energetic uh energetic and great um and and great uh what do you call this and great um feeling as we as we start off and as we end our program and uh tomorrow. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate our participants in engaging in this mini activity. We hope that uh, for the rest of the day, we will hear from you, especially on the Q&A portion. We'll start off at exactly nine o'clock. So please do make sure that you that you finish your um breakfast or you do your CR break. So you can focus on for you can focus on the next discussions that we will have this morning. Again. Uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, we have a temperature check for our participants. You may access our Mentimeter link here in our chat box. Also, we are live streamed via YouTube. So again, good morning to our participants who are joining or viewing and viewing in the YouTube. Also, please do note that your attendance, uh, your attendance, our attendance for today is also uh, is also here in the chat box. So please do access that. Make sure that you accomplish uh, before the before uh, the end of the day. So here is our attendance sheet, and also we encourage our participants to use our backdrop. This will be used on uh, today and tomorrow. So we'll have a good photo, uh, photo op later. Also, for us to properly address you, please do use the naming convention, uh, the the following naming convention, as uh, stated in our chat box. Oh, there we go. Here in our Mentimeter, most of our participants feels great, good, fine, and excited. We hope that up until tomorrow, uh, you'll have the same vibes as you go through this activity. All right, it's uh, five minutes ago before nine o'clock. So please do make sure that you accomplish your, uh, your attendance and also this um, temperature check that we have here.
there we go. Thank you very much to our participants who joined here in our temperature check. And uh, again, the majority, majority response from our from our participants this morning is they feel great, good, and happy. Maraming salamat po sa pagpa-participate po muli sa ating mga, sa ating, dito sa ating mini activity. Again, we would like to, we would like to uh, reiterate your attendance, your attendance for today, also the use of your back, uh, the use of our backdrop uh, as well for us to have, uh, for us a good look during the photo op. We also would like to encourage our participants to use the naming convention as suggested in the chat box. And since we have a maximum uh, maximum participants here in our Zoom, you may access our, uh, uh, since we are live stream now in YouTube, you can access it now down below in our chat box is the link for our YouTube live stream. Two minutes to go. Please your uh, your answers. Uh, please keep it coming here in our uh, Mentimeter. A lot of responses here from our from our participants, as you can see in our word cloud. Many say that they they're feeling good. They're better than yesterday. That's really nice to see that there's a lot of positive perspective here, and that's uh, this is highly appreciated. Even if that there's a lot of schedules that we are that we have here, uh, we also appreciate that that your presence here and um and giving us time to attend here in the national uh in the national deployment for training regulations, cats, and also assessment. It's already nine o'clock in at nine o'clock here in our clock. So we request everyone to settle down as we start our program. Maraming salamat. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the day one of 2022 national deployment of newly promulgated training regulations, competency assessment tools, and assessment piece today, 15th of September, 2022. I'm Mayroli B. Baloloy. And I'm Jacqueline Maxalin, and we will be your MCs for today's event. To start our, our program, we would like to invite everyone for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem, followed by Invocation and Test the Way. Ilagay po natin ang ating kanang kamay sa kaliwang dibdib at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ang isang mga tao at mo'y tatumpay na 
kasama namin, pakinggan mo po ang pagtawag namin sa iyong banal na pangalan. Basbasan mo po ang aming pagtitipon at kami kaluguran mo sa araw na ito. Pagyamanin mo po, Panginoon, at maging nakaayon sa iyong kalooban ang aming pagkikita-kita mula sa simula hanggang katapusan. Masalamin nawa namin ang layunin mong dakila sa aming buhay at may sagawa namin ngayon ang aming mga gawain na may kabutihan at kapwa. Kami po ay naninikluhod sa iyong harapan na kami iyong patnubayan at iwaksi sa aming kaisipan ang anumang masasamang kaisipan Inggit at pakikipag-alit sa aming mga kasama. Bigyan mo kami ng sapat na lakas at katalinuhan upang maibahagi naman namin ang aming makakaya sa aming mga kasama sa pagtitipon na ito. Panalangin namin ang lahat ng ito sa pangalan ng iyong bugtong na anak na si Jesus. Amen. All united we answer the test, the call. We raise the test, the banner high. With our partners we serve proud and tall from day to day we strive to address the needs of our labor force provide the skills that open doors excellence in world-class work access to success for everyone with the power of information proper value and education to the hands that build the nation doing it the test away rain or shine we keep alive the hopes and dreams of workers throughout this land doing the best we can immediately make our stand truly dedicated to the task Wala rin ako naririnig. Nawala ako. On behalf of our TESDA Director General Danilo P. Cruz, we would like to give our sincerest appreciation and gratitude to everyone for your support and participation in this key activity. Before we officially start, may we remind our participants on our virtual meeting protocols. First, we have note that this activity is recorded and also streamed via YouTube. Check your internet connection, headset, microphone, and camera. Keep your microphone on mute when not speaking. If you would like to talk, click the hand raise icon or say permission to speak, then wait for the facilitator. 
and then you may use the chat box for deployment related questions. Be fully present and participate actively. Stay focused and avoid multitasking. Also, accomplish the attendance and evaluation forms. And kindly follow the naming convention below. Region underscore agency, office designation, first name, and last name of the participant. Our agency is blessed to have our supportive leaders in continuous guidance, which serves as our agency's pillar, headed by our Director General, DG Danilo P. Cruz. We also would like to thank our Deputy Director General for Policies and Plans, DDG Rosana A. Urdaneta. We also have the Deputy Director General for TSD Operations, DDG Aniceta D. Bertiz III. We also would like to acknowledge the following executive directors from the executive offices. Executive Director of NITSD, Director David Bibungalion. We also would like to acknowledge Executive Director of Romo, Director Rosalina S. Constantino. We also have our Executive Director in Certification Office, Director Maria Susan B. De La Rama. The Executive Director of Partnership Linkages Office, Director Juliet O. Orozco. And of course, the Executive Director of Qualifications and Standards Office, Director Lorenzo Emanuel L. Guillermo. We also acknowledge the following technical experts for the following qualifications. Josefe L. Garlitos, a technical expert for handloom weaving upright NC2. We have the technical expert and for, uh, for, the, for the same qualification, Alice A. Pañales. We also, we also have the, the technical expert for caregiving newborn to preschooler NC2, Mom Bernadette D.C. Ilagan. Our technical expert for caregiving as well in newborn to preschooler NC2, Ms. Sharon V. Timatunak. Also, the technical expert for caregiving grade schooler to adolescent NC2, Dr. Joel John A. De La Merced. Our technical expert for caregiving grade schooler to adolescent NC2, Mom Marietta M. Serna. We also would like to acknowledge the technical experts for caregiving elderly, Ms. Mila Flor Valdez, Maria Cristina P. Bermudez. Technical experts for caregiving clients with special needs, NC2, Antonio Alvin C. Cobangbang, Mayra Soledad E. Cobangbang. Technical experts for beauty care, nail care services, NC2, Clarina A. Cabayan. Technical experts hairdressing NC2, Manolito Don Donilia. We have here as well our technical expert for domestic work NC2, Ma Mar Maria Elma P. Gatiera and Mom Gloria Bekensi. Our, uh, also, we have Sir Arnedo E. Domingo, Mom Ana Marie O. Aldesimo, Mom Renea C. Bugasha, and Mom Amy Gloria. Technical experts for barbering NC2, Andrew I. Galindon. Technical experts, programming Java NC3, Romel B. Reusi. Technical experts for commercial air conditioning installation and servicing NC3, Rock Servicing, Dom Rock NC2, Chris Bernardino. Joining us today, our ROD chiefs, UTPRAS, CAC, and EBT Focus, TBI and TD, TBI administrators, TTI and TBI representatives, assessment center managers, assessment center representatives, industry associations, executive office representatives, and of course, the QSO staff. Flash on your screen is our program for today's event. 
after the national anthem, doxology, that's the way, a run through on the virtual meeting protocols and acknowledgement of the participants is the statement of purpose and official deployment of the 13 PR and CATS. Next is the opening message. And this will be followed by the level of expectations from the participants, then the overview of qualifications being deployed. From there on, we will proceed to the instructions and guidance from the executive offices. After that, we will take a one hour break and executive pre office presentations will be continued in the afternoon session. As we continue our afternoon session, the following executive offices will give their presentation. We will proceed to the presentation of the following PR, CATS and assessment fees, caregiving clients with special needs NC2, caregiving elderly NC2, caregiving grade schooler to adolescent NC2, caregiving newborn to preschooler NC2, domestic work NC2, handloom weaving upright NC2, program Java NC2. We will conclude on Q&A for the said qualification. Flash on your screen as well is our program for day two of for day two of this activity, which will be held tomorrow with the same link. First up, we'll start with the registration, also the recap of day one, and uh, followed by the continuation of the formal presentations of PR, CATS, and AFs for the remaining remaining qualifications. Uh, hairdressing NC2, hairdressing NC3, beauty care, nail care services NC2, barbering NC2. RAC service, servicing, dog rack, NC2, commercial air conditioning installation, and servicing, NC3, followed by the question and answer. And then we'll have our lunch break. This will be, uh, this will be followed by the workshop mechanics, workshop setting up, the workshop with, uh, on setting up the training assessment infrastructure, presentation of workshop output, post test, and then we'll conclude with the closing ceremonies with the activity evaluation and way forward to be given by our executive director, Director Lorenzo Emanuel Guillermo. To present the statement of purpose and to officially deploy the 13 PR SCATs and assessment fees, please give a warm virtual welcome to the QSO Executive Office, Director Lorenzo Emanuel Guillermo. Thank you, Mai. Uh, warm greetings to everyone, the participants in this uh, deployment of uh, promulgated training regulations, competency assessment tools, and assessment fees. Uh, I hope everyone is, as I was, you know, I was uh, watching the slide on the temperature check. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that we are uh, all feeling well and good and uh, in the best of, of spirits. Uh, we are very, it's very unfortunate that uh, we have an overshot of the number of participants. However, they can access the presentation for today and tomorrow via YouTube. Uh, the link uh, uh, will be provided. And if uh, you have questions for those watching on YouTube, if you have questions, you can, you can type your questions in the live chat. And uh, we have staff uh, who are monitoring your questions and rest assured that they will all be attended to. <clears throat> now, uh, coming to the importance of this activity that we're having today and tomorrow, oh, uh, actually, this is the second batch already. We had our first batch yesterday with our regional directors and our provincial directors to give them an overview of the qualifications uh, that are going to be deployed the, with, the, with the corresponding training regulations, competency assessment tools, and assessment fees. And uh, the process of deployment is a very, very significant process, very important process, because uh, this will ensure 
the effective and efficient imp uh, implementation of the training regulations, the competency assessment tools in relation to the program to program registration as well as assessment and certification. We all know that in TESDA, these are the two core processes that we implement down the field. Yes, the program registration and the assessment and certification. And in the context of the, the qualifications, the TRs, the cuts and assessment fees that are being deployed now, the concerned executive offices uh, will provide during this deployment the necessary guidance, instruction, and directives to address issues raised and ensure the proper and correct implementation of the TRS CATS assessment fees that we are now deploying. So if, uh, if uh, in the course of the presentations you have clarifications to make, take advantage of the presence of the executive directors who are now around or the representatives so that your, your concerns uh, pertaining to their offices shall be effectively addressed. When I came in uh, as the executive director of the Qualification and Standards Office, the first reform that we work on is the adoption of the policy, the no RLA, no deployment policy, meaning that the QSO will not deploy any training regulation, uh, uh, cuts or assessment fee if, no, if the if the, if the regional lead assessors have not been capacitated by the certification office. We know for a fact that programs cannot be registered unless there are, there are assessors available and trainers available so that uh, the necessary infrastructure, training and assessment infrastructure can be well established. Hence, the, the no RLA, no deployment policy, which ensures that uh, only those qualifications uh, that have uh, successfully, uh, that the certification office has successfully completed the, the capability building program uh, shall be deployed. And the different executive offices of TESDA are, are strongly working together in implementation of these uh, TRs, ads, and assessment fees. And they have been invited to participate in this nationwide deployment as well. Now, uh, the, during this deployment, the Qualification and Standards Office, together with the NITESD Certification Office, ROMO and PLO will assist you in expanding the areas uh, of uh, the current uh, training infrastructure and in preparation for program registration. We will provide you assistance how you can be guided to adhere to specified guidelines defined in the TRs and in order to ensure that TVIs will not be deemed non-compliant in the event of a compliance audit. So actually, you may not have your questions now. You may not be aware of these issues and concerns now. At least your attendance in this deployment, in this national deployment, connects you to the appropriate office where you can ask your questions or when, where you can send your questions later on. If, if uh, you cannot access, if you don't have access to them, then uh, you can, of course, your questions or issues and concerns later on through the Qualification and the Standards Office. And rest assured, we will relay your issues and concerns to them because uh, the executive offices are now working together in, in, the, in the implementation of our training programs and assessment and certification services. This uh, national deployment also will increase the opportunities in the formation of infrastructures for assessment in your respective areas. And uh, most of all, optimize the effectiveness of the application of assessment policies as outlined in Section 4 of the TRs and the implementing guidelines. For the migrated qualifications, this, will, this national deployment will be an opportunity for you to see 
what has been changed, what has been improved, and what has been migrated, and what should be what should be noted in order that your proper implementation of the migrated programs or even with the new programs are guaranteed and you have the necessary assistance provided to you at the right point in time. What do you expect from this? Uh, what do we expect to achieve from this national deployment with the ROD chiefs, the ROP or DO focal persons for UTPRAS, CAC, and ABT? the TTI administrators, TVI representatives, industry associations, trainers and experts around together with us joining in this national deployment. We hope that we shall be able, you will be able to receive guidance from the concerned offices, inputs and directions in implementing the TRs, CATs and assessment fees relevant to the functions of the ROPO do focal persons and to the roles or accountabilities and responsibilities of training institutions, assessment centers, industry establishments that will implement enterprise-based trainings utilizing the TRs being deployed. As what I always, as, as the guidance that I always give the field, when you are not sure of what you're going to do, please feel free to connect with us and we'll always be ready to provide the necessary assistance. The QSO, the NITESD, the certification office, the uh, uh, PLO, and uh, even the planning office will always be uh, ready to provide the assistance and help you get along well with the implementation of these qualifications. Then uh, through this national deployment, we hope that you will be able to, to familiarize yourself with the contents and processes in the TRs, the CATs, and the assessment fees that are being deployed. So yung pag-uusapan natin dito ay tungkol lamang doon sa 13 qualifications na i-deploy, na dinideploy ngayon ng QSO at kasama ang iba't ibang executive offices. So if you have other questions that are not related to the 13 qualifications, you can just write them on the chat box and be, and be assured that you will be attended to. Sinasagot ko namin, sinasagot ko sa QSO, even in my private messenger chats, I respond and I act on the necessary uh, assistance. We provide the necessary assistance that is needed by the field. Kasi ako po, alam ko po ang inyong kalagayan sa field and I don't, you don't have to tell me what are, what are the issues and concerns that make your life difficult. That's why if you have no one else to ask assistance from, Feel free to connect with us in QSO, and uh, we are going to relay. The, we are going to take the necessary action. The only thing we know are the right, the the, uh, the the feedback at the right point in time, so that we can provide you all the assistance that you need. Kaya nga itong itong national deployment activity natin is establishing a bond between us in the central office and you in the field, uh, uh, telling you that we are here ready to provide assistance that you need as you implement the program, the technical assistance. Uh, we are always ready to answer your questions and provide you the necessary guidance. And if there are, uh, there are aspects of, the, of, of our issuances that need uh, clarification, do feel free to inform us, notify, notify us, and uh, we always take action as fast as we can because we know with the with the instructions of our director general uh, to always be sensitive to the needs of those who are in the operations and in the field. In this national deployment also, we shall discuss policies relevant to the delivery of the training and the conduct of national competency assessment. So if you have questions related to this, to the 13 qualifications, this is the right time for you to raise them. Uh, and then discuss the cost items, the cost derivative, and the principles considered in determining assessment fees. Like yesterday, we had a very lively discussion on the assessment fees. Bakit ito mas, 
ba, na, uh, bakit ang assessment fee ng, ng COC at ng full qualification ay hindi nagkakalayo, hindi, bakit hindi mas mura ang, ang assessment fee in some COCs? Well, we, we had a very, very lively discussion yesterday on that. And you can, you can make the necessary clarifications. And also, we, 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 we will take this uh, activity today as an opportunity to clarify issues and concerns related to setting up training and assessment infrastructures, uh, not only with the traditional way of delivering, implementing our trainings and, our, and the conduct of our assessments. However, you can also clarify issues related to the conduct of trainings in the new normal. Now, what are these 13 qualifications that we will deploy today? Uh, these 13 qualifications are uh, cover uh, the different uh, sectors. So watch this, please. Thank you. So may I now take this opportunity to formally uh, release to the field, to the Ropodotis, uh, these 13 qualifications, giving signal that they can now be implemented in the field. For the creative sector, we have handloom weaving upright NC2, tested together with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts develop various qualifications that aim to preserve the culture and arts and improve the lives of the IPs uh, nationwide. And handloom weaving upright, NC2 is one of those qualifications. The technical experts that work with us on the development of this uh, TR are uh, Ms. Josefa Garlitos and Alice A. Panyaris. In the human health and uh, health care sector, we have five, uh, four qualifications that are being deployed. But before I mention, uh, before I before I give uh, the description of each qualification, may I may I announce, may I, may I take this opportunity, and in fact, we have announced this already, that the, that the caregiving, that the existing caregiving NC2 will still be uh, offered and will continue to be offered and it will not be covered by the migration period. We are just finalizing our presentation with the test the board uh, seeking the amendment of the existing uh, test the board resolutions because there has been a lot of play more for the offer, the continued offering of caregiving in situ. In fact, the certification office has released an advisory extending the migration period up to December uh, 2022 this year. However, before December comes, we hope that we should already have uh, successfully passed the test the board resolution. Uh, so uh, for, for the health, human health and healthcare sector, Industry experts and partners headed by the respective presidents, the caregiver uh, of, uh, of the Philippines Association, uh, the CIPAI, and the Philippine Association of Service Exporters, or the PASE, with the technical assistance of the Qualification and Standards Office of TESDA, endorsed the proposed revisions of the training regulations. On June 9, 2022, 
the representatives, this is what I was mentioning a while ago, the representatives of the Association of Caregiver TVI Trainers and Assessors or the ACTA from the province of Cebu uh, appealed to TESDA to reconsider its migration policy of the current caregiving NC2 to the four amended TRs for caregiving NC2, which they said is counterproductive to local stakeholders. And the following recommendations have been uh, highlighted in ACTA's position paper uh, to enhance and not to supersede the current caregiving NC2 program, to place on hold the activities related to the implementation of the four uh, new caregiving NC2 TRs, and TESDA shall lead the establishment of an industry board for medical and health services qualifications. And in view of the local demand, an omnibus test the board resolution to amend the existing test the board resolutions on the amended TRs with newly created qualifications uh, shall be released. And the existing caregiving NC2, the one that is now being offered, the one that is now being endangered, as others would say, uh, which was promulgated in January 2007, shall apply and is acceptable and not superseded by the four amended caregiving NC2 TRs that were promulgated in September 2020. So there will be, aside from these four new TRs, there will be uh, the, the existing caregiving will uh, shall continue to be offered. Now, uh, the technical experts that work uh, that collaborated that we collaborated with in QSO for uh, for the newborn to preschooler caregiving NC2, uh, Miss Bernadette Ilagan and Miss Sharon Dimatulak for for grade schooler to adolescent caregiving NC2, Sir Joel John A. De La Merced and Miss Marieta M. Serna for elderly caregiving NC2, Miss Mila Flor Valdez and Miss Maria Cristina Pebermudes. And for clients with special needs caregiving NC2, Mr. Antonio Alvin Kubangbang and Ms. Myra Soledad Kubangbang. In the social and other community development services sector, we have also these training qualifications, these training regulations that are being deployed. So um, beauty care, nail care services NC2, hairdressing NC2, hairdressing NC3, Barbering NC2 and Domestic Works NC2. This is the latest. The Philippine International Cosmetologist Association, or PICA, with the assistance of QSO, uh, reviewed the existing TRs in beauty care, nail care services NC2, hairdressing NC2, and hairdressing NC3, and barbering NC2 to professionalize the nail care hairdresser and barber workforce, and to respond to the rapid changes in the beauty salon, hairdressing, barbering industry, and service uh, delivery. And one point also, the International Labor Organization uh, with the Fair Training Center and Coalition of Licensed Agencies for Domestic Service and Skilled Workers, or CLADS, with the assistance of the Qualification and Standards Office have reviewed the existing training regulations for domestic works NC2 to respond to the current skills requirements of the industry with its new technologies and industry manpower setup and recommended amendments. So the technical experts that uh, provided assistance in the developing the TR for beauty care, nail care services, NC2, is Ms. Clarina Cabayan, for hairdressing NC2 and hairdressing NC3, is Mr. Manolito Dondonilla. For barbering NC2, is a Mr. Don Manolito Dondonilla and Mr. Andrew Galindon. And for domestic works NC2, Ms. Amy Gloria, Ma Ms. Maria Elma Pigatiera, Dr. Gloria Bakinsi, uh, Ms. Mr. Arnido I. Domingo, Mr. Ms. Ana Marie o uh, Aldissimo. Mr. Arnido I. Domingo and Ms. Rinia Bugasia. 
for uh, the information and communication sector, the ICT sector, we have programming Java NC3. The Philippine Software Industry Association or the PSIA and member of the technical experts panel in the development of the programming Java NC3 STI service STI Education Services Group, Joyce's Techbook and uh, Inc. and Las Vin Consulting Services with this uh, with the assistance of the Qualification and Standards Office reviewed Section 3.5 that is trainers qualification and Item 4.2 Section 4 of the assessment in uh, that is assessment and certification arrangements of the existing uh, training regulations for programming Java NC3 to respond to the current skills and certification requirements of the industry with its new technologies and industry manpower setup and recommended amendments. The qualification programming Java NC3 may be attained by passing the Oracle Certified Associate Java SA8 Programmer or Java SA8 Programmer 1 Certification Exam. Therefore, for this particular qualification, there is no CAT being, there is no competency assessment tool being deployed because uh, we are going to have the ven a vendor based assessment for this. And the assessment shall be done, shall be conducted in the, in the, wherever the place that will be designated by the vendor. So the technical, the technical expert that assisted the qualification office uh, in, in working out on the amendment of the programming job NC3 is Mr. Romel B. Riusi. For the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration technology sector, we have two qualifications uh, being deployed today. So the refrigeration and air conditioning technicians for development of the Philippines, or the RACTAP, with the assistance of the Qualification and Standards Office, reviewed the existing training regulations for RAC servicing Dome rack NC2 and for rack servicing NC3, that is package type air conditioning unit, commercial refrigeration equipment to commercial air conditioning, installation and servicing NC3 to respond to the current skills requirements of the industry with its new technologies and industry manpower setup and recommended the corresponding amendments. The, the experts that help that provide the technical assistance in working out uh, the, on these two qualifications for commercial air conditioning, insulation, and servicing NC3 uh, are Mr. Manuel Asosina and Mr. Chris Bernardino. And for rock servicing, uh, Mr. Manuel Asosina and, and also Mr. Chris Bernardino. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we now have these 13 training regulations formally deployed to all regional offices, provincial offices, district offices, and ready for implementation for program registration by the different tech work institutions all over the country. Our, our job has been done. We now pass on these training regulations to the implementing units, to the operations, and we hope that these 13 qualifications will now become vibrant qualifications, providing every young Filipino the opportunity to become globally competitive skilled workers. And after their training and assessment, once they have earned their national certificates in the respective qualifications, they shall be ready to occupy the rightful space in the labor market in the industry. So to everyone, maraming maraming salamat at mabuhay ang Pilipino, mabuhay ang TESDA, at mabuhay kayong lahat na nakikilahok dito sa amin sa, sa national deployment of these 13 training regulations, competency assessment tools, and assessment fees. Thank you so much, and uh, we hope that you will be, you will, uh, be, you will, you will uh, find this national deployment 
truly productive and helpful as you carry out your responsibilities and in, in implementing these programs properly and uh, according adhering to the standards that have been set forth as promulgated by the test board. One last note, these training regulations was uh, did not come from QSO, but they were promulgated by the test board. And so this is ours and this is for everyone in TESDA. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, Director Jojo, for officially deploying the 13 training regulations and providing guidance that will serve as compass to our regional offices, DDIs, and TVIs. And we would like to thank our technical experts with the assistance of our fellow QSO sector of POCALS on graciously giving their expertise on developing these 13 qualifications. Let's give them a round of applause. To provide us with guidance, let us hear the message from our Deputy Director General for Policies and Planning, DDG, Rosanna A. Urdanera. Edi Lorenzo Manuel Giorgio L. Guillermo to the Regional Provincial District Directors to our dear Tibet industry partners and stakeholders, our OD chiefs, regional provincial district focal persons for UTPRAS, CACS, and EBT, isang mapagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual national deployment of promulgated training regulations competency assessment tools, and assessment fees. This orientation will serve as a venue to officially announce the deployment of 13 qualifications. The CESO, together with the different executive offices, will provide participants the appropriate guidance, directions, and instructions on how to address possible concerns to be raised and also to properly and accurately execute the different TRs, CATs, and AFs to be deployed, and also to provide the technical help required by the Lopotis in putting up the training and assessment infrastructures for these newly published TRs with CATs and AFs. Let me take this opportunity to underscore that the training regulations and assessment fees that were issued are the result of thorough researches, consistent coordination and consultations with our public and private partners. TESDA produces appropriate and current training regulations, qualifications on a regular basis to assure the Filipino workforce readiness and global competitiveness. This is one method of ensuring that our skilled workers meet the needs of the industry. This also contributes to the administration's priorities of increasing employability and decreasing learning losses. Allow me to emphasize that we in TESDA shall all the time have a unanimous and clear understanding of the implementing guidelines development process and the contents of the newly promulgated training regulations to implement and maintain an effective and quality assured Tibet system in the country. This enhancement to the deployment approach indicates how much the central office values your feedback and concerns about the TR's implementation. You are the ideal individual to notify us in the central office the improvements that are needed in the policies and programs as you are the implementers. We hope that this initiative will enable the effective and efficient application of the newly published TRs and the, their accompanying CATs. I hope that this activity will only provide guidance and instructions, but will also foster strong 
and strategic coordination among TESDA policymakers in the central office and field implementers. Lastly, I'd also like to enjoin you to brainstorm innovative strategies for the continuous improvement of our system. I would like to commend the CESO for coming up with this event. I hope this exercise will provide fresh perspectives, new ideas, and shed light to all of your concerns. On behalf of our Director General Danilo P. Cruz, I'd like to extend a warm greeting to all of you and express my appreciation for your forthcoming participation in this orientation. Maraming salamat at mag-ingat po tayong lahat. DDG or the net does continuous guidance keep us inspired for leadership and hard work is truly really an inspiration to all of us here in QSO and policies and planning cluster not only to righteously perform our duties and responsibilities but to improve further so once again thank you DDG Rose Before we proceed to our program, can we request everyone to open their cameras for our photo opportunity? We encourage everyone on uh, here in the Zoom. You. Who's our backdrop? Can you deadly nag crash ang Zoom? Hello po. Can you hear us? There's a prompt. Oh, yes, is everyone here? Can you hear us? Yan. Uh oh, there is a prompt po rito na nagkakaroon na technical difficulty. Our apologies for that. Again, we would like to request everyone to open their cameras for a photo opportunity. All right, we do have here twenty slides, so please bear with us. Let us show your. Let us show your uh, sweet smiles. In three, two, one, smile. Next slide. Three. Two, one, smile. Next up, three, two, one, smile. Next is three, two, one, smile. Next slide, po. Three, two, one, smile. Next, po. Three, two, one, smile. Please do bear with us. We are still on the next slide. Three, two, one, smile. And then, all right, so we do have a lot of, um, we do have two technical support who does our photo open. And then the last slide. Three, two, one, smile. Maraming salamat po. And now we will proceed, we will now proceed to the leveling of expectations from our dear participants. We will provide a Mentimeter link here in our chat box. So you may access through uh, that and you may share to us what are your expectations for this activity and we hope that at the end of our program we will able to raise uh, and address those concerns or expectations that you uh, shared with us. Please do let us know if there's any difficulty in accessing the Mentimeter leak so our technical support will, uh, will be here to assist us. As we go through our uh, leveling of expectation here, please do access our Mentimeter link in the chat box. So, so we would know what are your expectations for this activity. And again, we hope that at the end of this program, we will be able to address those expectations. And uh, and we hope as well that you have a, uh, that you will receive or you will receive a, uh, you will receive good, uh, or it will it apply to your. It will apply to 
you on how will you implement those uh, 13 qualifications that will be deployed. May we ask our technical uh, our technical team to to show what are the responses of our of our participants here? There we go, and we're back. So we'll be giving you uh, there's a five, uh, four minutes left for our participants to join us here in the in our Mentimeter. Uh, we would like to hear from you. What are your expectations from this activity? Please do access the link here in your chat box. Please do let us know if there's any difficulty in accessing the link. So far. All right, so we receive here uh, that our participants expect to this activity to be engaging and provide guidance as well. Also, we saw uh, a topic here that will be, I believe this will be discussed later on by the certification office, which is the assessment piece for those qualifications to be deployed. Also, policies and implementation, uh, they are expecting that this will be thoroughly discussed as well. A uh, clear explanation of the new TRs to be deployed, of course, uh, later on and up until tomorrow, we will further discuss in detail by our sectoral focus on the on the qualifications on the thirteen qualifications. We they are also expecting to have a clear guidance and clear discussions regarding this matter. And uh, with this, we uh, we encourage everyone to join the question and answer portion after each of the discussions. Later on, we'll be providing uh, we'll be give, providing time for that. Training policies, also updates and leveling up. And also we we are thankful. We we saw appreciation here uh, as one of their expectations as well. We also appreciate their presence and uh your your engagement here in our mini activities. Maraming salamat po. Clarification of UTRs that will be deployed. Also, to learn more about the deployed, deployed TR, particularly in domestic work and C2. And they also expect that this, uh, this activity will provide knowledge and content of his qualification, and this will be useful and understandable. Of course, that, um, that is the heart of this activity that our, um, our TTIs, our TVIs, our, of our regional offices will be thoroughly guided. Uh, through this activity. All right, we still have one minute left. And one here is that be more informed regarding of the new TR and promulgation of the caregiving and the change in this that has also affect in depth and senior high. Okay, so I hope that with this concern, this is more uh, in touch with the uh, senior high uh, later on. Let's see if this will be will be uh, if this will be discussed thoroughly regarding the Q and A portion. Please do note as well that we only allot uh, around thirty minutes for the Q and A. So if there will be questions that will not be addressed during those time, uh, will be officially respond to that via writing.
in writing. So uh, we would, uh, so at least we would take note of all those uh, queries. Our technical support team here has a monitoring of all questions that will be coming in from uh, from chat box, also from YouTube. We encourage our participants in YouTube as well to be a, to engage through uh, addressing your concerns in the chat as well in YouTube in our YouTube link. We also have your guidance on IG implementation and there's also expectation in being informed on the core competencies, CATS and AFs and, and, and be enlightened on the implementation mechanics. So I think uh, we're done with our with our leveling of expectation from our dear participants. Again, uh, maraming salamat po, maraming salamat po for joining us here in our uh, in our activity. So, Miss Mai, we will now proceed to the next portion of our program. Miss Mai will give us an uh, will give us. The we will hand we will transition us to the next part of our program, Miss Mai. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone, for your active participation. Let's proceed with our program to give us the overview of the qualifications being deployed. May I call on the acting chief of competency standards of the development division, Miss Bernadette. S. Audihe and the Chief of Competency Programs and Systems Development Division, Ms. Mercedes E. Javier. Okay, um, blessed good morning to all. Uh, sa ating pong mga executive director, Idi Jojo, kay DDJ Rose, ating pong mga participants, sa lahat po, ang magandang umaga po, and I'm tasked to present the overview of the qualifications of the newly promulgated TRs, CATS, and AFs, and together with me is um, the chief of CPSDD, Mansol Javier. So, okay, let's proceed. Now, first in the lineup is domestic work and C2. For the nominal duration, we have uh, 147 hours, and this excludes the 80 hours SIL. The qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to be able to first clean living room, dining room, bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen. Next is wash and iron clothes, linen and fabric, prepare hot, cold meals and food, and provide food and beverage service. Now for the job titles, we have domestic worker, houseboy, housemaid, housekeeper, hand launderer, helper, kitchen, cleaner in a hotel. Okay, for the assessment, may I give the floor to Mom Stone? morning okay for the assessment and certification arrangement um we have for the coc1 uh, the clean living dining room bedrooms bathroom and kitchen okay. uh for coc2 we have a wash and iron clothes linen and fabric um for coc3 we have prepare hot and cold meals um, slash food coc4 we have provide food and beverage service um we also have a C, uh, COC for elective one and elective two, uh, which is uh, provide care for animals and maintain plants in the garden. So all of these um, qualifications, we have um, ongoing formulation of the assessment fees. Um, that will be all for domestic work and safety. 
Now, okay, the next one is the handloom weaving upright NC2 for the nominal duration. We have 429 hours, excluding the 80 hours SIL. The qualification consists of competencies that a handloom weaver, handloom specialist must achieve to be able to conduct preparatory activities prior to weaving on a loom, perform basic handloom operations, recognize and check product quality, and complete the whole ribbing process, including finishing and final quality assessment. For the job titles, we have handloom weaver, handloom weaving specialist, and handloom operator. Sorry. For the assessment and certification arrangement for handloom weaving upright NC2, uh, we have COC1, which is conduct free handloom weaving activities. Um, for COC2, we have perform upright loom weaving. COC3, we have conduct post weaving activities. Now, the corresponding assessment fees for this, well, for the full qualification, we have 1,298 pesos. For COC1, uh, we have 1,037 pesos. For COC2, we have 1,261 pesos. And for COC3, we have 855 pesos. Now, these fees have already been promulgated by the test board. And now, uh, we, we also have the um, implementing guidelines also issued uh, on these uh, promulgated fees as well. Thank you. Okay, for the next one, the caregiving newborn to preschooler and C2. For the nominal duration, we have 465 hours, excluding the 160 hours SIL. Qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to participate in the implementation and monitoring of newborn care plans, perform caring skills for newborn, recognize newborn's growth and development, participate in the implementation and monitoring of infant care, the plan provide physical needs, care and support to infant, foster social, intellectual, and emotional development of infant, participate in the implementation and monitoring of toddler's care plan, perform caring skills for toddler, recognize growth and development of toddler, then participate in the implementation and monitoring of preschoolers' care plan, perform caring skills for preschool, and recognize growth and development of preschooler. Now, for our job titles, we have caregiver for newborn, that is from zero to four weeks, caregiver for infant for one month to one year old, then caregiver for toddler that's, that is one to three years old, and caregiver for preschooler that is three to five years old. Okay. For the assessment and certification program uh, arrangement, we have for COC1, uh, provide care and support to newborn. Uh, for COC2, we have provide care and support to infant. Uh, we have also uh, provide care and support to toddler, that would be COC3. And for COC4, we have provide care and support to the school. Now, the corresponding assessment fees for uh, disqualifications are already approved. And for, for, the, for promulgation, this coming test of full board um, in, the, in the next uh, test of full board meeting. Thank you. Now, for the next one, the caregiving grade schooler to adolescent NC2, we have 389 hours, excluding 160 hours SIL, and qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to provide assistance and care to personal needs of grade schooler, foster psych uh, physiological needs, rather, and cognitive development of grade schooler, foster physical growth and development of grade schooler, respond to emergency for grade schooler, foster physical growth and development of adolescent, promote developmental tests for adolescent and respond to emergency for adolescent. Now for the job titles, we have caregiver for grade schooler that is six to 12 years old and caregiver for adolescents and that is for the, uh, from 13 to 19 years old. Okay, for 
the assessment certification arrangement for this specific uh, qualification, grade schooler to adolescent caregiver is two. Okay, we have two COCs. One, COC one will be provide care and support to grade two schooler. That will be six to 12 years old. And COC two will be provide care and support to adolescent uh, age 13 to 19 years old. Again, um, these were already approved during the public hearing uh, last um, August uh, 17, if I'm not mistaken. But, and these are already for um, promulgation this coming, that's the full board. Okay, next is the caregiving orderly NC2. For the nominal duration, we have 401 hours, excluding the 160 hours SIL. The qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to develop the ability to recognize aging process. Next is participate in the implementation and monitoring of client's care plan, perform caring skills, and the last one is performs specialty care procedures and assist clients in administering medication. For job titles, we have caregiver for elderly. Okay. For elderly, for this um, qualification of caregiving elderly in situ, uh, we have a full qualification. And again, the assessment for this were already approved during the public hearing uh, last on to 17 and is now ready for the uh, full uh, promulgation, the next test of full board meeting. Now, okay, for the caregiving clients with special needs NC2, the nominal duration is 653 hours, excluding the 160 SIO. The qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to participate in the implementation and monitoring of client's care plan, provide assistance and support to clients with special needs, recognize healthy body systems and apply medical terminology, provide care for two clients with special needs, assist in administering medications to clients with special needs, provide care and support to clients with special needs, respond to emergency situations, provide immediate care and support to children with special needs, and the last one, provide immediate care and support to adults and elderly with special needs. Now for the job titles, we have caregiver for people with special needs, caregiver for children with special needs, and caregiver for adults and elderly with special needs. For giving clients with special needs and C2, we have uh, the following assessment and certification arrangement. We have for COC1, provide care and support for children with special needs. And the COC2 is provide support, uh, care and support for adult with, and then in elderly with special needs. Assessment B is again for already approved uh, during the August 17 uh, public hearing and are now for the festival board promulgation. Thank you. Next is beauty care, nail care services, and C2. The nominal duration is 341 hours, excluding the 80 hours SIL. Qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to perform pre and post beauty care services, perform manicure and pedicure, and perform hand spa and perform foot spa. Now for the job titles, we have manicurist, pedicurist, then we have nail care attendant, hand and foot care attendant, and junior nail technician. Okay. For this qualification, beauty care, nail care services, and C2, we have two COCs. One is the COC1, uh, provide manicure and pedicure services. And for COC2, we have provide hand and foot spa services. Now, the assessment fees for these were already promulgated, uh, and we have already declared the um, uh, implementing guidelines for this. We have for the full qualification, the amount is in. 876 pesos. For COC1, we have 822 
pesos and for COC2, we have 838 pesos. For hairdressing and C2, for the nominal durations, we have 541 hours, excluding the 40 hours SIO. Qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to perform basic hair care services such as pre and post service activities, hair and scalp treatment, hair coloring, hair bleaching, hair perming, hair straightening, and basic hair cutting. For the job titles, we have assistant hairdresser for colorist, assistant hairdresser for permist, assistant hairdresser for hair cutter, junior assistant hairdresser, and junior hairdresser. Okay. For the assessment and certification arrangement um, for hairdressing in C2, we have the following for COC1, provide support salon services. COC2, we have provide hair coloring bleaching services. And for COC3, we have provide hair perming straightening services. For COC4, we have provide hair cutting services. Please note that there is no full assessment for this qualification. And the corresponding fee for COC1, we have 938 pesos. For COC2, 1,099 pesos. For COC3, we have 1,098 pesos. And COC4, uh, 886 pesos. Okay, now for the hairdressing NC3, for the nominal duration, we have 204 hours, excluding the 40 hours SIO. Qualification consists of the competencies that a person must achieve to perform advanced hair care activities such as advanced and creative hair cutting, advanced and creative hair coloring, and advanced and creative hair perming, then performs post-service activities that includes practicing good, proper, and ethical behavior following the code of ethics. But now for the job titles, we have senior hairstylist or hairdresser or senior hair technician. For the assessment and certification arrangement for this qualification hairdressing NC3, we have full MC and the assessment fee that was already promulgated is in the amount of 1,019 pesos. Now for barbering NC2, the nominal duration is 285 hours, excluding the 40 hours SIO. Qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to perform hair and scalp treatment, basic hair coloring, basic men's hair cutting, shave and style beard and mustache, and perform chair manipulative relaxing services. Now for the job titles, we have assistant barber, that is for scalp and hair treatment and basic hair coloring. Another assistant barber, that is for men's hair cutting, shave and style beard and mustache, and chair manipulative relaxing services, and of course, barber. Okay. For barbering NC2, we have the following uh, assessment and certification arrangement. We have qualification for the COC1, which is provide assistant barber services. And for COC2, we have provide assistant barber services. Again, we have the following assessment fees, which were already promulgated. Um, for the full qualification, we have 938 pesos. For COC1, we have 834 pesos. And for COC2, we have 869 pesos. For the next one, programming Java NC3, we have 240 hours as the nominal duration. Now, the qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to develop or write program codes using a personal computer or workstation as part of a systems development team. It includes also core competencies on performing object-oriented analysis and design in Java technology, 
and to create and fine-tune Java technology applications using object-oriented programming concepts. Now, for the job titles, we have Java Programmer, Java Programming Support Staff, Software Developer, Application Developer, and User Interface Developer. Uh, for the Java programming, um, NCT, uh, as mentioned earlier by our director, Director Giorgio, uh, there is no assessment uh, since this is a vendor based assessment. So, how do we, the candidate may qualify for the program in Java NC3 by passing the Oracle Certified Associate Java SE8 Programmer or Java SE8 Programmer Certification Exam? So upon submission of the Oracle Certified Associate Java S8 Programmer or Java S8 Programmer um, of CAJP certificate, the, the individual shall be issued the corresponding national certificate. Okay, next in line is RAC servicing DOM RAC NC2. We have 288 hours as the nominal duration, excluding 240 hours SIL. The qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to enable him or her to install, service, maintain, troubleshoot, and repair domestic air conditioning and refriger uh, refrigeration units. Um, this qualification actually covers window type air conditioning and domestic refrigerators only. For the job titles, we have domestic refrigeration and air conditioning technician. Okay. For the rock servicing dom rock NC2, we have full national qualification, full, full NC. In, uh, the corresponding assessment fee is in the amount of 1,222 pesos. Next is the commercial air conditioning installation and services NC3. And for the nominal duration, we have 320 hours, excluding the 400 hours SIL. Now, the qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to enable him or her to install, service, maintain, troubleshoot, and repair, including to perform startup, testing, and commissioning of commercial air conditioning units. Now for the job titles, we have commercial air conditioning units installer, commercial air conditioning unit maintenance technician, and commercial air conditioning service technician that is for HVAC R technician. For this qualification, we have a full MC uh, and the assessment fee for uh, this one is in the amount of 1,441 pesos. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Thank you, that will be all. Thank you, Ma'am Bing and Ma'am Sol, for providing an overview of the 13 qualifications to be deployed that will be beneficial to our regional offices, TPIs, TPIs, and our other stakeholders. We also would like to recognize the late Dr. Eduardo M. Mariano as one of the technical experts in the deployment of CATS for elective competencies for domestic work and C2. Let us now proceed to the next part of the program, the guidance and directives from our executive offices. Without any further ado, uh, to provide instructions and guidance from the perspective of the Partnerships and Linkages Office, headed by their executive director, Director Juliet Orozco, to be presented by Acting Assistant Executive Director, Mom Flora Mel Joy C. Song Song. Thank you very much, Mai. And uh, good morning to the participants for the batch two of the deploy national deployment of newly promulgated TRs with caps and assessment fees. Yesterday, we were able to have some time to be able to present what uh, uh, PLO is doing, and uh, in particular, the establishment of the industry boards and partnerships that uh, we have, which would be very 
uh, important, very vital as we uh, take on the baton that was passed to us by the QSO after uh, having uh, finished their uh, portion uh, in the development of the uh, TRs. So from the BLO, allow me to discuss the possible engagements of the industry and other DIVET stakeholders through the partnerships that we in PESTA can pursue. Next slide. First of all, TESDA believes that area-based and demand-driven technical vocational education and training, or TVET, can only be achieved through the active engagement of the industry in TVET governance. This is seen as uh, responsive to the critical needs of the industries to produce rightfully skilled workers in the locality. While industries define their needs, uh, they also play active roles in the various processes in TESDA. The outcomes of the area-based and demand-driven TVET include the transformation of TESDA from that of being supply-driven to a demand-driven organization, the provision of a clear and purposive scholarship and investment allocation, as well as the rationalized target setting and utilization of the training regulations or competency standards, pretty much related to what uh, or the reason behind uh, us being uh, gathered today in this forum. Most importantly, the area-based demand-driven TVET framework would help address the issue on job skills mismatch in the country, which I think uh, was one of the prevalent considerations or prevalent concerns in TVET since time immemorial. Partnership building with industry cuts across TESA's major processes of skills mapping, industry needs assessment, competency standards, and competency-based curriculum development as needed by the industry. Program registration where TVET institutions register their programs with TESDA and competency assessment and certification. Now this confirms that the partnership with tests with the industry rather fuels up TVET and keeps it running. Now, in engaging the industry, the industry board, which we are uh, starting to establish, really plays a very important role. Next slide. But for better appreciation, um, what really is an IB? Now, as the TESDA pursues the revival of the industry board. The agency pushes the coming of various stakeholders to form or establish an industry board. This um, aggregation aims to let them take critical role in the TVET uh, sector as we continue to uphold our shared goals of uh, reducing the occurrence of skills mismatch between the output of the learning institutions and the requirements of the industries and some other related concerns. Now, as defined in the TESDA law, under section 26 of the TESDA law, an industry board is an independent body which directly participates in the design and implementation of skills development schemes, trade skills standardization and certification, and such other functions so that we'll be able to fulfill the objectives or the mandate of the authority. Next slide. As you can see, the industry board is a quadripartite body which shall be composed of representatives from the employers, the labor, learning institutions or academe, and the government. And since we are at the pilot stage, the guidelines, as you can um, See, was quite flexible. For some of you who are familiar with the implementing guidelines that we are using on the establishment of industry board, it's quite uh, flexible so that uh, the IB or the industry board can take off. Even in the absence of the labor groups and learning institutions, an employer's group can already establish an industry board. Next slide. Now to, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. The establishment 
IB are applying as an industry board in the region shall be recognized by this establishing a local IB, a regional industry board shall be established if the operations are present in more than one province in a region or if the industry board that will be established wish to be uh, engaged in uh, more than one province. Now, a provincial industry board should be established if the engagement is province specific or would only be limited to only one province. Next slide. Now, on your screen, you can see the roles of the industry board as we envision them to be. Uh, on information, we would like to see the industry board to take uh, active participation in providing the necessary labor market information to TESDA in aid of policy and program decisions. Uh, the industry board should also be providing inputs or signals in the development of the area-based skills map. We would also like to see the industry boards once established to take the lead in the conduct of industry consultations as they may be needed and to provide um, experts in analyzing and forecasting the skills needs for skill development of the area where they will be uh, engaged. Our IBs that will be established should also take the lead and recommend industry experts in the development and regular review of the competency standards, our competency-based curriculum, uh, the assessment tools that we will be using, and the assessment fees. It is also the industry board who will be um, conducting capability building interventions for the trainers and assessors in their area and in their sector uh, that uh, they represent, as well as providing inputs to the learning contents that should be seen in the uh, development of these uh, learning materials that will be used in the training. We would also like to see our industry boards taking uh, the lead in the promotion and implementation of various TVET activities towards uh, quality skills development. Uh, and that would include, of course, the enterprise-based programs that we have in TESDA and uh, the preparation of our contingent or our uh, delegation to the skills competitions. We would also like to see our industry board as part of their role uh, them conducting enterprise-based assessment and certification in their respective uh, sectors. And to recommend to the TESDA board the possible financing schemes that uh, the industry can explore so that uh, it can provide signals and uh, recommendations to our uh, TESDA board. Now, as to the roles of TESDA in the establishment of uh, IBs, uh, it is the role of TESDA to capacitate the industry boards to undertake the roles in the governance of Tibet, especially during the initial stage of the operationalization of the IBs. It is also TESDA that uh, will be developing incentives and guidelines that would encourage wider participation of the industry in the implementation of EBT programs, such as our scholarship programs. Uh, TESDA shall also be providing preferential access to the established IBs on the needed resources, such as, but not limited to scholarship grants, uh, the use of facilities in the skills development of industry workers, uh, subject to availability of funds and approved guidelines. It there's also the role of TESDA in the establishment of IB to work with IB to design certifications, to ensure and monitor the utilization of the training regulations, uh, including, of course, the, the ones that are being deployed uh, now, uh, competency standards, and the uh, policies. So uh, it is also the role of TESDA to ensure that uh, these uh, competency standards, policies are uh, consistent with the existing laws and policies of the agency. It is also the role of TESDA to conduct industry consultations or meetings, fora, 
so that we'll be able to promote and facilitate the engagement of the industry in Tibet, especially to those uh, members or composition or member associations of the IBs that will be established. It is the role of TESA to monitor the activities of the industry boards once they get to be established and to provide a secretariat to assist and perform technical and administrative uh, support functions during the initial phase of the operationalization of the IBs. Next slide. Now, as you can see, if we dive deeper to the roles of the TESDA and the IBs, um, a framework such as this would be very hand handy. Uh, a framework actually was developed so that uh, we could clearly see the dynamics of each stakeholder in the governance of TVET. Overall, the framework that you can see on your screen presents a formal and structured representation of industries and critical stakeholders in the Tibet sector. And this is what we mean when we say uh, we would like to engage the industries in the TSD governance. In the industry boards, uh, it should be the IB that uh, will be recommending policies and uh, providing advice to TESTA, being the expert in the sector or subsector that they represent. These IBs are expected also to be in the better position to guide TESDA on the policies that need to be set. The IBs and TESDA work hand in hand in the technology research and incubation to be able to formulate designs and strategies in the development of the event sector. There are new and emerging technologies which need the conduct of research and incubation for it to be um, able to take off and to materialize. Meanwhile, uh, TESDA as the governing body and as a permanent government representative in the IB is the one that recognizes the IBs. TESDA registers the programs and accredits the assessment centers. In this case, the IBs or its member companies and learning institutions can undergo the registration and accreditation process and be able to assess their workers or learners. TESDA is also the one that provides certification to learners after completing their assessments, specifically in the WTR programs that will be implemented. What is now the dynamics of IBs in the learning institutions? Now, the IBs provide guidance or advisory on the emerging technologies and the changes that need to be done to align the standards, our curricula, facilities, and even the equipment of the academe by the demands or the needs or the standards of the industry so that uh, we'll be able to ensure that the graduates match the needs of the industry. Next, the learning institutions are representatives from Association of Technical and Vocational Institutions or TBIs. Um, they may also come from test administered schools, uh, state universities and colleges or SUCs, or local universities and colleges or LUCs, or even from the higher education institutions or HEIs. These institutions play a critical role, especially in the development of training plans. Uh, they also play a vital role in the conduct of enterprise-based delivery and the immersion of its learners to the industry. Now, the workers group, which is also part of the representation in the IB, play a critical role as they provide the technical expertise, be the developers of the standards and the trainers or as assessors, and others. And of course, our learners is, is also part of the framework for the establishment of the IBs. It is the learners who are the beneficiaries of the Tibet sector. Now, in ensuring that the learners acquire the necessary skills and would qualify them to the employment requirements of the industries, the IBs, together with their members, 
take part in upskilling, developing, retooling, capacitating, and assessing the learners, of which TESTA will certify if they get to be assessed and be able to pass the assessment, they get to be certified and eventually employed in the industry. Now on your screen, you can see the benefits from the TESDA IB partnership. One is that um, priority is given to the IBs in the availment of TESDA scholarships. TESDA is also able to provide uh, technical assistance through the conduct of capability building programs for the trainers and assessors and other training staff. Um, in relation to the development of competency standards and uh, curriculum development, as well as in the development of the learning materials and uh, in the trainer's methodology. Also part of the benefits for, from the partnership between TESDA and the established IB is the industry-based assessment and certification, which can be provided and should be uh, expected from the IBs that will be established. Also, the inclusion in TESDA social marketing and advocacy campaigns. Whenever we do in TESDA some uh, initiatives on marketing and uh, advocacy on the programs and uh, the services that TESDA provides, um, once an IB has been established and recognized, uh, they get that uh, extra perk of being uh, included in the SMAC or in the social marketing and advocacy campaigns of the authority. And uh, in the end, we would like to see as uh, the major um, plus or advantage of the TESDA IB partnership, that of the reduction of job skills mismatch within the industry. Next slide. Why do we need IB? First, very glaring reason is that uh, the primary objective is to reduce the occurrence of skills mismatch between the outputs of the learning institutions and the requirements of the industries. And at the same time, to be able to transform TVET from that of being supply-driven to demand-driven, because we will be listening to the voice of the industry on what they actually need just before we commence with our uh, trainings or the conduct of trainings. Now, as provided on their roles, the IBs are responsible in providing inputs and signals to match the learning contents of the academe to the industry requirements. Through the involvement of the various stakeholders of IBs, the IBs play a critical role in producing skilled workforce in various sectors. Next slide. Moving forward, since the launching of the establishment of the industry boards in 2021, that was last year, there are already 28 industry boards established in the local and national level. To date, there is one uh, industry board in Region 1, as you can see uh, on your screens, four in Region 2, one in Region 3, three in Region 4A, two in Mimaropa Region, uh, three in Region 5, five in Region 7, and uh, one each in Regions 8, 10, and 11. We have three in the NCR, and two national industry boards that were established since uh, its commencement in 2021. Now, these includes those IBs that were approved just this June of 2022. Uh, these IBs are from regions two, Mimaropa, uh, region five, seven, eight, and our uh, second national industry board, which is the Philippine Constructors Association under the construction sector. Next slide. The established industry boards belong to the priority sectors of identified uh, 
that have been identified in the implementing guidelines on the establishment of industry boards and those that were identified as priority sectors in the NTESDB plan of uh, 2018 to 2022. And uh, as you can see uh, in the pie, the sector that gets most of the share of the pie is the agri-fishery sector, which is uh, one of the identified priority sectors. To date, the highest is agri-fishery sector with nine industry boards, followed by the ICT sector with seven, and construction and tourism sectors with four IBs each. We anticipate movements uh, in this uh, pie distribution because we are still working on uh, some applications for IBs and uh, some of them are in the process of complying, completing the requirements uh, in compliance with our existing implementing guidelines for the establishment of IBs. Next slide. Now, as to the status, as I've mentioned, we have 28 established IBs, two national, six regional, and 20 provincial IBs. We were also able to join the planning office in the conduct of an area-based demand-driven uh, handholding activity. And we were able to uh, join the handholding sessions of the regions with IBs for regions of CAR 1, 3, 7, and 10. And uh, as far as we know, these handholding activities will continue uh, as schedules are arranged for the rest of the regions. Um, have not had their handholding activities yet. Uh, we've also been able to conduct orientation on the test processes to the established IBs. And this we would still continue doing as uh, the need arises. Now, as to the ways forward, we would like to see an increase really in the establishment of, uh, in the number of those uh, industry boards that are uh, going to be established to cover also other priority sectors because right now very limited lang po yung mga uh, established IBs do sa ilang mga identified priority sectors and we still have other priority sectors that have not been uh, touched or have not been considered in the establishment of IBs so we would like also IBs to be established in those uh, priority sectors. We would also like to see a continuation of the handholding of regions on the industry board establishment, as well as the monitoring of the industry board's action plans that have been crafted by uh, the early uh, IBs, early established IBs, and the rest that will be uh, established in the coming days. And also part of our ways forward is uh, the conduct of an evaluation of the pilot implementation of the establishment of IBs. Next slide. Now, as to the partnerships, which uh, will serve as the anchor in the implementation of the programs, especially on those that would require wider participation of the industry. Next slide. Right now, here are the classification of partners that we have at the national level. Uh, the source of this is the TTPMS version three as of uh, June 30, 2022, the system that we are using in monitoring the partnerships that we have with the stakeholders in PIVEL. The highest being that of with the micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs. We have 200 partners. Uh, coming from this uh, sector. Next slide. Now, as to the nature of engagement at the national level, we have the EBTSIL as the highest with 43.84% of the engagements coming from this uh, kind of engagement uh, as uh, implementers of EBT for SIL. Next slide. 
Now on your screen, you could see the different types of enterprise-based training programs that we have. We have the dual training system or DTS, uh, apprenticeship, learnership. By the way, our Director General specifically mentions apprenticeship to be uh, the focus of our uh, initiatives in engaging the industry. We also have the Supervised Industry Learning or SIL, the Program for Accelerating Farm School Establishment or PAFSTE, and the in-company or on-site training arrangements or other industry-based training programs. Simply because when we say um, enterprise-based training program, we refer to the DVET programs that are being delivered in the enterprise. This can be uh, implant or standalone or maybe linked with a training provider. These programs are offered to industry groups or to enterprise uh, employees and individuals. Next slide. What are the gains of EBT implementation? One, we have availment of tax incentives, which is uh, being offered to the implementers of EBT programs. Second, uh, they get to have access to job candidates with hands-on experience. Third, um, they'll be able to develop a more robust talent pipeline if they get engaged in the implementation of our EBT uh, programs because uh, from the start, they have a say as to who gets in, who gets to participate in the implementation of the EBT program. Number four is savings on training, retraining, and recruitment costs. Because in most cases, the trainees who undergoes the EBT training, the implant training, gets to be uh, absorbed by the enterprise where they had their implant uh, exposure or training. Number five, gain is the increase in company's productivity. The company or the enterprise that uh, implements EBT also earn reputation for being a great place to work because uh, they get positive feedback from those that are able to uh, be engaged in their uh, company, in their business uh, for the implant uh, training or component of the training. Seven is the prestige of the company as a recognized partner of TESTA. As I've mentioned a while ago, our EBT partners get to be part of the advocacy campaigns that we do, the promotional activities that we do, the initiatives that we have on SMAC whenever we uh, go out and uh, try to inform our public about what TESLA is doing, its mandate, and the partners that uh, it has in the fulfillment of its mandate. And uh, number eight is the uh, exercise of corporate social responsibility. Uh, there is a number of our partners, especially those that are uh, huge or multinational in status, that uh, use our EBT program implementation as part of their corporate social responsibility. Next slide. Now on your screen, you could see uh, some examples of our uh, partners that uh, conduct in-company training. We have the Philippine Constructors Association for the training of construction supervisors and assistant training supervisors, as well as the Continental TEMIC, which uh, is our partner in the training of technical personnel in mechatronics with support of the labor union. So these are just two of the partners, existing partners that we have in TESDA that belong to the industry, our target for the implementation of our newly promulgated TRs. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ma'am Joy, for your comprehensive presentation on the status of the establishment of industry board and gains from the enterprise-based training implementation to our clients. Help me welcome Mr. Rosendo R. Rafael, Senior DSD Specialist of Curriculum and Training Aids Development oh. Division, headed of NIDSD, headed by the Executive Director, Director David B. Bongalion, as our next presenter.
Good morning uh, and thank you, Ms. Jax. And good morning to all the participants. Good morning, Pa. Morning activities. Uh, let me share my presentation. Nakikita na po ba? And uh, how yes, about po, my, my audio? Ano po? Klaro din ano po. So good morning and uh, I will shut up my camera in order to not to, no, to maintain yung aming connection. Uh, this is a very quick uh, presentation on uh, what we do in the relation to the uh, deployment of the training regulations and, and some other uh, issues and concerns related to curriculum development, especially our uh, efforts to promote uh, the proper and, and acceptable way of developing a curriculum. Uh, this is uh, a few points. And, so the curriculum development point, uh, perspective, the team that is very important role in, in the, the development of the curriculum and the process itself, of course, in some innovations that we are uh, currently implementing in order to enhance the results and, and hopefully we can implement a better curriculum. And about. So, yeah. uh, I don't know how do we implement our program or how do we develop our programs in our respective training institutions. You know. But uh, practically, this is just a four, uh, four corner cycle development process. It is important for us to identify the, the authentic needs and folk. Uh, because there are 13 uh, training regulations available now. Uh, how can we or how we, can we decide or how will we decide which or among the 13 we are going to implement? So it is important for us to scan our environment in order for us to find three important information. One, uh, the authentic needs in our environment, in our community, in our locality. Uh, I remember that uh, we are separated by, uh, by, uh, no, by, by places, uh, and it may not be the same, uh, the, the requirements. Then, uh, second, the acceptability of the community with your programs. Uh, are the learners interested? Third, your preparedness, your your institutions, uh, infrastructures are in place. So that's three important things that you should consider in order for you to uh, develop the programs uh, in a very smooth flow. We will be able to develop uh, to identify the members of the team. You will be able to, or that team will decide on what to do with your curriculum and for. And uh, the curriculum, the intent uh, related to the real, uh, characteristics of the learner is very important also. Uh, the outcomes, on ten, intended, intended our outcomes should be clearly identified in order for you to align your methods and assessment strategy and that completes the requirements of the what we call the constructive alignment principles. Uh, the newly assembled curriculum, or right now we do not have the instrument to make sure the quality in the in the uh, accuracy of the newly developed curriculum. So what we do, or what you should do, uh, uh, to check and uh, and by running it, you know, in order for you to decide and make an adjustment as necessary. And if you are satisfied with the result of your testing, then you can proceed to final implementation. But again, this is not the end of our job or, or the curriculum team jobs. And every end of your programs should be uh, evaluated for you to determine whether the, the target or the needs was satisfied. So ilang po ang pinupromote natin you know, in order for us to establish a sustainable training program. So, uh, so uh, let's talk about the players. And I pinpointed the locations of uh, many training programs we implemented and participated by uh, persons, per personnel staff from provincial offices and regional offices that are now very, very familiar with uh, the process of curriculum development. Uh, the pedagogy and the content experts are all located in your TVIs, in your areas. 
the industry associations, if we have, if you, you do have in your uh, locations, you can tap them, of course. The national government agencies like uh, agriculture, and of course, uh, many experts uh, are available there. And some concerned stakeholders that are present in your localities can be including also. Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, Pa. So, also, the NIST, NIT SD is always ready and for to extend our technical assistance anytime. And uh, the process of curriculum development, there are three contexts you know, guided by the training regulation, of course, like what we have today. Uh, you can develop your curriculum or your programs according to the desire, the, the needs. You know. So uh, you can, the, the design of your curriculum may change or may vary from single uh, qualification course or a full C in C, na tinatawag natin, and or uh, can you can develop abundant programs according to the needs of course, or just a part of the qualifications. And sometimes uh, our curriculum uh, are changed the structure because of the guidelines and other issuances na nire-require sa atin. Ano po? And uh, the requirements such as uh, the, the, uh, the laws that mandates integrations in our curriculum should be considered as well. And, uh, the, th the third uh, scenario that we uh, have when there is no training regulation available, but there is a need. So uh, this can be addressed by the guidance through the uh, yung presentation ni Ma'am kanina na yung area-based demand-driven uh, instructions. You can follow the procedures in order to develop your curriculum for that particular instance. Ano pa? So this is the process on how to we develop the exemplar. We involved, we invited, we gathered the group and po, uh, including doon na nabanggit natin, mga, mga trainers, uh, experts, industry and process uh, experts. And po, in order for us to understand what is the training regulation all about or what is the competency is talking and uh, then uh, we can decide now to structure the curriculum designing the sequence of the modules or the module of itself. How do you structure the module? Because there is an electric wire. It's dangerous there. Okay? Hello po. Apo. Then, this, uh, this one is dangerous. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in this second step, now we will be able to uh, identify or to design the, the curriculum through structuring the modules. And the modules are not always and a one-on-one -on -one, uh, ratio with the unit of competency, of course. So you can decide that ano po, as a curriculum developer. Uh, the sequencing of the module on an instructional principles, uh, because the standard does not re uh, rearrange or does not arrange the unit of competency as instructional for instructional purposes. So it's the, the call of the curriculum writers or developers to sequence them according to its uh, uh, connection to one another and po. or identify the bridging components if in case the qualification requires uh, uh, literacy and po, uh, gaps you will be able to identify that in that process uh, so in other requirements as i mentioned the uh, statutory requirements that may be or mandating the inclusion in the curriculum should also be considered now in uh, the in the uh, available exemplar, we do not, we did not include that for for that purposes as exemplar only. Ano po? So yan. Uh, the writing now or the assembling of the materials can be done in in many ways. You know? So writing the the details of your curriculum, including all the requirements for the cognitive, uh, effective, and the skills requirements, should be included. Now here we are. We are. Uh, adding some initiatives in order to address the so long uh, discussion concerning the STEM education and the 21st century skills and all that. So that's why we devised uh, an instrument known as the com contextual learning matrix in order for us to identify the components, the, the concepts, knowledge requirements that are pertaining to the sciences, the numeracy or mathematics, 
and communications to be enhanced in integrated in the CBC or in your qualifications. Then, as uh, uh, CITAD has a lack of manpower, of course, uh, we need to check our outputs in order for us to make sure to ensure that our exemplar is really serves as an exemplar. But again, the exemplar is not the actual curriculum that's supposed to be uh, subjected for registration. It is just a model that your institution can enhance and improve in order for us to, to come up with a quality curriculum. So the validation process, if we involve the industry in some industry experts, perhaps is uh, uh, attending today and uh, and the existing training uh, training trainers uh, related to the qualifications involved, we invited them also, uh, especially those who attended the uh, training on regional lead train uh, season and trainers. We had some very good uh, material for the validation activity. So then, uh, by doing so, we'll be able to ensure that our CBC is indeed. Uh, uh, meet the requirements as stated in the training regulation or the competency standards. So that's how we do. And this is how we, the matrix looks like. So indicating, integrating all the necessary concepts and ideas pertaining to its uh, identified disciplines. And uh, the strategy, well, uh, you can decide whether you have a structured right shop uh, containing a full team members, including uh, now we are requesting now uh, in your in your in your area in your training institutions to include those experts in academic disciplines such as the sciences and mathematics trainers, including the communication training experts, should be included present in your, drafting your or in enhancing your uh, exemplars. So what we do is in CITAD, uh, the, the colored one or the highlighted one, uh, this is a draft initiated by a single person uh, uh, due to our situation. Ano po? So a uh, single person, so draft a uh, uh, respective uh, CBC for exemplar for a particular qualification. Uh, uh, doing it by a single lonely boy in a single, in, in his uh, lonely table, uh, knowing that there are 13 qualifications uh, to be promulgated, communicated to us, and we distributed them and uh, uh, distributed these qualifications for us to come up with a draft CBC exemplar. And the exemplars undergone or subjected to validation since September 1. And uh, due to our commitments, previous commitment also, we were able to complete the draft at the end of the uh, uh, end of August now. So we started the validation September 1 and 13. Due to the, uh, the previous commitments of also of the involved trainers and experts, that's why uh, the durations prolong for that schedule. And so here are uh, the, the same titles of the uh, qualifications that we subjected for validations or the with CBC exemplars which are validated. And the validations were participated by uh, 55 trainers, 35 coming from TTIs and 20 coming from private institutions with a very, very cooperative and industrious nine, uh, 19 industry experts. And we would like to, to acknowledge their, their cooperations with us, of course. And this is now the result, but uh, for now, we are in the process of finalizing, integrating the inputs of the trainers and the expert, of course. And after completing or, or finalizing this, uh, this exemplar, we will upload that in our repository at the at Bercy or Asian Technical Vocational Education Resource Center uh, with this website. Ano po? Now, uh, anybody who has the corporate access can can download and can can view that material, of course, in 
this access code ano po uh, i-scan lang po natin yan and uh, don't worry we also included the manual for curriculum development or CBC development in case you need it you can also download that in that the same website uh, with that I hope that our uh, activity with CITAD uh, might serve as support to the implementations of these 13 uh, qualifications deployed today. With that, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Paul. Hello. Ayan. Thank you very much, Sir Sendong, for giving us an uh, overview okay, on the... Ayun, maraming salamat po muli for giving us an overview on the curriculum development process and its key players. We have here as well from the Regional Operations and Management Office or ROMO, headed by their Executive Director, Director Rosalina S. Constantino, as we proceed to the questions and answer portion. But before that, we would like to give, uh, let's give a round of applause for our first presenters for this morning. Thank you, Jack. Uh, we will now open the floor for questions, clarifications from our participants. We highly encourage our participants to use the raise hand button chat to chat their queries. When writing your questions on the chat box, please mention to whom you direct your questions so that the respective office can address them properly. Do you have any questions? All right. So as we start off, uh, may we request our participants to raise your hand if there uh, or use the raise hand button and uh, if there is any questions clarifications from our presenters we would like to thank the presence of our presenters uh, even if you have an immersed schedule today uh, maraming salamat po for accommodating and joining us here for this very special uh, activity We have here, uh, we have here from Mom Rebecca Andres. Uh, her comment is a uh, very low assessment fee for qualifications will be identified for review. Uh, this is from the YouTube, actually. This is from the YouTube. Also here in the chat box uh, from Mom. I, I'm sorry if I, I if I address it properly from Mom Jean. How to avail the assessment for Java programming NC3? Perhaps our uh, concerned uh, sector of focal would like to respond on this. Our sector of focal for Java programming NC3. Also, uh, to follow with your question, it was mentioned po, no assessment for the Java Java programming NC3. From our uh, sector of vocal, anyone who would like to uh, share their thoughts regarding this? Sorry, I missed uh, Jackie. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, it's much, uh, okay. Is that regarding the hairdressing? Uh, um, no For the Java programming NC3 yes. now, ma'am. Ah, okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. May, may I agree? Sorry. Nasa kabilang line ako. Uh, yes, ma'am. Opo. Um, sabi po ni Ma'am Jean, uh, how to avail the assessment for Java programming NC3? As it was not mentioned daw po na uh, there's no assessment for it daw, ma'am. Okay, uh, earlier I, Director Jojo mentioned about um, the PR has no assessment. Uh, conduct of assessment is within the, the industry itself. So the qualification for the program in Java 
may be attained by passing the Oracle Certified Associate Java SEA Programmer or the Java SEA Programmer Certification Exam. Just like before, wala po tayong, ano, this is a vendor-based assessment. And what we do in TESDA is upon submission of the certificate or evidence of passing the exam, we will uh, convert it to an NC, National Certificate Level 2, signed by our TESDA Director General. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Sol, for that response. Po. Oh, we hope that uh, we hope that that's, that would clarify uh, the inquiry of Ma'am Jane and also for those participants who have the same concern as well. Uh, next up from Ma'am Sotera, uh, why is there no full qualification uh, qualification assessment fee for hairdressing NC2 and a uh, uh, per COC is available. This is again aligned with the assessment fee, particularly in the hairdressing NC2. Anyone who would like to respond? Po? Our, our sectoral focal. Uh, yes, Ma'am Sol. Yes, Okay, for hairdressing NC2, po, the assessment, uh, there is no full qualification assessment since uh, the when we were developing the cuts, uh, it will take more than eight hours um, when we include all the, the uh, required competencies to be assessed. So, ano nga report di ba? assessment natin is for about eight hours. So, yeah, it is not possible to have a full qualification assessment, one-time assessment that is in an eight-hour timeline. So, talaga po nung pa, yung by COC itself, uh, when you're um, validating the assessment pass for the different COCs, uh, it really entails about two days po. So, talagang uh, from the TR, talagang it was declared that uh, there is no full um, assessment, or full qualification for this particular uh, uh, hairdressing agency. Yes, ma'am. Opo. Medyo mahina lang po, ma'am, yung dating po nila. Opo. Uh, we have... Thank you so much, ma'am Sol. Uh, we have question po from uh, Region 6, Acting Administra Administrator, Sir Vicente... Padilla Jr., uh, can I have clarification on the SIL since excluded in the nominal duration? Is this mandatory? Uh, anyone po who could answer the query of Sir Vincent? Um, yeah, regarding the, the SIL, actually it is um, it is encouraged that there will be an SIL for each uh, the it's uh, um, the qualifications. So actually it is in memo 119 series of 2020 that um, here it says, on the other hand, says that there is a mandatory implementation of DTS and SIL. So then there's even a reiteration that there should be a mandatory implementation of DTS and SIL through Memorandum 376 Series of 2020. So I hope that answers the question. So uh, it means that... Um, once the training is uh, to be uh, uh, created, or I mean the, the program in the curriculum, there should be an uh, SIL for that. An, an allotted time will be required for the SIL once the training and uh, proceeded. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so Permission much. Permission to po. speak, po. Permission to speak, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Acknowledge, po. 
Bernadette Ilagan po from Caregiving and Sito Migrated. Okay. Uh, SIL is very important. It's very crucial. When we say SIL, it is a supervised industry learning. Once the trainees are done with the lecture inside the classroom, this is the chance for them to apply what they have learned inside the classroom. Now, during SIL, uh, it is a must that one CI or any teacher is allowed, is mandatory to supervise the students or the trainees. From this, uh, from this point or area rather, the, tra the trainer then or the instructor or the teacher will be able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the trainee who is under SIL. So this is very important and it's very significant for the trainee's part and uh, for the trainee's improvement of his, uh, of his or her craft. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, yeah. Yes, Paul. Yes, Director Jojo. Ah, yeah, that's a good question. May, may I just uh, uh, put things in perspective? When we talk about uh, the training nominal duration in the TR, that is the, they, they define the standards, the number of hours required to finish the training uh, uh, in so far as the qualification is concerned. However, the training duration is the minimum. So when you design your competency-based curriculum, when you apply for program registration, you can include the SIL as part of the whole training curriculum. Uh, take note uh, the difference between standards and the curriculum. Yung standards, yun, yun ang reference na kung anong, kung anong scope ng training. Yung curriculum is yun kung ano yung ituturo. Kaya if, uh, kung wala, kung hindi ito nakalagay sa TR, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi yun uh, required. Ang ano lang is yung nakalagay sa TR are the standards uh, that uh, should be upheld in order uh, what they call this, the minimum requirements uh, as provided by the industry experts. Now, after that, uh, once the standards are promulgated, when, when tech work institutions now prepare their program registration documents, and one of them is the competency-based curriculum, doon who pwedeng ilagay ng, ng tech book institution or applicant TBI ang SIL. So in, in the TR, hindi kasama ang SIL sa nominal duration. And we say nominal duration, that is the minimum. But when you develop your curriculum, you can put the SIL as part of uh, the the entire uh, program. Then you might say, eh, wala naman ho sa ano, wala naman ho sa standards bakit i-offer. I that is the purpose why we have policies making that uh, the SIL as a necessary component of the uh, what do you call this competency development process ng ng mga 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 trainees ng 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 would be industry workers. So I hope that that perspective is well understood. Standards, nominal duration, minimum requirements and as set forth by the by the industry. Pagkatapos ng standards, you develop your CBC, you develop your curriculum, then ila, ilagay niyo diyan ano pa yung do you think are necessary that can that can enhance the competence of your trainees. So I hope I hope that makes uh, a very clear perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Jojo. Uh, may may ano pa dito sa ano sa sa ano sa scholarship. What is covered by the scholarship is is the duration, uh, the, the the nominal duration as set forth in the TR. No, so uh, that is one thing that we are still. Trying to address kasi hindi nga covered ng scholarship ang, ang SIL, the period during the SIL. And we hope that that can be resolved by the SMD. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Jojo, for uh, giving clarity on the concern regarding po sa SIL and also with the scholarship and coverage po ng scholarship natin. Maraming salamat po. Uh, also, we will now proceed to the next 
uh, question po rito from Ma'am Nemi Delphine. The COC 1 and 2 in Barbering and C2 are the same title. Ano po ang pinagkaiba po nila? Kasi yung description daw ay the same po. From uh, our sectoral focal for Barbering and C2 uh, can respond to this po. Again po, for this question by Ma'am Nemi Delphine, the COC 1 and 2 in Barbering NC2 are the same title. Ano po ang pagkakaiba po nila since yung description daw ay the same? Uh, Edwin Maglalang ho, from the Qualification Standards Office. If you would notice doon sa COC, uh, doon sa naka-upload na training regulations on Barbering, dali, i-open ko lang. Yung unang COC dyan would only cover yung scalp and hair treatment and basic coloring. While yung isang assistant barber, uh, there are two kinds of uh, kwandun eh, uh, yung sa COC. Yung assistant barber na ang, ang kinikater lang niya is yung scalp and hair treatment at saka yung basic uh, coloring. The another kind of assistant barber is uh, handling yung men's hair cutting, yung shave, style beard and mustache, at saka yung chair manipulative relaxing services. That's the difference between the two COCs that was stated doon sa TR po natin. So hindi siya the same actually. So uh, there are two kinds of assistant barber na uh, stated in the training regulation po. Uh, kindly refer yung kan yun for reference. Yung naka-upload na training regulation ho ngayon sa website will speak of what I'm saying po. Thank you very much, Sir Edwin. I also saw in the chat box, uh, Sir Benedict Maayo as well from CPSDD had the same response. Maraming salamat, gentlemen. We will now proceed to the clarification po uh, by Ma'am Shane uh, Balisi from Region 2. It was mentioned by Director Jojo that the old caregiving NC2 will continue to be implemented. However, in the TESTA website, caregiving NC2 says it is superseded. Uh, pro, for our sector of vocal here in the mentioned uh, clarification, uh, may respond po. An ano po uli yung tanong? Uh, it was mentioned by Director Jojo that the old caregiving NC2 will continue to be implemented. However, yeah. in the TESTA website, caregiving NC2 says it is already superseded. Uh, yun, yun nga ho yun. Uh, that was the first, uh, Edwin Maglalang ho uli. That was the first uh, kwan ho nung... Uh, ikinukan ho yan, kinakraft yung kung talagang isusupersede sana yun. Kaya lang, there were clamor from the industry to ho, to maintain yung uh, existing training regulation because there is still a, uh, there's still market for it. So, there is a pending test the board resolution which will clarify these things po. And then, we will include also those things doon sa implementing guidelines that we are about to to release, yun po ang sagot ho doon. Kasi uh, ang isa pang pan ho dyan is yung specialization issue that some countries do not really uh, kwan na uh, yung, yung uh, jack of all trades, di ba, na kwan natin. Just like sa Israel at saka sa Japan, ang demand talaga is for uh, caregiving for elderly. So, no need to kwan yung ibang uh, other kinds of caregivers. Antemano, if you would notice in the special training, uh, dun sa caregiving na apat, masinsin ho yung mga content na pag-aaralan na ho ng mga caregivers natin. So, hindi na ho siya yung, yung, yung nandun sa dati na kwan po yun. Um, talagang it's really a uh, kwan ho, yung mga learning na kwan ho dun that needs to be kanho, handled by the trainee who would be entering into the program. Marami pong salamat. 
Thank you very much, Sir Edwin. Uh, please hold with us, Sir Edwin. There's another question po regarding sa caregiving po, caregiving NC2 for preschooler and newborn po, given by Sir Noel Evangelista of Region 12. Uh, both of the said qualifications are thread are treated as different programs. If so, paano po makakakuha ng full NC2 sa bawat program kung puro COC and as kung puro po ang COC and assessment? Yung nakalagay doon sa kwan kasi, doon sa existing kwan natin, during the assessment, mag assess na siya doon sa specialized area where they would uh, uh, specialize in. So, yun yung provision on assessment. Siguro, kwan uh, ho i-clarify din doon sa uh, IG na ilalabas. Pagka, once we we have have it tabled doon sa test the board then we will uh, clarify all those things doon sa implementing guidelines po para you the ropodotis will uh, be properly guided ayun po marami pong salamat Thank you po, Sir Edwin. Ito po, to follow up lang din po muli. Uh, until when daw po ang pwedeng i-implement yung old caregiving NC2 daw po? May pinalabas po ang certification office na advisory regarding who dito. So, kindly refer to the latest advisory that was uh, provided by the certification office regarding the extension po nung uh program uh, yung 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 mga programs where uh, the areas where uh, the the, other, the qualifications were uh, extended po, for migration uh, uh jack yes sir jojo yes sir jojo yeah. uh sinabi ko kanina uh, we don't have an old caregiving nc2 program because uh, there is no new caregiving nc2 Yung apat na caregiving ay specialized programs. So, in fact, sinasabi ko nga na uh, migration here uh, is, uh, this is this is more beyond migration. In fact, you cannot say that you are migrating and caregiving NC2 to caregiving any of those four because these four are new programs, mga anak ito ng, ng caregiving NC2. That's the very reason why why my affection uh and let me use allow me to use the to use the word affection or I, I am I am sympathetic na inclined ako to I, that's why I understood the 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 situation nung iapila ito na i-retain ang caregiving NC2 kaya lang the basic change is uh wala nang COC yung yung existing uh, caregiving NC2. Bali, magpapa-assist na lang ang, 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 ang candidate sa caregiving NC2, full qualification. Now, if he wants to be certified in any of the specialized four areas ng caregiving, he has to take the training in any of these four kung saan niyo gusto ma-certify and earn the NC for that. No, So, so yun ang... Yun ang situation. And as to when it can, when, when, uh, until when it will be offered, until when it will exist, it will exist uh, as what is provided until December 2022. However, bago dumating yung December 2022, ay lalabas na yung test the board resolution that the caregiving NC2 existing now shall continue to be offered with the corresponding modifications. So I hope na ano that that is ano that is uh, well understood. Uh hin nagkaroon lang ito ng ano sa ano sa uh, a, a lot of improvements and that's why we are thankful for those who brought this concern to our attention. And we are now given the chance to do the necessary improvements and enhancements of our training regulations. Pinagtutulong-tulungan ho namin ito sa mga iba't ibang executive offices dito sa central office. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po Sir Jojo and Sir Edwin for the clarification. So let's move po for the next question from... Uh, may, 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 wait, wait. 
kung kung ano man ang mabasa ninyo pertaining kung superseded or whatever, please stay focused on what you have heard this morning during our during our deployment session because this will supersede all whatever information na makikita nyo sa sa website or whatever just stay focused on our discussions here okay so but uh, if you have if you have other clarifications to make please uh, send it to us through the chat box thank you Thank you so much, Sir Jojo, for your guidance. And for the next question po from TESDA Region 1, uh, Ma'am Carol Bautista. Ma'am, do we have a list of industry establishments that the candidates can go for Oracle or Java certification? Uh, may we request po someone to respond to the questions po? Uh, my, uh, we are going to, the QSO will issue, will come up with an issue once uh, providing all the accredited uh, no, uh, establishments for for this particular uh, qualification. Kahapon pa ito na-raise, kahapon pa ito na-raise na concern. Thank you, Director Jojo. Uh, for the next question. For a while lamang po. Ayun, okay. So as we screen, again, uh, we would like to reiterate what has Director Jojo said a while ago that all the questions that will not be addressed during our time here in Q&A will, uh, will be responded by uh, writing, po, through writing. So please do expect, please do expect as well that we will provide that we will provide ayon please uh we we remind our participants to stay muted po as we go along this program again uh we will also provide presentations po from uh the executive offices as well as later for the on the qualifications to be discussed by the sector sectoral focus this will be pro provided via email as well as those queries that will not be uh, responded due to time constraints uh, today will be uh, will be responded officially through writing. So here po uh, by as we proceed uh, to the next yes po. That, that may make my question dito from region 12. Oh, po. On, on from from ano Bob Daryl Antenor. Uh, regarding the 21st uh, century skills, for the information of everyone, meron, meron din nakasalang ngayon, isa salang sa test the board. Uh, actually, this was already approved by the SSSDC regarding the adjustment of the training duration uh, ng mga qualifications promulgated from 2019 and before 2019 and earlier dahil nga uh, because of the uh, promulgation of the competency standards for the amended basic competencies integrated with 21st century skills once this is promulgated by the test the board hindi pa nga lang nakakapag-schedule ng test the board meeting ngayon marami kaming nag ina nag ina nag naka, nakaabang na mga mga board resolutions for action by the test the board uh, the 21st century skills will be will be integrated katulad na ng, ng mga TRs from 2019 onward hanggang ngayon. So, magchi-change yan. So, in the meantime, uh, uh, let it stay as it is. Kasi mandatory nga ang mandatory nga ang ano, ang ang 21st ang, ang amended basic competencies with 21st century skills. Uh, we were at first thinking of having or adopting constructive alignment. Kaya lang nakita namin na, na nahihirapan ang karamihan mga TBIs in, in doing the constructive alignment together with the provincial office offices to provide the necessary technical assistance. Kaya to, to, to facilitate the, the situation para hindi na humahirapan ang field is babaguhin ito is papalitan lang yung lumang basic competencies with the nine basic 
basic competencies now per certification level. Hintay-hintayin nyo lang at lalabas na yon. So there is nothing to worry about in so far as uh, ano as uh, uh, the the integration of the 21st century skills. Nagkaroon lang kasi ng 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 ano na, na miss lang yung yung pro, yung provision in when when the 21st century uh, when the basic when the amended basic competencies with 21st century skills when the when the competency standards were promulgated na miss lang yung provision kung ano ang gagawin doon sa mga TRs na in place already so now we are we are trying to make the necessary adjustments and rest assured that this will all be facilitated in time with your compliance to test the circular 107 which requires the re registration of your programs kasi magkakaroon ng ng 5 year validity period ang mga CTPR. So, uh, hintay-hintayin lang natin. Nakaabang kami kung kailan magkakaroon ng schedule ang test the board because of the change of leadership and the uh, change of the chairmanship also ng test the board. Because before, uh, during the time ni Secretary La Pena, uh, it was Secretary La Pena who, who sat as chair of the test the board. But now, it was returned back to the Dole Secretary as the chair of the test the board. And until this time, we are waiting for the schedule. Hopefully, we can have uh, the schedule, we can have uh, the schedule of the test the board meeting where all these concerns shall be uh, shall be submitted for for approval. Uh, pumasa na ho ito sa committee level and this will now be submitted for for formal promulgation. So this will this will definitely uh, be uh, no, be this will this will definitely be put in its proper place. So maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Erika Jojo, for assuring us na um, everything is on ano po on schedule and especially po dito po sa pag update natin ng ating mga basic competencies. And also, again, we would like to remind our participants po to uh, to stay with our, our, our inquiries, to stay with the 13 qualifications po that will be deployed. Ayan, we see that there are some qualifications, may mga ibang qualifications or ibang mga sectors po na nami-mention dito. So again, we would like to remind our participants to stay with the 13 qualifications to be deployed po today. Um, here po, as we move forward, address to PLO and ROMO. Ayan, may we request our, our representatives from PLO and ROMO to respond on this. From Region 1, Sir Artemio Polito, how do we reconcile this SIL, this SIL to the scholarship durations? Also po, ay, oh, sige po, yun po muna tayo. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And uh, as mentioned po, uh, a while ago by Director Giorgio Guillermo, uh, we are now in uh, concept coordination with uh, uh, concerned offices, other offices, executive offices, uh, on the need to really uh, harmonize and be able to come up with a policy recommendation as to how we would go about uh, in the reporting and in the monitoring of the uh, SIL as part of the training um, offerings that we have. Thank you. Um, Joy, salamat po. Uh, from Romo po, uh, would you like to respond, Director Limpo, or uh, representatives po from Romo? Hearing none po, I believe that suffice. Yung, ayan, I, I believe yung response po ni Ma'am Joy will suffice on the inquiry. Ma'am Joy, please do ano po, uh, hold with us po. Uh, there's another follow-up question po regarding pa rin po ito sa SIL, ma'am. Uh, number of hours po ba nito is pwede ang school lang ang mag-determine using its training plan given by Sir Harris of Region 8, ma'am? Sorry po, I didn't quite get it. Kung ang okay. number of hours... Regarding, regarding SIL, number of hours po ba nito is pwede ang school lang ang mag-determine using its training plan? Uh, if, okay. we, if we must recall, uh, the SIL portion of the training should really be 
properly coordinated with the establishment or the enterprise that will be receiving yung ating mga learners for that portion of the training. So it's not just the school that will decide as to the number because we need to consider yung learning outcomes that uh, we would want to see from our learners uh, even during the, the time that uh, he or she is undergoing the training in the enterprise. So hindi po siya, it should be collaboratively uh, decided as for the benefit, of course, of our learners. Jack? Salamat po. Ah, yes, Director Jong Jong. Uh, ito nga, diretsohin na natin itong isang question din. Uh, on uh, the clarification, if iaalaw pa po ba mag-issue ng NTTC sa caregiving superseded, sinabi ko na nga po na walang superseded na caregiving as of this time. So, and that will still, that will still uh, continue. Now, regarding naman sa question from our expert, si Mayra, Yes, this the TVI can offer simultaneously four programs for new caregiving and the old caregiving. Kaya nga, sabi ko, they can be offered, they can coexist, they can be offered together with the other caregiving sa ano because there is no there is no prescription to offer. There, there, there is no rec, there is no there are no requisite provisions for one to be offered first ahead of the other. They can be offered. Kaya lang Depende sa capacity at sa, at sa capability ng TVI if kaya nilang i-offer lahat ang apat and the existing one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Erika Jojo and Ma'am Joy for providing those clarifications po, uh, particularly dito po sa SIL po. Um, at this point, at this juncture po, uh, we would like to hear of, let us know po, uh, please do use your raise hand button po if there's any questions from our participants. Wala, Jack, itong, are, ano, yes po. Mm -hmm. Itong automotive, uh, ano, para, para mabilis tayo, I, I am, ano, I am getting into the picture. Now, all other questions not related to the 13 qualifications being deployed, as I have said, we will pick this up, katulad nitong sa automotive, but we are going to respond to your query directly to you. Okay? Yes, Paul. Thank you, Director Jojo, for assuring our, partic our participant for that. Meron po rito sa chat din po, address to, uh, address to Director Jojo po. Clarification po, um, caregiving NC2 ay mayroong tatlong projects to assess the candidate candidates, namely provide care and support to infant, toddler, and children, provide care and support to elderly and people with special needs, and provide housekeeping activities. If caregiving NC is full qualification, ito na rin ba ang mga projects na iya-assess sa mga candidates? Okay. Uh, may I request, ano, uh, Sol, to give your comment first. Wala si Sol. I'm okay. I'm ah, okay, sige. I'm trying to digest this. Okay, so... Okay, if... Uh, remember what the Director Giorgio was saying. Like, um, if the program taken was the old caregiving, and then uh, the old caregiving cuts will be applied. However, wala pa po tayong wala pa po tayong training program being offered doon sa bago po natin ng caregiving. In fact, uh, what we have now is just a recent RNA conducted by like conducted by the certification. Yung yung tanong sa chat box uh, sol ang ang ano kung yung scope pa rin ng ng existing assessment tool ay siya pa rin ang ano because uh, okay let me let me provide uh, the official stand on this as soon as the what do you call this uh, the test the board resolution uh, sustaining the existing caregiving 
will be will be promulgated by the board we are going to uh, uh, immediately uh, review uh, and then come up with an assessment tool just for full qualification kasi mawawala na doon ang coc sa sa sa, care, sa existing caregiving okay thank you po ma'am sol Apo. Thank you, Ma'am Sol and Director Jojo for those responses regarding the peer giving. Again, we would like to assure our participants uh, here in Zoom and also in YouTube that your questions are 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 taking note po or took note po um, with our monitoring team po. And also, we would like to and also there are some queries here addressed to the address to the presenters later in the afternoon. So we will address this um, in the Q&A portion later po after the break. Okay, so anything May else? Mayroon sa from, from Region 11. Yeah, uh, your, 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 your appreciation is correct. No, sa, no, what, what you stated in your question. Yun yun. Yeah, thank you po director Jojo for acknowledge uh, po, for answering po ang uh, and ano po reaffirming our um, participant from region 11 po uh, si Sir Aquiles uh, po, regarding sa caregiving on uh, a caregiving NC2 specifically for elderly po. Okay? So Anything else po? Any questions po po? Ayun, again po, ah, there are some questions that I believe that been addressed as well a while ago po. Ah, lalo na po doon sa hairdressing, ah, sa barbering, tapos doon po sa caregiving po rin. Later on, I, we saw some questions regarding sa RLA po. I believe this is addressed to the certification office. They will be our presenters uh, this afternoon po. So later, this will be raised then po uh, during our Q&A portion. Uh, dito uh, po, we have... Jack, Jack. Uh, yes po. Well, if they, have, if they have specific concerns pertaining to its qualification, we still have... They still have the chance to present them or raise them after the presentation proper for every TR now. So actually overview pa lang ho ito, overview pa lang. Oh, so okay. ano, mas yes, maganda nga if you can send to us the questions para after the presentations uh ano, we can we can give the answers right away. Thank you. Salamat po. Uh yun po um Isa po, meron na po rito, Director Jojo, na may isang query din po kay from Sir Berhel of Region 4A. Uh, HVAC sector po ay DOMRAC, NC2, and commercial air conditioning lang po ang may approved assessment fees shown in the presentation. How about po ang commercial refrigeration, NC3 po, uh, and land transportation, MAC, uh, MAC, NC2? Ayun po ah. Uh, po. So, so let's ask ano the CPSDD. Uh, sir, this is still for uh, uh determination. Uh, so we have this also. Uh, uh, so, we have so, actually, we already have existing fees for this, but uh it was discussed now since hindi po kasama doon sa ating so, so the existing the existing fees will 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 prevail as of the time as of uh, as of, uh, for the time being yes yes i got it okay so kaya kaya hindi na na present yun okay thank you po ma'am sol ayan for responding po sa question po ni sir berhel and um yes Virgil. Virgil, uh, Virgil. <laughs> Ayun, uh, my apologies apologies po uh, if i mispronounce your names po oh, sa ating mga participants again maraming maraming salamat po for uh for participating here in our Q&A portion and we hope that uh this uh delivered uh, clarifications po for those uh TRs and also uh um, in SIL concern, particularly, yan, marami pong mga na-raise na concern dito. Uh, 
Ayan, again, ayan, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, so this is also may pahabol lamang po. mag lang po ako regarding sa old caregiving na MC po. Pwede pa po ba yun i-renew? Yan, sa caregiving wala, uli po ito. Wala, 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 ngang, wala ngang old. Opo, wala po kasi ng old. Existing. I am using the word existing. Yes. So, so it, 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 talagang maririnyo ito because of the uh, TC-107, yung Test the Circular 107, that requires all programs to be reissued the CTPR with the validity period. But, it, this will not this is not going to be treated as a new application or not even as renewal because if if uh, the test the board will be promulgated then it will just continue just like any other program mm -hmm. so Ayun, maraming okay. salamat po, Director Jojo, for uh, reiterating. Again po, there is no all the caregiving in situ po. Oh, it will there be is no superseded. Opo, there no is superseded. Mm -mm. Ang reference Kung nalagyan, po, yeah. Kung nalagyan yung sa website na superseded, hindi ho yun. No? Sir, sa ano right. that, sir, sir uh, if Edwin. I may add, uh, if I may add, uh, pagka natapos yung test the board resolution na yan, we will uh, kung aayusin po lahat, pati yung nandun sa web. Hindi nga siya dapat superseded because of the recent events yeah. na nangyayari ngayon. We will uh, kung ho, make the necessary adjustments para ma-implement ho ng maayos yung programa regarding caregiving. Yeah. At saka, yun ang sinasabi ko, if ever there are concerns na Na, na, na ano your your experiencing challenges paalam nyo lang sa amin kasi there have been situations already na may mga TRs nga na na-offload na sa website ibinalik namin nung nung when I was informed na kailangan ibalik yon dahil wala pa ngang wala pa ngang deployed uh, hindi pa na deploy yung bagong yung yung amended TR uh, case in point was the food processing NC2 noon Kasi ang in-upload yung bago, yung anim, ang, ang core competencies, if you remember. Kaya lang, hindi pa ito na-de-deploy. Na so, when, when, that, when, that, when my attention was called by, by a, uh, an Utpras focal person from the PO, ay pinakinggan ko agad yung Utpras focal and then in, in, pinalitan namin yung nasa website. Kaya pakiusap ko lang sa lahat, please let us know if there is any concern na magagawa namin ng paraan kaagad. Because I really, I really, you know, take take things uh, uh, seriously and act immediately. Because I know ang pakiramdang ng mga nasa field. Dahil galing ho ako sa in, sa, sa sa field. At I know your I know your cares and your concerns. And uh, I have I have uh, made it my commitment that if there is anything I can do to facilitate the work of the people in the field, gagawin ho namin yan. Kasi nga sabi ko sa dami ng mga ginagawa ng mga tao na nasa field uh, at least tayo ma we can feel na we can make you feel that you have our support for the things that you are doing. Okay? Ang maganda pa nga ho diyan Sir Jojo, we are managing our own system regarding sa TR. Hindi na tayo nakakondon sa ibang sa sa ikto dati na yeah. I, I think I, I think aware na lahat na na deploy natin yung TRMIS eh. So so I I don't know if uh, everybody is aware of the, the training regulations monitoring information system where well, you can just go to the system if you want to have if you have a question about assessment fee about kailan na promulgate any in any relevant information siguro siguro before the end of the day Adrian i flash natin yung QR code where uh, they will be able, where they can connect or the link to the TRMIS para they can they can have have the information they need related to the TRs lahat ho ng TRs lahat ng TRs na ano eh pwede niyo ma-access doon sa TRMIS i think everybody knows that kasi that has been that has been ano pilot tested in all the POs and in all in all the regions no so ano so paalam niyo lang sa amin yung ano Huwag niyong susulohin ang concerns niyo sa field. Paalam niyo sa amin at pag, paghahati-hatian namin dito yan sa central office. Uh, 
uh, certification office, NIT, SD, PLO, QSO, planning office. Nag-uusap-usap po kami mga executive directors paano namin uh, ma 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 mabibigyan, ma mabibigyan pansin ang mga concerns ninyo sa field. Dahil kami nandito lahat ay galing ho sa field. Kaya nararamdaman ho namin kayo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Zozo uh, and Sir Edwin. Again, marami pong salamat sa marami pong salamat sa ating mga inquiry po. Uh, at uh, we hope that this will give clarification po sa ating mga kasama po sa mga regions, sa mga TDIs and PBIs. Also, we would like to thank Director Jojo for assuring uh, yeah. uh, yes, yeah. po, Director Jojo. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, 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 may, may private message kasi sa akin dito. I'll just give this this instruction sa CPSDD uh, siguro uh, Sol or kay kanina to kay Bensel or kay kay Anthony sir please check po ng coding of cuts in domestic work against T2MIS yes we will do that so paki-check niyo yung coding sa T2MIS yes thank you for thank you for for this reminder so ano so paalam niyo lang sa amin yung concerns at uh, kami ay nakahandang ano uh, mag-assist sa inyo. Thank you very much po doon Director Jojo and also this is well noted po by CPSDB. Uh, again, maraming salamat Director Jojo for assuring our yung mga kasama po natin, yung mga colleagues po natin dito sa ang ating mga participants po that QSO and other executive offices will be there for them uh, through uh, in deploying this 13 qualifications. Uh, and yes po. May yung ito kahapon pa rin ito tungkol doon sa mga surrendered CTPR sa caregiving uh, just inform and uh, we are we are noting this at inaayos namin ito kung anong gagawin diyan sa mga na surrender yung CTPR the moment na lumabas yung test the board resolution please just keep us posted yun lang yun lang ang request ko sa inyo para we will be able to to assist your concerns no sa ano Ganon, ganon kayo kahalaga sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat po, Director Jojo. Um, we are pleased to hear the concerns and clarifications from our implementing body and offices. And thank you so much for your questions. As we are not able to discuss all questions right now, we will continue po yung Q&A portion after the presentations later this afternoon. And of course, we will make sure that this will be forwarded po sa mga respective offices natin. Uh, now, we will have our one-hour lunch break. So it's 12 o'clock na po. And we will resume at 1 p.m. Happy lunch, everyone.
Later pa, sir. sa balay ni Digong.
Hello, Adrian. Tara na yung mga. Okay ba? Okay. Thank you. Okay po.
Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. I hope our participants. Again, good afternoon, everyone. I hope our participants had a social meal the, during the lunch break. And good uh, afternoon, we, ma'am. Good afternoon. And uh, we, had we had a fruitful discussions this morning. We had a fruitful discussions this morning. Tama po ba? Ayan, good afternoon po muli. Good afternoon po. All right, so we had a fruitful discussion this morning. We heard and learned from the discussions presented by the PLO given by AAED Song Song, uh, from Sir Rafael from NITS DCTAD, and also from Romo, represented by Director Rosalina Constantino. Our participants also raised their inquiries during the Q&A portion. Also, we appreciate the guidance of our Executive Director, Director Jojo Guillermo, for emphasizing on the assistance of QSO to TDIs and TVIs and other stakeholders on implementing these qualifications. Before we continue with our program, may we remind those who haven't completed yet the attendance sheet, the link is shared in the chat box. Thank you, Jack. As we continue with the presentations of executive offices, uh, Next to present from National Institute for DSD, National Tibet Trainers Academy, Mr. Alfonso P. Francisco. Good afternoon to the month of this uh, 2022 national deployment. So, on uh, Promulgated TRs, CATS, assessment piece, and assessment piece. So uh, I will be presenting. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Paul. Yes, sir. So I'll be presenting the Regional Lead Trainers Development Program, one of the major program of program of being con being con conducted by NTTA. So the presentation uh, consists of first an introduction to RLTDP. Second is the the modules and learning outcomes of the RLTDP, then the training duration of each modules, the qualifications of a resource person, the qualification of participants, as well as the RLTDP implementation. So, so to start with, Okay, pagdating na sa loob, nabuksan mo na yung bintana, nabuksan mo na yung kurtina, nabuksan mo na yung ilaw, ano next ang gagawin? Judy Ann? Programs for executive, supervisory, teaching and non-teaching personnel, especially those within TESDA. So, the Regional Lead Trainers Development Program is a cap capability program created to produce a pool of regional lead trainers or RLTs for existing, new, or emerging skills requirements at the, na at the national level. We, we refer to these skills which are described in the promulgated TRs or 
develop competency standards which have national applications. In, 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 sorry. in implementing the, uh, the RLTDP, we are guided by the test the circular, circular number 151 series of 2020, which provides the implementing guidelines of the program. The RLT, RRLTDP has three modules. These modules, uh, at the first module is the skills training. So this module aims to equip the RLTs with the necessary competencies, especially the core competencies in the TR or the CS. Before the existing uh, implementing guidelines have been established, the RLTDP only has a total of five days training duration. In response to the clamor of our participants to include a longer duration and the acquisition of the new skills requirement, the program has included the skills training module with a total of 10 days. As a way forward, we are currently reviewing in order to check the appropriateness of the training duration to the different qualifications or programs for skills training. In uh, module two, it essentially aims to capacitate the RLTs on how, on how to deliver competency-based training for the new program or qualification. It covers uh, discussing the Philippine-Tibet system, validating the CBC exemplars, preparing training session, utilizing uh, multimedia and training delivery, and facilitating learning session. It has a duration of four days. At NTTA, it is a uh, is uh, presented by our TM1 trainers. For, uh, for the third module, it is a uh, delivering multiplier training, which is intends to provide it is to plan their multiplier training to produce more trainers for the program. It, it also has a training duration of four days and covers planning training delivery developing learning materials, computing training costs, and demonstrating teaching delivery relative to the new TR or CS. Also, as a way forward again, we are currently reviewing also the guidelines in order to check the appropriateness of these learning outcomes and the duration for continuous process improvement of the program. Now, uh, on the other hand, specifically for module one, skills training wherein we invite resource persons. These are the qual qual qualifications outlined in the, in the present guidelines. So qualification of our resource person, the resource person must be sufficient expertise in the skills in the new TR or CS. He she, may, he she may, may be a prominent practitioner in the industry or the technical expert who developed the competency standard. On the other hand, the qualification of our participants, we usually request nominees from the regional offices, offices depending on the programs. Participants can be TTBI, TTI trainers, or industry practitioners, or a combination of both. The participant must have the following qualifications. So they are from a TBR, TBI, or technical vocational, technical vocational institution trainers. They must uh, have training or education or work experience relevant to the competency standard or the qualification. 
and they must have at least one year teaching experience. If they are from industry practitioners, they must have completed at least 10 years of basic education and must have at least three years of industry experience relevant to the competency standards or the qualification. Uh, I'm almost there. This is the last slide. So we're now uh, talking about the RLP, RLPDB implementation. The NTTA shall have the primary function to implement the RLPDP or the RLPDP development program in collaboration with NITSD and the TESDA regional office, as shown in this diagram. The NITSD developed the CBC exemplar for the promulgated TR, as mentioned earlier by uh, the speaker from NITSD, Mr. Sendong Rafael. So, or developed CS for the emerging or commonly needed qualification by industries at the national level again. The curriculum exemplar shall be referenced in delivering the skills training and delivering multiplier training modules of the RLT development program. It shall provide technical assistance to NTTA in continuously improving the implement, implementation of the RLT development program. The regional offices shall identify and endorse the NTTA, the participants, who shall be developed as regional lead trainers. It shall be responsible for organizing and implementing the RLT multiplier program in their respective regions to be facilitated by the trained regional lead trainers. The conduct of competency assessment for the RLT shall be coordinated by NTTA with the certification office or concerned regional offices when applicable. The RO shall be responsible for organizing and conducting the multiplier program to be facilitated by their respective RLPs. The implementation of the RLT multiplier program at the region shall be monitored by NTTA. There are the RLPs shall be responsible for preparing the action plan for the multiplier training program for the regional office. Before the end of the, pro, the training here at NTTA, we usually re re required uh, the participants of our RLP to uh, develop their action plan for the multiplier program. Then, uh, once they return to their uh, respective regions, they, uh, they let the regional trainer approve the action plan. So that's all, no, folks. That ends, my, that ends my presentation. Once again, good afternoon and keep safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Sir Ad, for your comprehensive presentation for the focus on the region development. So, we shall now move to the last presentation from certification office, which will be followed by thirty minutes report. And let us give a warm virtual welcome to the assistant executive director, Director John M. Mato. Again, uh, we will we would like to give the floor to Assistant Executive Director of uh, Certification Office, Director Janet Abasolo. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. 
So I, I would just like to share my presentation. Okay, so once again, good afternoon. So uh, for the certification office, uh, this presentation will provide the guidance on the uh, training regulations that are being deployed now. So the topics or the contents of my presentation are, will focus on the following, the migration period, process for migration, infrastructure and status of the conducted regional uh, capability building programs for regional read assessors, accreditation of competency assessment centers, and accreditation of competency assessors. So this is one of the qualifications, the training regulations of the qualifications that are being deployed now, so programming Java NC3. So based on TC or TESA Circular 107, we have uh, on section nine that focus on migration from old to uh, updated uh, registered programs with training regulations. So specifically item A.2.B point point of that section provides the following provision. If the changes in the amended training regulations are just minor and do not affect the overall delivery of the program, re-registration of the program shall not be required. However, the TVI shall be required to submit updated documents such as but not limited to curricular documents and qualifications of the trainers and staff and other documents that be required related to the program do not necessarily affect the delivery of the program. So for programming Java NC3, so as I verified it with uh, Ms. Sheila, so yun pong amendments ng training regulation as this ay hindi po siya major. So that provision of that section will apply on this. So more of reissuance lang siya of certificate of Tibet program registration. Subject to the submission of updated uh, uh, requirements on trainers qualifications specifically po naka indicate po is the trainer must be oracle certified associate java se8 programmer or java se8 programmer one and must be a holder of national tibet trainers certificate or ntc level one in programming java nc3 so currently the following are the regions which have uh, the registered programs on this qualification we have regions 1, 4B, NCR, 6, and 7 for a total of 13 registered programs on Java programming NC3. The following are also the further requirements or conditions relative to the migration of programs. This is on item 8.3, section 11 on registration of TESTA circular number 1070 of 2022. So the one year period of migration of the affected registered WTR or NTR program shall commence only after the conduct of the following activities. First, the deployment of the implementing guidelines on training regulations and competency assessment tools. So basically for all those qualifications that are being deployed mind, that, that are being deployed now, na issue na po yung implementing guidelines nila 2020 pa. So meron na tayong existing implementing guidelines except po for domestic work, NC2. And second, the second condition or second requirement is the conduct of capability building program for regional lead trainers and or regional lead assessors. So for the certification office, we have conducted also the capability building program for prospective regional lead assessors for these qualifications. So ito po dapat yung uh, kinocomply natin in terms of the migration of these programs. Okay. 
So for programming Java NC3, based on our verification, naglapse na po yung kanyang uh, migration period. Since the IG, wala po tong, uh, wala pong RLA, kasi vendor assessment po to. So the date of the issuance of the IG was in 2021, July 28, 2021. And Yung one-year migration po niya is naglapse po noong July 29, 2022. So this program is not also included po on the list, uh, noong sa memo po, on the list of qualifications na may extend po yung migration niya until December of 2022. So the regions, the trust focus are now having the reconciliation of their compendiums. So we expect na kung, may, kung, mer kung meron pang hindi nakapag-migrate, doon sa amended tier and programming Java NC3. So that program should now be delisted po sa ating, subject to the closure of the program and delisted po doon sa ating mga compendiums. Okay, so ito po yung infra, the programming and uh, Java NC3. So we have a total of uh, eight TVIs na may registered program on the Java Programming NC3. Meron ho tayong uh, entity si holders na 13. So ito po yung kung saan po region. So uh, regions 1, NCR, 4B, 6. So sila po yung may registered programs on the amended uh, TR on Programming Java NC3. So these qualifications are also being deployed now. Handloom weaving upright NC2 and commercial air conditioning installation and uh, servicing NC3. Actually po, these are new uh, qualifications po. So yung TRs po nila is uh, newly developed and promulgated. So ano po yung provision that will apply? So dati po siyang... So, new siya so wala rin pong migration na mangyayari so so suppose pong uh, provisions so, na susundin natin dito is compliance to the uh, program registration requirements based on TC 107 but in this po that there are registered uh, programs as NTR kung halimbawa po may mga ni-register tayo we should view that review natin yung curriculum, yung mga competencies na kapalob doon. Then, uh, this is under migration from NTR to WTR. So, under item 8.1 on section 11, still on registration of TESTA circular number 1070 of 2022, it provides that full registration of program is required in all cases of migration from NTR to WTR. So, the following requirements should be, should be submitted. Uh, updated corporate and administrative documents, curricular requirements, faculty and personnel, uh, updates on program guidelines, updated updates on support services, and documentary evidence of financial capacity. So as of now po, wala po tayong infra on handloom weaving, meaning uh, this means na wala pa siyang registered program, wala pang TVI, na nag-offer on this, wala pa rin uh, accredited assessor or accredited assessment center and wala pa rin po tayong uh, certified uh, entity si, uh, holder on this. So nakapag-conduct na po kami so far ng uh, regional lead, uh, capability building program for regional assessor on this qualification. Okay. So the period of migration for this qualification, so uh, so this, since this is, uh, these are uh, new qualifications, so hindi po mag apply yung uh, migration period. So in case lang po na meron nga po mga NTR programs na uh, nakaregister, so tingnan po natin kung kalagang kailangan natin i-align on this newly developed and promulgated TR. So nakapag the date of conducted capability building program for regional lead assessors qualifications uh, we're on we're on May 24 to 27, 2022. 
So, yung pong, uh, period of migration niya is until May 28, 2023. Yung naman handloom weaving, May 17 to 19. So, yung pong period of migration niya hanggang May 20, 2023. So for the infrastructure on the commercial air conditioning, installation, and servicing, we have uh, one in NCR pa lang po. Okay, there is one TTI, one TVI, uh, which have registered programs on this qualification. And we have one entity shoulder and one accredited competency assessor. Caregiving. So, as what Director Jojo have mentioned this morning, so nakikinig po kami. So, sinasabi po niya na wala pong na-supersede, so wala pong na-amend. So, yung caregiving, existing caregiving, so I will not also call it as old, I still exist. Then, nandun, nandun na rin po tayo doon sa four um, uh, promulgated na training regulations na mas specialize yung uh, caregiving uh, NC2. So, wala pong, if magiging status ko po yung ating implementation on this caregiving NC2, wala pong migration na mangyayari. But, uh, so far po for the certification office, we have issued memorandum on the extension of this qualification until December 2022. Pero nga po doon sa discussion kaninang umaga, so wala pong migration na mangyayari since the caregiving NC2 is, is still existing. So kailangan po lang siguro natin um, bilisan on our side to issue whatever implementing guidelines or for the uh, approval of the omnibus test over the solution to come out para po makapag-issue ng uh, implementing guidelines on the on this caregiving NC2 and uh, mag-a-apply pa rin po yung existing uh, guidelines for the four specialization on caregiving NC2. So ito po yung uh, memos which were issued by the certification office relative to the extension of migration on qualifications na nag po. Remember ng 2021 nakadalawang extended extension din po ang ating uh, migration and still there are programs which have not migrated until December of 2021 so we issued memorandum number 2 to 6 years of 2022 that was in April 19 2022 so the attached list of those uh, qualifications ay may extend pa rin po yung kanya kanilang migration until December 2022. Then in June 2022, we issued Memorandum 340 series of 2022 uh, which included po yung caregiving NC2. Wala pa po sir, mga ma'am yung usapin na what Director Jojo have explaining this morning that wala pong na-supersede, wala pong na-amend, so the TR, caregiving NC2 na may 700 plus training hours, still exist. Plus yung pong four na uh, specialized po yung uh, specialized uh, caregiving po yung focus niya. So, nag, uh, so it coexist po yung caregiving NC2 plus yung four po na promulgated po. So, ito po yung list. So, hindi nga po, sabi nga ni Director Jojo, wala pong na-amend, wala pong na-supersede. So, uh, we will, uh, Keso will fast track po yung approval ng amended omnibus test board resolution relative to this so that we can also issue implementing guidelines for the guidance of the regional and provincial implementers. So from my still on migration from old to updated WTR. So so this was mentioned a while ago. So these are the two conditions. So the deployment of the implementing guidelines, which means you issue once for, and the conduct of capability building program for regional lead trainers and regional lead assessors. Okay. 
So, hindi na po to mag-a-apply. Pero doon po sa ka- mga nakapag- uh, migrated, nakapag-migrate na po, uh, maraming maraming salamat po doon sa mga uh, trade uh, test uh, institutions which have migrated because they have complied with our guidelines. Pero nga po, dahil sa discussion kanina, so this, there will be no migration uh, on this qualification. So we await for the approval of the Omnibus Test the Board Resolution uh, as evidence po ng ating discussion na wala pong migration for this caregiving NC2. Pero just in, uh, na-extend naman po yung migration nito until December 2022 based on our memorandum. Okay. So within the one-year migration period, the TVI has one year to comply with the requirements of program registration. So provide updates or, or provide updated corporate and administrative documents, curricular requirements, updates, uh, updated faculty, uh, updated list of faculty and personnel with the corresponding requirements of software trainers, uh, updates on program guidelines, updates on support services, and documentary evidence of financial capacity. For TVIs with affected programs, uh, they shall be allowed to continue the ongoing program being conducted while in the migration period. TVI shall be allowed to accept new enrollees for the old registered uh, WTR or NTR program within the migration period in the implementing guidelines of the corresponding training regulations. Provided that the end of the training and the assessment of the learners shall be within the migration period using the standards of the old training regulations. And provided further that there are still available competency assessors for the old registered WTR program. This is on item 8.6, section 11 of TESTA Circular 107 series of 2021. After the one-year migration period, programs which are not migrated within the period as stated in the implementing guidelines of the training regulations and provisions contained in item number three, section 11 of TC 107, series of 2021, shall be closed in accordance with the procedures on closure, program, closure of programs and revocation of CTPR. So this is item 8.8. 8.7 of Section 11 of TC 107, Series of 2021. So, case in point nga po is yung programming uh, Java NCT. Then, uh, number five, these are the uh, provisions and the effects of Section 21 on transitory clause of TC 107, 2021. On the number of registered programs subject for migration, wala na po to. This will not apply because of the explanation of Director Jojo this morning. But we have so far the following infrastructure doon po sa uh, nilabas na training regulations on the four caregiving qualifications. So for the Caregiving on NC2 on clients with special needs. We have uh, one NTTC holder in the following regions. In regions 2 and NCR, we have one accredited uh, assessment center in private, that is in CAR, so body port. Then we have also in barn. And we have also one accredited competency assessment in 4A. For the caregiving grade schooler to adolescent, we have also the following. We have NTTC holders 
in regions 2, NCR, and 4B. We have also accredited assessment centers in CAR, regions 2, and we have also accredited competency assessors in regions uh, NCR and 4A. And we have, further, we have also a NTTC holder in region 7. Also for region 11, we have one accredited AC. For the caregiving, uh, specifically for elderly, we have the following infra. So we have NTTC holders in the following regions, regions 2, NCR, 4B, and 6, and 7. For the accredited assessment centers, we have in regions CAR, 2, NCR, and 4A. 7, 9, 11, and 12. For the accredited competency assessors, we have in regions 2, NCR, and in region 7. For the caregiving uh, sa newborn po, so we have uh, one TVI in 4A, which is a registered program on this qualification. We have NTTC holders in NCR and in 4A. For the accredited assessment centers, we have in the following regions, in CAR, regions 2, uh, NCR, 4A, uh, 7, 9, and 12. For the accredited competency assessors, we have in NCR, 4A, 7, and also in 9. For migration from old uh, to updated WTR, so ito po yung uh, amended po, except for yung caregiving na po. So item 8.2.A, section 11 of TC 107 series of 2022, provides that if the old TR has been updated with major changes such as but not limited to, additional critical units of competency and other significant changes, the re-registration of the program shall be required. So for these programs for re-registration is required. Then ito po yung period of migration for these qualifications. For barbering po, uh, the conducted capability building program for the regional lead assessors uh, were on the following dates. For barbering NC2, we have two batches po kasi, February 2 to 4, 2022, and March 9, 2022. So yung period po ng migration niya will be up to March 10, 2023. For the beauty care, we just uh, we conducted the care uh, capability building program for the regional lead assessor last February 20 to 24, 2022. So the period of migration will be until February 25, 2023. For the domestic work, we have conducted uh, two batches, June 20 to 22, 2022, and July 5 to 8, 2022. So the issuance of the implementing guidance is, is uh, we are awaiting for the issuance of the implementing guidelines of this amended uh, training regulations on domestic work NC2. For the hairdressing NC2, we have conducted capability building programs so for prospective RLAs last February 7 to 11, 2022 and March 9, 2022. So the period of migration is until March 10, 2023. For hairdressing NC3, we have conducted the CBP for RLAs last February 7 to 11, 2022. The period of migration is until February 12, 2023. For rock servicing, DOMRAC NC2, the R 
RLA, the CBP for RLA was conducted last June 1 to 3, 2022. So the period of migration will be until June 4, 2023. So these are the number of registered programs subject to uh, migration. So for the beauty care NC2, we have a total of uh, 117. Pero naka-include po dyan yung mga uh, MTP bundled programs na rin po. For hairdressing NC2, we have a total of 129 programs to be migrated. Hairdressing NC3, 2. Barbering NC2, 5. Rack, servicing NC2, 92. And for the domestic work NC2, 116. So for a grand total of 461 uh, registered programs subject for migration. Okay. So this is a reiteration po doon kanina since this cover po the old to W to updated WTR registered WTR programs. So we just like to reiterate that item six of section 11 TVIs with affected programs shall be allowed to continue on the ongoing program being conducted while in the migration period. So pwede rin po siyang mag-accept ng enrollees provided that yung end of training and assessment of the learners shall be within the migration period and provided that when it comes to assessment, meron pa rin po yung mga uh, assessors na magkoconduct ng assessment. So items 7 and 8 of section 11 of TESA circular number 1070 of 2022 states that programs which are not migrated within the period as stated in the implementing guidelines will be subject to closure proceedings and revocation of the certificate of TVET program registration. So TESTA shall also ensure that proper notification to the TVI has been made regarding the closure of the program. So section 21, this is on the transitory clause of TC1070 of 2022. All registered programs shall be reissued with CTPRs with five years of validity period within one year upon approval of this omnibus guidelines. So yung pong uh, magmamigrate na po natin mga programs will now be issued bearing this five-year validity in the CTPR. For beauty care, ito po yung infra natin. So we have uh, a TVI with a registered program in Region 2. And we have also accredited assessment centers in NCR and Region 5. On the co accredited competency assessors, we have in Regions 2 and NCR. For hairdressing NC2, medyo maramarimi po to. So, in all regions, meron po siya. So, meron po tayong 14 TTIs with registered programs in hairdressing NC2, 106 for the private uh, TVIs. We have a total of 120 NTTC. We have a total of 282 NTTC holders. For the accredited assessment centers, we have a total of uh, eight for TTIs, private ACs, 32 for a total of 40. For the accredited competency assessors for hairdressing NC2, we have a total of 78. For hairdressing NC3, so mangilan ngilan lang po yung regions na meron po siya. Uh, in terms of registered programs, we have in uh, CAR, NCR, so tag-isa po sila. Sa NTTC holders, uh, we have in CAR 2, 7, NCR, and 4B, and also in Region 11. So meron po tayong total na 15 NTTC holders. Meron tayong dalawang T uh, TVIs with registered programs. Sa accredited assessment center, we have one TTI, that is in CAR, 
we have also one private AC that is also in car. Barbering. So, meron po tayong a total of five private TVIs with registered programs on Barbering and C2. So, nasa regions CAR 1 and 7. For NTTC holders, we have a total of 11. So, nandun po siya sa CAR 2, 4, and in uh, Region 7. For accredited assessment center, we have two private ACs in CAR and also six accredited competency assessors also in CAR. We have one accredited competency assessor in NCR and we have also one in seven for both accredited assessment center and competency assessor. For DOMRAC, RAC servicing NC2, so halos lahat po ng regions. So meron po tayong a total of two, meron po tayong total of 84 uh, institutions with registered programs on this qualification. 42, 40, uh, 42 TTIs have registered programs on this and 42 rin doon sa ating private TVIs. In terms of accredited assessment centers, we have 34 for TTIs. We have 23 for private assessment centers for a total of 57. For accredited competency assessors, we have a total of 78 for this qualification. For the uh, domestic work, so halos na rin po lahat ng regions meron. So we have a total now of 160. 16, okay, registered programs dun po sa ating amended domestic work NC2. We have a total of 399 NTTC holders. Accredited assessment centers, 121. Accredited competency assessors, 248. Okay. So this is now the status of the conducted regional capability building programs for regional lead assessors. Okay, so for barbering, we have uh, a total of 11 who were trained, 11 din po yung na-assess, 8 po yung na-certified. Meron po isa na nakapag-undergone uh, ng loading activity. So we all know that yung loading activity that will, com that will complete po yung ating uh, program, capability building program for the regional lead assessor para po siya um, ma-authorize so that we can issue a test the order for that regional lead assessors and authorize to conduct po yung ating uh, cap further capability building programs po on RLA for this qualification. So ang um, next steps po to be done are also accredited assessment centers, also regional lead assessors, and conduct capability building program for provincial lead assessors. For beauty care NC2, we have so far uh, trained and assessed uh, 23 in certified for 820. For these qualifications, ROs to accredit assessment centers, regional lead assessors also conduct a capability building program for provincial lead assessors. So for caregiving, yung po sa preschool to adolescents, uh, NC2, we have a total of 13 who were trained, 12 were assessed, 11 were certified. Isa po ang nakapag ng loading in NCR and in Region 4A. So for this region, there are RLAs, uh, are also accredited assessment centers, regional lead assessors, and conduct capability building program for prospective regional lead, assess, uh, regional lead assessors. And also for the other regions, for the regional lead assessors na nakapag-undergo po ng uh, capability building program on this qualification is to undergo loading. So the certification office is also assisting uh, our regional offices in the conduct of loading. So with the invitation of the national experts 
who will monitor yung conduct po ng loading activity. For yung kung caregiving clients with special needs, so 17 were trained, 12 were assessed, 5 were certified. Meron po tayong isang assessor that had undergone loading that is in 4A. So yung in 4A, pwede na po mag-credit na assessment center and also regional lead assessor and to conduct the capability building program for uh, provincial lead assessors. Okay. For caregiving, you say elderly, 17 were trained, 18 were assessed, 14 were certified. So may mga regional lead assessors that had undergone loading in NCR, regions 2, 7, and 9. So next steps are also to accredit assessment centers, regional lead assessors, and conduct capability program for provincial lead assessors. And for the caregiving, newborn preschool or NC2, we have trained 17, assessed 17, 11 were certified. Um, meron pong tag-iisang lead on lead assessors who had undergone the loading uh, in regions 3, 4A, 7, and 9. So for next steps are also to accredit assessment centers, uh, other prospective regional lead assessors, and also to conduct a capability building program for provincial lead assessors. For the commercial cooking, commercial air conditioning, sorry, installation and servicing NC3, 30 po yung na-train, 30 were assessed, 30 were uh, certified. So meron na rin pong nakapag-undergo ng loading out of this uh, regional lead assessors in regions 2, 3, 4B, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, and NCR. So next steps to be done are also to accredit regional lead assessors, and conduct capability building program for provincial lead assessors. For domestic work, uh, NC2, we have trained 42, assessed 42, 34 po ang NAS uh, certified. Uh, there are uh, regional lead assessors who have already undergone uh, loading in region 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, and Caraga. So next step, si to conduct loading activity for Luzon regions on September 19 to 23, 2022. ROs to accredit assessment centers, regional lead assessors, and conduct uh, capability building program for provincial lead assessors. And also, uh, for those po yung nakakompleto na po yung uh, capability building program for the regional lead assessors, that includes po yung loading activity CO po will issue the test the order on these lead assessors, authorizing them to conduct po yung uh, capability board building program in their own regions and provinces po. Hairdressing NC2, 28 po yung na-trained, 28 were assessed, 24 were certified. Uh, there are regional lead assessors who had undergone loading in regions 3 and 8. So the next steps are also to accredit assessment centers, regional lead assessors, and conduct CBP for PLAs. Hairdressing NC3, nine po yung na-train, nine were assessed, four were certified. So wala pa pong nakapag-conduct ng loading activity. So ROs with prospective RLAs to undergo loading activity. The same po with the hand loom. Uh, Loading activity po yung hindi pa nakoconduct for those assessed and certified na 15. Okay. Then for the rock servicing, DOM rock NC2, train po ay 70, 37, assess 37, 35 po na certified. So meron na pong mga nakapag-undergan ng loading activity in regions 2, 4, a 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, Barm, Car, Caraga. So for these regions, are also to accredit uh, regional lead assessors and conduct capability building program for provincial lead assessors. So this is just a reminder po or a reiteration on the requirements of accreditation of assessment centers and assessors. So nasa existing OP pa rin naman po natin ito. So ito po yung checklist. So, hindi ko na po iisa-isahin since uh, alam nyo na po to. So, this, is, this slide is only a reminder na ito po yung checklist natin on the 
uh, accreditation of competency assessor. Okay. So, nandito rin po yung loading activity. For the new applicant competency assessor, dapat po siya makapag-conduct ng actual assessment to at least 10 under the supervision of a lead assessor. So, ito nga po yung magko-compete nga po yung ano natin, capability building program for regional lead assessor. Pero doon po sa accredited competency assessors na for amended training regulations, he or she she shall only be required to conduct actual assessment to at least two candidates for the related qualification. Then this is also the checklist uh, of requirements for the accreditation of assessment centers. Okay. So for the information of everyone, we have uh, also revised na po yung ating mga, some of the templates po or forms dun sa ating mga OPs. So, na-upload na rin po doon sa website for your guidance po. So, may mga napalitan na po doon na mga signatories. Okay, so, thank you very much. That ends my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Director Janet, for guiding our Rapodos on the process of migration and con and also the conduct of regional lead assessors. I believe that uh, some of the inquiries uh, this morning has also been answered through those presentation, uh, through that uh, very detailed presentation. Maraming salamat po, Director Janet. Also, let's give out our heart emoticons for all uh, representatives and presenters from PLO, ROMO, NITSD, and the Certification Office. Muli, maraming salamat po sa paglalaan ng oras at pagpapaunlak ng aming invitasyon para sa aktibitad na ito. Now, we will proceed to the question and answer portion. The floor is now open for questions, clarifications from our dear participants. However, due to the time constraints, we might not be able to accommodate all your questions. And for that, all the remaining inquiries will be consolidated and will be addressed through official writing. Please use, your, uh, please use uh, the raise hand icon uh, so we can acknowledge you properly, or you may write your questions in the chat box. When writing your questions in the chat box, please do make sure to mention to whom you would like to address your questions, so that we can, uh, so that we can deliver it to the respective office. Again, also as a reminder, please do make sure that you accomplish your attendance form for today. Okay, so we have here, uh, there is one uh, from Mom Femia from Region 2. Pwede po ba makakuha ng copy? Madami pong, uh, madami pong queries kung saan ang accredited AC. This will be uh, this will be provided then po at the end of our program. Pwede, meaning, pwede pa pong makarenew ng NC for caregiving NC2? This is a question from Sir Severino of Region 6. Perhaps uh, for our sectoral focus as well. I believe this has been addressed as well, no? That, um, uh, that we can, uh, that uh, one can still renew their NC for caregiving NC2. For clarification from Ama, uh, Ma Amabel Amante, uh, regarding sa old caregiving NC2, ay ito po, this has been answered as well by Director Jojo this morning, that there is no uh, old caregiving NC2 but it will be migrated. Uh, tama po, no? Para sa ating mga sectoral focus din po. Tama po. Na wala po tayong old caregiving NC2. Ayan. O, clarification lang po from Sir Mark of Region 4B. Ano po mga activities na allowed within the migration period? Pwede po ba kami mag-accept ng application for accreditation ng AC at CA sa OLTR within the migration period 
also renewal of national certificates all TR. Pwede po ba within the migration period? I believe this can be answered by the certification office, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Director Janet. Yes, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Pero sa caregiving kasi, as what Director George had mentioned this morning, wala siyang old. So as of now, nagko-coexist yung caregiving NC2 na may 700 plus na hours plus yung 4. So wala rin migration na mangyayari. So pwede, so kung, kung tutu si status ko lahat ng implementation doon sa caregiving NC2. So yung mga hindi pa nakapag-migrate, Sorry for the word. Wala nga palang migration. So yung those TVIs na may registered program on that qualification na may 700 plus uh, nominal duration can still implement the program uh, complying with the existing guidelines. And the same din po doon sa doon po doon sa mga accredited assessment center for caregiving. So kung maglalaps na po yung kanilang uh, accreditation, so pwede po nilang i-renew. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, permission to speak po? Yes. Uh, from region 2 po, Ma'am Elena A. A. Narciso po. Ma'am, eh, follow-up question lang po dun sa tanong na regarding dun sa existing na uh, caregiving NC2 natin. So, ibig sabihin po kung pwedeng uh, mag-venue at mag-continue yung program, pwede din po kaming mag-accept ng mga uh, application for registration, ma'am, no existing caregiving? Yes po, ma'am. So, yung pong explanation ni Director Jojo, so, based po on that explanation, for that caregiving NC2 na may 700 plus nominal duration, applications uh, can still be accepted. Kasi nagkoko-exist nga Na... Thank you, ma'am. Salamat po. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. So, Director Jan, I would like to add that it is coexisting. The caregiving, sure. there's no uh, all the caregiving NC2. Tama, ma'am, no? When no all uh, caregiving NC2, it will coexist with the uh, deploy, with the uh, the four, ito po yung bago po, yung four caregiving NC2 po. Yung apat po, no? Tama po, ma'am. Yes po. Yun po yung explanation ni Director Jojo kaninang umaga. Pero nga po, sana nga mapabilis yung approval ng omnibus, amended omnibus test for the solution para may evidence tayo that this caregiving NC2 na may 700 nominal duration and this form na specialized user caregiving ay eh talagang coexist siya. Kung yun po yung nakasukas na amended test for the solution on this qualification. No, na marilis nga po kagad yung omnibus guidance. Also, Director Janet, tama po no, extended din na itanong po kasi dito sa so migration ng programming Java, programming Java NC3. Uh, this will be part of, ano po no, yung EA extend until December 31, 2022. Tama po ba? This is all... Verified with Sheila, wala daw po yan doon sa list for extended ng migration. So, naps na po yung migration for that so na mention ko kanina, reminder lang po doon sa mga utpas focus who are here now na currently reconciling yung compendium. Baka may mga hindi pa nakapag-migrate, elapsed na po yung migration last July pa. So subject to closure na po yun and delisting from the compendium. Okay, thank you very much for that added information, Director Janet. Also po, uh... There is this question po oh, regarding, may, marami po tayong inquiry, no? Regarding po doon sa caregiving NC2. Ay, ito po, ma'am. Uh, do we need to wait for the approved test board, Reso, before we can renew uh, expired NCs and process NTTC applications level for caregiving NC2? Also, uh, in addition po, ma'am, for the existing caregiving NC2 can still implement the program but need na matapos hanggang December 2022. 
Ayan, a question po. Medyo kinonsolidate ko lang, ma'am, yung dalawang tanong po. Okay. Ay, yung sa implementation. So, uh, based sa explanation kasi ni Director Jojo kanina, so, kung status ko yung implementation, so, we can, ano po, implement po for both uh, program registration and assessment, accreditation of assessment centers, and also for the renewal po for just assessors and accredited assessment center for caregiving institute, doon po 700 hours ano nominal duration. Hindi na ma'am po sinabi kanina ni Director Jojo na hintayin natin yung omnibus, amended omnibus for resolution because he uh, lengthily discussed na wala pong na-amend, wala pong na-supersede. So nag-e-exist pa rin yung caregiving institute with uh, 700 plus nominal duration. Uh, ay, Director Jojo, Director Janet, pasensya na po. Ayun. Um, uh, if you would like to comment po regarding dito kay ma, uh, sa comment po ni Ma'am Mila, Mila Flor from PASMAC po, kung hindi mamamigrate ang existing caregiving NC2, wala na pong mag -e enroll sa migrated caregiving dahil nandun sa existing ang provide care, yung support to infant, toddler, and children, provide care and support to elderly, and people with special needs. Kung ako po ay isang enrollee, mas gugustuhin ko pong mag-enroll sa caregiving NC2. Would you like to give a comment on that, ma'am? Or or perhaps po uh, from our sectoral focus as well, who are also here with us? For me, Jackie, ano, uh, the region has to advocate yung registration of that, uh, yung, pa, yung register program dapat i-advocate doon sa various stakeholders para ma-inform sila na for sure naman meron talagang gusto rin mag-apply for specialized uh, qualifications. So, i-advocate nila na may register program on that caregiving qualification para po makapag-attack ng enrollees. Okay, thank you po, uh, Director Janet. Ayan, anyone, any addition po from our sectoral focus? If none po, we will proceed po. So far, hearing none naman po. We will, ano lang po, ah, tatalon lang po tayo rito sa isa pang inquiry po. Uh, from YouTube naman po. Ayan, also, we would like to invite our um, our viewers from YouTube. Uh, ayan, we would like to know everyone here ah, that we are on live stream right now in YouTube. You may uh, send your inquiries also and we will take note of that. Uh, so here, good afternoon po, Mark Adoni Somook from LTI. Ask ko lang po kung kailan po ya apply yung plus six days ng DOMRAC NC2. Salamat po. Ayan, we have a uh, um, sectoral focus for uh, DOMRAC. Mga kasama po natin dito po. Ayan, maaari pong uh, maaari po siguro mag-respond po sila sa inquiry po regarding sa DOMRAC NC2 po. Ay, as we po, ah, okay, so at the moment po pala, they're on a meeting. So I believe yan, maaari pong itong inquiry na po ito ay this will be responded through writing po. Also, may, balik po tayo rito sa ating chat box. Um, there's a question from Region 12 po. May we ask po, during the migration period, pwede bang mag-renew ng NC in all TR? But it's a, I think, I believe this is also addressed to certification office po. Ayan. Opo. Again, may we ask if, if during the migration period, pwede bang mag-renew ng NC in all TRs? Kaya giving pa rin ba yan, Jackie? Or hindi? Um, I do, kung anong TR po ito, tinutukoy po. Wala po eh. Maybe ano po no, sa ating, ano ma'am no, kailangan natin malaman po no, kung anong specific na qualification po. 
Okay. So, sige po. Thank you po uh, again sa inquiry regarding po doon. Wala po. Ayan. Pwede po, ito po from Sir Rowell of Region 6. Pwede po ma-explain yung teaching experience and industry experience as part of requirements for assessors accreditation. Salamat po. Ito po ay para sa, eh, ano to, concerning assessors naman po ito. Assessors accreditation po. Ayan po, from certification office po ito perhaps. This is regarding on assessors accreditation. Uh, ayan, so... Again, for those inquiries po na hindi po natin masasagot po uh, at this moment, uh, we will uh, we will uh, respond through writing po. Uh, ano po, rest assured po na all of this has been taken and taken on account po. Meron po tayong monitoring dito with our technical support team po. Um, sorry, may ano technical difficulty si Janet kaya hindi niya nasasagot yung ano. Yung tanong. So, tama. We will just uh, answer uh, in writing. Nakamute ka. Ayan. Okay. Ayan, naririnig na po. Okay. Yes, John. Ganyan din yata yung kay Janet kanina. Hindi kayo naririnig tapos hindi, ka, hindi rin siya naririnig. Si po. Mm -mm. Salamat po, Director Patty. Thank you po muli. Apo. Um, ayun, muli. Eh, ayan, kung naririnig po ako, again, to wrap up our discussion for our Q&A, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga, sa inquiry ng ating mga kasama po rito, ng ating mga participants on board and also in YouTube. Maraming salamat po. Please do, ayan, sige, keep it coming lang po as we will take note of those and we will respond in writing po and we will address as well to the uh, concerned uh, executive offices din po. This is also a way for us to assist our TTIs and TBIs po as we deploy and conduct and implement this uh, training regulations po. Ayun. Sa abot po na ating makakaya, ika nga po ni Director Jojo, i-assist po namin ang ating mga kasama. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Jack. Uh, so our allotted time for the question and answer portion has now ended. And uh, we are pleased to hear the concerns and clarifications from our implementing body and offices. Thank you so much, Paul, for your active participation. As mentioned earlier, uh, questions which will which are not able to discuss, uh, we will be for uh, this will be forwarded to our respective of executive offices. Again, we would like to extend our thank you to NATSD Executive Director David Bungalion, Certification Office, ED Maria Susan de la and PLO ED Director Juliet Orozco, and Promo ED Director Rosal Rosalina S. Constantino, and their staff for joining us today to provide their guidance and directives and for responding to the questions of our participants. So we are now onto the heart of today's activity, which is the development of the training regulations, competency assessment tools, and assessment fees. Again, we request our participants to park your questions as we set aside another question and answer portion after the presentations. The deployment of the TR, CATS, and assessment fees will be presented by the sectoral focus of Competency Standards Development Division and Competency Programs and Systems Development Division. To start off, to present the highlights of the following qualifications, Caregiving Clients with Special Needs NC2, Caregiving Elderly NC2, Caregiving Grade Schooler to Adolescent NC2, Caregiving Newborn to Preschooler NC2, 
to be presented by Mr. Edwin Maglalang, Senior TSD Specialist of QSO, and Ms. Fortunata L. Bacos, Senior TSD Specialist of QSO, CTSD. Okay, I'll share my screen. Po. <laughs> Sandali lang ho, ayan. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh, ito na. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you see my presentation in the screen? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sandali lang ako. I... Yan. Okay. Thank you. So, I am presenting the training regulations for caregiving newborn to preschooler, grade schooler to adolescent, elderly, and clients with special needs. Uh, the technical experts who work with us in these uh, training regulations are from the Philippine Association of Service Exporters Incorporated, or PASE. Si Ms. Bernadette D.C. Ilagan, Ms. Marietta M. Serna, Mr. Joey M. Cadano, uh, Dr. Joel John A. De La Merced. And from the St. Francis of Assisi College of Las Piñas, Ms. Sharon de Matulak. For the caregivers of the Philippines Association Incorporated, or CIPAI, uh, they are uh, Ms. Mila Flor I. Valdez, Mr. Antonio Alvin M. Kumangbang, Ms. Mayra Soledad I. Kumangbang, and Ms. Maria Cristina Bermudez. Now I'll go uh, directly to the qualification de description of these four training regulations. So for caregiving newborn to preschooler, the qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to participate in the implementation and monitoring of newborn care plan, perform caring skills for a newborn, recognize newborn's growth and development, participate in the implementation and monitoring of infant's care plan, provide physical needs, care, and support to infant foster social, intellectual, and emotional development of in infant, participate in the implementation and monitoring of toddler's care plan, performing caring skills for toddler, recognize growth and development of toddler, participate in the implementation and monitoring of preschoolers' care plan, perform caring skills for preschooler and recognize growth and development of preschooler. For caregiving grade schooler to adolescent, the qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to provide assistance and care to personal needs of the grade schooler, foster physiological needs and cognitive development of the grade schooler, foster physical growth and development of grade schooler, respond to emergency for grade schooler, foster physical growth and development of adolescent, promote developmental tasks 
for adolescent and respond to emergency for the adolescent. For the elderly, <clears throat> the qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to develop the ability to recognize aging process, participate in the implementation and monitoring of client's care plan, perform caring skills, perform specialty, proce specialty care procedures, and assist clients in administering medication. For clients with special needs, uh, the qualification consists of competencies that the person must achieve to participate in the implementation and monitoring of client's care plan, provide assistance and support to clients with special needs, recognize healthy body systems and apply medical terminology, provide care to clients with special needs, assist in administering medications to clients with special needs, provide care and support to clients with special needs, respond to emergency situations, provide immediate care and support to children with special needs and provide immediate care and support to adults and elderly with special needs. Uh, the caregiving NC2 uh, existing qualification is situated in this matrix so that uh, the distinction, wh where lies the distinction between the four new training regulations uh, uh, would be. So the differences is uh, in this matrix that uh, I presented a while ago. So if a person finishes this qualification, he or she is competent to be an or to be a caregiver to for newborn, for, for the newborn and preschooler, pwede siya maging caregiver sa newborn, sa infant, toddler, at saka preschooler. For yung grade schooler naman to adolescent, pwede siya maging caregiver ng isang grade schooler at adolescent. Sa elderly, siyempre sa elderly siya mapupunta as caregiver. Ana, very in demand ho ngayon sa Japan at saka sa Israel. Next is yung sa clients with special needs. So pwede siya maging caregiver sa people with special needs, children with special needs, adults and elderly with special needs po. And in a matrix, makikita nyo rin yung differences niya doon sa existing natin ngayon. So I've said, uh, as uh, Sir Jojo uh, explained kaninang umaga, yung dalawang programa na yan will run parallel pagka in-offer na ho siya. Uh, in Kinukan lang ho namin yung Test the Board Resolution uh, para ma discuss with the with the task the board okay yung basic competencies po ay na bago na from the existing to the new ones yung sa apat na i-apply ho yung uh, 21st century skills yung bago pero if would, if it would run sabi nga natin in parallel pati yung existing naka qualification mapapalitan na ho yan kasi we will be implementing the new uh, basic competencies as well doon sa existing na qualification. So kung ano yung nandiyan sa kanan ninyo, it would be the same doon sa kaliwa. Yung kaliwa, yung the, the, the one colored the yellow, is yung existing na training regulations natin for caregiving. For the common competencies, wala hong amendment na kwan ho dyan. So same common competencies, ang mag apply po dyan. Okay? Next, yung caregiving for the newborn uh, to preschooler. Iyon po yung mga uh, binasa ko po kanina dun sa core. So I did not kwan uh, na ho. Uh, kasi yun din particular yung nandun sa qualification description. Okay? I'll just... Uh, show you in passing, naka kwan lang ho siya, naka um, bullets dito sa presentation naman dito. Okay, same pa rin yung, yung uh, binasa ko po kanina dun sa qualification description. Now, in a matrix, doon yung makikita yung difference ngayon nung existing doon sa, sa kwan. Kung makikita nyo, isang buong programa yung existing na nakapaloob lahat yung tatlong, ay, oo, 
itong ito ito tong nandito however hindi, tatlo lang pala yung nandoon kasi hindi siya na himay yo kung ano yung kwan pagdating sa bata eh maraming klase ng bata actually di ba so doon sa bago na himay siya ha? magmula doon sa newborn hanggang sa adolescent no na yung pagiging adolescent ng isang bata yun yung pagkakaiba ngayon doon sa apat na bago while doon sa existing uh, ang nakalagay lang doon is uh, provide care and support to children pero yung children hindi siya na specify what what is the scope of the kon yung children na yan. so uh, doon sa specialization nahimay siya into two categories yung new, uh, yung yun nga yung sa newborn to preschooler saka yung grade schooler to adolescent even yung clients with special needs nahimay din po yan kasi there are so many kinds of uh, persons with disabilities so na provide din po dito sa bago yan yun yung mga salient features ngayon nung bago doon sa sa existing okay next Now we'll go doon sa nominal training duration. For caregiving newborn to preschooler, we have a total of 465 hours. So you have there yung breakdown, 37 hours for the basic, 112 for common. You have there 316 hours for the core. Then you have there yung supervised industry learning, which is which is accounted for 160 hours. For the grade schooler to adolescent, you have there 389 hours. So you have 37 hours for the basic, 112 hours for the common, 240 hours for the core. Same uh <clears throat> same number of hours will be applied for the supervised industry learning. For the elderly, <coughs> you have there the same. For the basic, 37. Yeah, Hello. Excuse me po. Yan. Paki, for those participants po, paki, pa, paki kanho para magkaintindihan ho tayo. Ano po? So as I've said, yung 37 hours na basic ngayon, ito na yung bago, yung, yung 21st century skills na sinasabi natin, yun ho yung 37. Ano? And then for the common, kasi common nga, you still have the 112 hours. Tapos yung core which is 252 naman. So you total this nasa 400 hours po yon uh, same for the SIL which is 160 for clients with special needs <clears throat> same for the basic for the common eto malaki ho tong sa core kasi na itemize ho who are these people with special needs kung makikita niyo ho yung training regulation na bago naka specify kung ano yung care na ibibigay mo when it comes to people with special needs. So that was accounted for 504 hours. Now in total, 653 hours siya. And then you have there yung 160 hours pa rin for the SIL. Now in the matrix, <coughs> makikita nyo siya. So malaki yung ipinagbago niya from the existing 786 hours lang. Okay? So, combined na yung kwan na yun. Pero sabi ko nga ho noon, ay ngayon, uh, <clears throat> dapat masinsin na tignan kung uh, yung country-specific requirement ay para sa elderly or para sa grade schooler. Ito yung tatahakin nilang training ho dyan kasi highly specialized na nga po siya. Okay, next. <clears throat> For the trainee entry requirements, in the existing training regulation, you have the following uh, requirements. Can communicate both in oral and written, physically and mentally fit, with go good moral character, and can perform basic ma mathematical com uh, computation. This list does not include specific institutional requirements 
uh, such as educational attainment, appropriate work experience, and others that may be required of the trainees by the school or training center delivering the TVET program. Now, 44, uh, ang nakalatag na requirement po dyan is must have completed at least 10 years of basic education all holder of the ALS, yung Alternative Learning Systems Certificate of Completion uh, with grade 10 equivalent at saka yung basic communication skills. So, ay ganun yung uh, requirement doon sa, sa education kasi you have graduates of the old curriculum and the graduates of the new curriculum, yung basic ay yung K-12 okay, program. So ganyan yung to cover yung old at saka yung sa new. Then kino, ginawa na namin in cooperation with the technical experts at the minimum requirement na uh, at least 10 years ng basic education. For the training facilities, uh, yung, care, yung sa existing uh, caregiving NC2 natin, meron kang office, uh, sa office area, nandiyan yung demonstration office uh, for child care, 30 square meters, home management, 60 square meters. Yung sa elderly, you have 30 square meters. And then you have yung care for people with special needs, 30 square meters. Then for the academic room, you have there yung 30 square meters na. There's no specification for the one, uh, study room, learning resource center, clinic, separate rooms for the female. Uh, sa, kwan na ho siya doon sa 180 square meters na nandyan. Now, doon sa bago, you have differences na pagdating dun sa total workshop area. So we have yung specifications for rito. <clears throat> for newborn and preschooler, you have 170 square meters. The same with sa grade schooler at saka sa adolescent. Now, for the elderly, you have 175 square meters. At saka yung clients with special needs, you will be needing a minimum of 100 square meters. Okay? Yung detalye po dito, I need not read anymore. Uh, Naka-upload naman po ito doon sa uh, website ng TESDA. If you would care to visit it, nandun po siya. Okay? Then, for trainer's qualification... For newborn to preschooler, the trainer should be a holder of National TVET Trainer Certificate Level 1 in Caregiving Newborn to Preschooler, NC2. And then graduate siya ng any allied health courses or a bachelor's degree. Must possess also good communication and must have at least two years industry experience within the last five years. For grade schooler and adult, uh, two adolescent naman, NTTC holder pa rin siya, pero specifically for grade schooler, two adolescent naman. Then same requirements for the last three, yung graduate siya ng allied uh, health courses or bachelor's degree, good communication skills, must have at least two years industry experience within the last five years. For elderly, same uh, same pa rin yung mga requirements natin dyan. The only difference there is yung NTTC niya should be sa elderly dapat. Or ganun din po sa clients with special needs. The only difference there is yung number one requirement natin na kailangan yung NTTC niya would be sa specific area kung saan siya magtuturo which is yung clients with special needs nga po. Ito po yung matrix. That will uh, show you the difference between the existing uh, training regulation from that of the four new training regulations for caregiving. Uh, for the assessment and certification arrangements, uh, my colleague here in the CPSDD will present din po. Ma'am uh, Fortune, pwede na po. 
Yes, thank you, Sir Edwin. Nakikita na po yung slide. Yes, Ms. Paul. Yes, Paul. Okay. Nakikita na po. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of our technical experts, uh, let me give you an overview of the competency assessment, assessment tools, and assessment fees for the four uh, caregiving qualifications. Okay, for newborn to preschooler NC2, uh, how to attain the qualification? Uh, we have uh, two uh, ways uh, to demonstrate uh, by demonstration of competence through project type assessment covering all required units of qualification and by accumulation of certificates of competency. And for uh, caregiving you born to preschooler, we have four COCs uh, depending on the age of the. Uh, with whether newborn, infant, toddler, or preschooler. Who are qualified to take the assessment? Uh, of course, the graduates or those who were trained uh, under caregiving newborn to preschooler, or for those who have uh, were trained through the NPR registered programs or not formal, non-formal, informal, including enterprise-based trainings related to caregiving newborn to preschooler and C2. And because test the recognized prior learning or the recognition of current competencies, uh, ex experienced workers who have uh, provided caregiving services for at least three years within the last five years can also take the assessment. And uh, they can also take the assessment, those who have uh, current competencies through portfolio assessment. And this is governed by test the policies on portfolio assessment. And uh, for this particularly, uh, the candidates who have gained competencies through education, informal training, and with previous work or life experiences with at least three years of caregiving experience within the last five years, may, take, uh, may apply for recognition this qualification through portfolio assessment. What will happen to NC or COC holders in caregiving uh, NC2? Uh, so ma marami na po yung mga discussions kanina. So, uh, in the, uh, so in summary po, this is uh, pending the approval of the Omnibus Test Board Resolution. And if this will be approved, the test if the test board resolution will be approved, then uh, test will come up with the test circular, and that the existing caregiving NC two, which was promulgated in January two thousand seven, will still apply and is acceptable, and not superseded by the four caregiving NC two, uh, this four this new caregiving qualifications. So, siguro naman po ay marami ng uh, uh, explanations po kanina. On the qualifications of accredited assessors, we follow the, the existing policy and test done. This was also mentioned by Director Janet. Uh, they must be a practitioner of the occupation or your trade in the trade area for at least two years. And of course, holder of a national certificate and uh, conduct of competency assessment under trainers methodology NC1. Just to give you an overview, overview of the, the competency assessment for this qualification, so it's uh, through demonstration of our questioning of your assessment methods. And the task that will be performed is uh, to interpret case scenario, maintain clean and safety, clean, maintain clean, safe, and healthy environment, perform caring skills, recognize growth and development, perform activities to support social, intellectual, and emotional development, and implement a, and monitor care plan. So dito po sa assessment, meron pong uh, five cases na in-prepare po ang ating mga technical experts and Based on these cases, there are different scenarios. So our candidates will be able will, should perform what is in required in those cases. And they will uh, perform caring skills depending on the age of the client, whether it's newborn, infant, toddler, or preschooler. Kasi iba iba rin po caring skills at tasks po ipapakita nila. And uh, but to highlight po and changes po dito sa caregiving, the, the candidate should be able to implement or should know how to implement and monitor the care plan. 
how much is the assessment fee? So ito po ay for test the board uh, promulgation na. So malapit na po. Kasi after test the board promulgation, uh, TESDA will release a TESDA circular. And it will, the these fees will be implemented. And for full assessment, it's 1,314. COC1, 1,270. COC2, 1,292. COC3, 1,507. And for COC4, 1,278. So included na po dito sa assessment fee, ang assessor's fee na 319 pesos and 20 centavos per candidate. So if you have 10 candidates, the assessor's fee will be 3,192 pesos. For uh, caregiving grade schooler to adolescent NC2, uh, the same po, uh, ways of to attain this qualification. But uh, and for this qualification, meron na po dalawang COC. For providing care and support to grade schooler and uh, providing care and support to adolescents. Like this kid. Okay, so to continue, um, so the following are uh, qualified to undergo assessment and certification, and uh, for those who are experienced workers, they should be they should have been providing caregiving services for at least two years within the last five years, and uh, those who are uh, those who can take the assessment through portfolio assessment should be those who are candidates who have gained competencies through education, informal training, previous work, or life experiences with at least two years of caregiving experience within the last five years. And uh, yan, the same po, po yan sa lahat ng caregiving, uh, yung current holders po ng uh, NC or COC, ng, ng existing caregiving NC2. And the same rin po itong ating uh, provision for the accredited assessor. The, the, the tasks for the uh, for this qualification, uh, they will be all, uh, our technical experts have prepared, um, I think, 10 cases. So each candidate will be provided with uh, uh, 10 scenarios and they will be performing based on these cases. Uh, and, and also they will, uh, the demonstration will be on uh, giving activities to support the physiological, cognitive, physical growth and development of the client or the grade school or adolescent. So more and more na po ito sa, sa kanilang physiological and cognitive because malalaki na po itong uh, client ng ating caregivers. And also they will be demonstrating how to respond to emergencies. So the full assessment costs about 1,268. The C for COC, it's 1,251. For COC2, it's 1,115. And it's for test the board uh, promulgation. For caregiving NC2, the quali this is a full qualification. So, mm -hmm. wala pong uh, COC. So, the candidate must demonstrate competence through project type assessment covering all the required units of the qualification or the full qualification. So those who can take the assessment are those who have formal or informal training, whether it's a WTR or NTR test registered programs or including new enterprise-based training. Experienced workers should have at least two years within the last five years. They, they are, uh, they are uh, qualified to take the assessment. Um, those who are qualified to take the portfolio assessment should have at least three years of caregiving experience within the last five years. So, syempre, mayroon pa pong mga iba pong requirements lang dyan to validate po yung competency ng candidates, like po yung interview and yung mga documents na kailangan po nilang isubmit. So, the same po ito. Uh, uh, lahat po ay naka-status po. And uh, uh, as uh, Director Janet have said and Director George have said, uh, minamadali na po ito para maging clear na po ang implementation sa field. 
The same po ay yung qualifications ng accredited assessors. They must be practitioners in the trade area for at least two years. And the tasks uh, for caregiving uh, elderly, uh, they will be also given uh, case scenarios and be performing caring skills, specifically what are needed for the elderly, like yung mga baiting, mga papa, or personal hygiene, taking care of the personal hygiene, and also performing emergency care. And uh, also the caregivers are taught are, they should show competency in implementing and monitoring the care plan. The full assessment, uh, the full assessment fee is one thousand six hundred twenty for caregiving uh, for clients with special needs and C two. So clients with special needs, uh, meaning po ito po yung may mga sakit na. So divided po yung COC niya into two, providing care and support for children with special needs. So uh, ito po yung may mga nararamdamang mga bata and also providing care and support for adults and elderly with special needs. So for uh, the, the candidates who can take the assessment are the experienced workers who, have, who are experienced in providing uh, caregiving services for at least one year within the last five years. And of course, the graduates of uh, formal and non-formal trainings, including enterprise-based trainings related to clients with special needs. Uh, for portfolio assessment, the candidates who have at least three years of caregiving experience within the last five years may apply for recognition in the qualification through portfolio assessment. Same po yan, on hold. And ang qualifications po ay the same. So the, the demonstrations, meron din po itong mga case scenarios na, uh, na prepare ating technical experts. And also there are different stations uh, with uh, different scenarios so that they'll be able to demonstrate how to take care of the clients with a specific special need. Also performing caring skills for activities of daily living and how to assist them in environmental, bio, psychological, psychosocial needs and also ad administering prescribed medication, also performing emergency care and implementing and monitoring care plan. So the full assessment is 1,481, COC1 is 1,394, COC2 is 1,503. So in summary and comparing all the caregiving qualifications, ito po yan. So the caregiving NC2, ito po yung existing natin. It, mayroon nga po itong dalawang COC uh, for children with special needs and for adult and elderly with Mali yata yung nilagay ko dyan. Sorry. Um, hindi po yan. <laughs> yung later. So, ang um, caregiving uh, clients with special needs, full assessment. Ang um, caregiving clients with uh, sa newborn, elderly po ito. Sorry. Uh, clients, correct ko lang. baka mag-register ko sa atin. So ang um, caregiving elderly full assessment, caregiving with uh, clients with special needs, dalawa po yung COC, ang caregiving newborn to preschooler, apat na COC and uh, full assessment yan po yung kanyang cuts packages. Caregiving grade schooler to adolescent NC2, one full assessment and two COCs. So how to attain the, the qualification? So ito po yung, ito po yung COC ng existing uh, caregiving. Providing care and support for infants, toddlers, and children. Uh, second COC 2 niya ay providing care and support for elderly and people with special needs. So ang caregiving elderly lang po yung full assessment. The rest po have COCs. Yan, as mentioned kanina in detail, so meron lang pong iba-ibang experience, number of years na experience. So yan naman po ay consulted with our technical experts, specific, those who are specifically working sa CATS ng New World of Preschooler. So sa kanila, experienced for at least three years within the last five years, sa grade schooler with adolescent for at least two years, 
elderly at least two years and clients with special needs for at least one year. So all, ang sa portfolio assessment naman, these are governed po sa test the policies on portfolio assessment like po itong test the circular number 59, series of 2020, test the circular number 118, test the yeah. circular um, number 47, series of 2018. So the same po yung sa, ito po ang summary ng sa uh, assessment fee. So we hope we are also uh, nasa ano na po namin, nasa plan na po namin ang uh, pag-update nitong caregiving NC2 para po maka, maka pupantay na na niya yung assessment fee ng other caregiving. Uh, and kasama na rin po doon sa omnibus na mention na rin po doon na i-update din po yung tools and equipment. So definitely may increase po ang assessment fee ng caregiving NC2 kapag po na-approve na yung ating uh, test board resolution. Okay, so na, uh, ito po ang ating mga technical experts as mentioned kanina, si na Ma'am Bernadette Pilagan, jo jo Joel John de la Merced, Joey Cadano, Ma'am Marietta Serna, Mila Flor Valdez, Antonio Alvin Kubangbang, Mayra Solidad Kubangbang, Maria Cristina Bermudez, and Mom Sharon Imatuna. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Edwin and uh, Mom Fort, for uh, thoroughly this uh, thoroughly discussion regarding on the four caregiving and C two. Uh, let us now move on to the second qualification, the domestic work NC2. When we have, may we have again, uh, Mr. Edwin Magnalang, the Acting Supervising PSD Specialist of QSO CSDB, and Mr. Paulo Sam Munoz, PSD Specialist 2 of QSO CPSDB. Okay. Again, good afternoon. I'll share my screen for the domestic work NC2. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nakikita nyo na ho ba sa screen? Yung presentation? Yes, sir. Okay, i-presentation mode ko lang po. Yan. Okay. <clears throat> I am now presenting yung Training Regulations Domestic Work NC2. Our technical experts who work with us dito sa training, this particular training regulation are the following. Si Ms. Amy C. Gloria, Mr. Paul Andrew J. Nang, Ms. Shulamite T. Inigo, Ms. Maria Elma P. Gatiera, Ms. Christine Joy E. Colango, and Ms. Fe M. Lucaben po. Yung Domestic Work NC2 is yung Test the Board Resolution 2022-10 approving and promulgating the amended training regulations for Domestic Work NC2. Yung implementing guidelines naman on the de uh, deployment of the training regulations and competency assessment tools <clears throat> for Domestic Work NC2 is being prepared and will be released soon. Updates po ito. <clears throat> now, the qualification description po. On your left, we have yung existing and then yung amended po, yung mga amendments na ginawa. So, for this, yung domestic, for the existing, yung domestic work NC2 qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to clean living room, dining room, bedrooms, toilet, kitchen, uh, wash and iron clothes, linen and fabric, prepare hot and cold meals, slash food, taka provide food and beverage service. Doon ho sa bago, ang nakalagay naman ay uh, yung clean living room, dining room, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, wash and iron clothes, linen and fabric, prepare hot, cold meals, food and provide food and beverage service. Okay. Uh, if you have noticed, hindi na kinuan ho yung term na toilet kasama na ho sa 
kwan ho dun sa bathroom facilities ho yung toilet na yan. Next is yung section 1 pa rin dun sa mga job titles. No amendments po yan. So same pa rin na uh, pagka natapos niya, just like yung tinabi ni Bing kaninang umaga, uh, pwede siya maging domestic worker, houseboy, housemaid, housekeeper, hand launderer, helper sa kitchen at saka yung cleaner sa hotel. And then for the basic competencies, dun sa existing, yung old na basic competencies natin, kaya apat lang yung nakalagay dyan. Now for the amendments, we will now follow yung 21st century skills wherein you have seven competencies for uh, NC2, yung level 2 for the basic competencies. I need not read na po yan. Kabisado po natin yung basic competencies, di ba? Next, yung sa common uh, competencies, wala po siyang amendments. Same competencies will be adapted dun sa bago. Yung sa core, same. Okay, you have four for the existing, then you have still <clears throat> the four core competencies carried on doon sa new training regulation for domestic work, NC2. For the elective, dito ho may pagbabago. Uh, you have several dito, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sampu yung nandito. As against dun sa bago. Uh, ang nakonho dun, uh, ang natanggal kasi naging specialized na nga siya, uh, is yung provide care and support to infants and toddlers at saka yung provide care and support to children, provide care and support to elderly. Doon sa bago, at saka yung sa special needs nga pala, yung apat na yan, since na naging apat na bagong training regulation, hindi na siya kasama dun sa uh, amended. Ang nakasama na lang for the elective dun sa bago is yung regarding dun sa assist in the care of animals, yung animal care hygiene routines, tsaka yung uh, trim and prune landscape plants, perform weeding and cultivation, provide irrigate plants, control and prevent plant pests and diseases. For the nominal training duration, you have a total of 218 dun sa bago and then, I don't, dun sa old and then you have 496 hours na elective competencies naman. For the amended, <clears throat> uh, naging 147 na lang yung, <clears throat> yung total. Uh, how is that? Naging 37 hours yung basic, 20 hours yung common, you have 90 hours for the core. Bakit naging 90 hours na lang? Kasi na yung apat na competencies for the elderly, yung sa, new, yung sa uh, mga bata, saka yung uh, clients with special needs, ay naging apat na bagong training regulation nga yan. Now, if you would account, uh, 96 na naman yung sa elective which is yung yun yung kanina assist the care for animals animal care hygiene trim and prune landscape uh, hanggang doon sa control and prevent plant pest that would account for the 96 hours sa elective hindi siya sinama as doon sa total di, di ba? Uh, kasi ang total would only consist of your basic common and core nakahiwalay yung uh, supervised uh, industry learning at saka yung sa elective. For the SIL, uh, it was accounted na 80 hours ang magiging SIL nitong bagong uh, training regulation natin sa apat. For the training entry requirement, dun sa existing, isang kwan lang requirement, must be able to read and write. Dito sa bago, we are now requiring the new entrance to the program na dapat nakatapos sila ng basic education or holder of alternative learning systems uh, certificate of completion with, the, with grade 10 equivalent. Why so? Kasi uh, hindi naman basta-basta yung mga competencies na pag-aaralan dyan. 
pangalawa, we are empowering our domestic workers na marunong, hindi lang siya marunong uh, bumasa at saka magsulat. Dapat naintindihan niya kung ano yung uh, sinusulat niya at saka, at saka yung binabasa niya as well. So number two requirement is yung must have good communication skills. And lastly, must be able to navigate through any online training platforms using electronics electronic devices why so kasi naging blended na po yung uh, training delivery po dito so it is a combination of the face to face method at saka mga platforms po so uh, yung simpleng pag uh, navigate sa mga cellphone is one example for it so kailangan ho nila itong quad na to requirement na to Now, for the training facilities, uh, for the whole of uh, the existing, you have 104 square meters. Doon naman sa bago, ganun din. So, wala rin pa rin amendment. So, parehas pa rin ang magiging requirement natin for the training facilities. For the trainer qualification, uh, dati naging optional ho yung doon sa existing yung uh, must have at least two years job experience. Ngayon ho, mandatory na ho yung doon sa bago. So, let me read yung tatlong dati sa existing. So, dapat NTTC level 1 uh, siya sa domestic work NC2 must be able to communicate in English and Filipino slash vernacular. Saka yung ang two years experience na yan. Doon sa bago, mandatory na po yung industry experience na two years. In addition to that, of those three na earlier mentioned na requirement for the trainer, uh, yung teacher that would teach yung uh, domestic work should be qualified, must be qualified with the competency in facilitating e-learning sessions or FELS because of the blended Uh, the training delivery po. That's why we are requiring yung mga teachers who would be teaching itong domestic work that they should have the uh, uh, competency on how to facilitate e-learning sessions. For our assessment and certification arrangement, Mr. Paolo uh, Munoz would be presenting po. Marami pong salamat. Thank you very much, Sir Edwin. All right. Thank you very much for the competency assessment tools. Shall I? I, I shall share my screen. Okay, na po. All right. I hope my my screen can be seen. Okay. Okay, pa now. Okay. Uh, so before we start, uh, my name is Paolo Samunyos. Uh, I am the uh, one of the tourism focals that is handling the domestic work NC2 for the cats. And before I start, I would like to acknowledge the technical experts that uh, that developed the competency assessment tools, the CATS. This was already mentioned by Director Jojo this morning, but I would like to mention it again, since I am very proud of the technical experts that, that developed these CATS, uh, since uh, they are they're one, one, one hell of a team. So may I? Uh, may I acknowledge uh, Dr. Gloria Bacon-C, one of the technical experts, also Sir Arne, Arnedo Domingo, Sir Alvin Cobangbang, the, the late Dr. Eduardo Ed Mariano, may his soul rest in peace, um, Miss Renea Bogasha, and Miss Anna Aldesimo. Ayan po. So let us start. Okay. So the, for the National Assessment and Certification, So who may who may uh, be issued a national certificate? A national certificate or an NC may be issued when a candidate or when a scholar has demonstrated competence through a project type assessment covering all required units of competency for the domestic work NC2. So there are three projects for the full NC. The project project one would would cover a COC1. Clean living, cleaning, cleaning the living room, dining room, bedrooms, bathroom, and kitchen. While project two, for the full NC, would cover uh, COC2, 
which is uh, wash and iron clothes, linen, and linen. Sorry, uh, for the project, the third project, it would cover uh, COC three and COC four, as stated here. Uh, it would be prepare and serve. the The project three is named prepare and serve basic hot, basic hot and cold meals, food and beverages. So for the domestic work NC two, uh, NC two. National, National Certificate NC2 may also be um, attained through the accumulation of the Certificate of Competency. So this is the, uh, as, as stated, COC1, as, 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 as I stated this uh, just now, uh, cleaning living room, dining room, bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen, wash and iron clothes and linen, prepare hot and cold meals, and provide food and beverage services. So next slide. Ayan po. So here is the diagram. So um, the duration of the the full NC would that would be a total of five hours, and the methodology that will be used is demonstration with oral questioning. So there, po. Per COC, naman po. This is this is the assessment uh, method. Also, it it, it it is also demonstration with oral questioning and. Uh, the uh, the duration is as follows. So for COC one, it is a total of one hour. So you must the candidate must show each and each and all of, all of the units of units of competencies, such as uh, the you, the candidate must clean surfaces and floors, clean furnishing and fixtures, make up beds and cots, clean bedrooms and bathrooms, sanitize rooms, maintain clean room environment. Clean the kitchen, so that is quite a, a, a quite a number of tasks. So for COC two, it is also for one hour, and the candidate must also portray the the following units of competency: check and sort clothes and linens and fabric, remove stains, prepare washing equipment and supplies, perform laundry, dry clothes and linen, and also iron clothes and linen. For COC three. Prepare hot, cold, hot and cold meals or food. Uh, the assessment duration is a total of one hour and thirty minutes. Also, uh, the ass assessment method is also demonstration with oral questioning. And the candidate must must show that he or she must prepare ingredients according to recipes, cook meals and dishes according to recipes, present cooked dishes, prepare appetizer, sauce, dressings and gar garnishes, store excess. And excess food and ingredients, and also the candidate must also create a new menu with the uh, leftover food or what is being stored, the excess food or ingredients. For COC four, uh, it, it is a total of forty-five minutes. This is the serving of the food that was prepared. Uh, for COC three, prepare dining area, set up table, prepare hot and cold coffee and beverages, serve food. This so you, it must be served to the to the, to the guest or the client, and it also must be bust away, uh, in, or in other words, clear the table must be cleared. So there we go. So for the next slide, for this one, candidates who have gained competencies through informal training, um. And, and previous work or life experiences may apply for recognition as well in a particular qualification through competency assessment or portfolio assessment based on existing guidelines. Uh, the, the candidate must have gained also competencies through education, um, either through informal training from previous work or life experiences with at least five years of experience in domestic work within the last 10 years. If he or she will opt to apply for recognition in this qualification through portfolio assessment, po. And po. So for here, um, let us move now for to for also for dom domestic work NC two dom work. We also added actually two electives, two electives. Uh, main uh, par particularly COC E elective one, which is provide care for animals. So uh, and then COC two, uh, e, uh, sorry, COC E two elective two maintain pl plants and gardens. 
holders holders of the unexpired national certificate or certificate of competencies coc2 on maintenance of landscape and landscape installation and maintenance uh, sorry maintenance of scape and c2 shall be exempted from the requirement of coc e2 on maintain plants and gardens of this qualification so there is a micro credential here as we can see the elective competencies on providing care and support for newborns, in, infants, toddlers, children, the elderly, and people with special needs were not included because these are uh, highly specialized areas as we were as we discussed earlier in caregiving. Moreover, there are yes four types of caregiving qualifications designed for the specific clients already. Hence, a, a person qualified to apply for the assessment and certification in these qualifications may opt to take the national assessment Yan po. So moving on po. So there, ito, ito po ang illustration po. For COC Elective 1, which is the provide care for animals, the unit of competencies are as follows. Assist in the care of can animals. So this depends on the assessment center kung ano pong uh, animals ang kanilang um, ma mapoprovide po for the candidate, which, which they will be, um, uh, what do you call this, demonstrating proper care for the animal. Um, for our case, when we had our validation, we had a, a, a cat and the cage, or maybe a dog and a cage, and how they will, they will clean and how they will provide hygiene and routines there. So also there, the, the second unit of competency is provide animal care hygiene routines. Uh, the demonstration with oral questioning is, a, is good for a total of four hours. So uh, let me let me mention again this these COCs actually were developed by the late Dr. Eduardo Mariano. We are we remember you sir. So here po for COC COC elective to maintain plants and gardens. Uh, trim the, 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 the unit of competencies are as follows: trim and prune landscape plants, perform weeding and cultivation, water and water or irrigate plants, control and prevent plant pest diseases. So there, po. a total man of three hours. These are electives po, that uh, the, the, the candidates may, may attain as a COC. Ayan po. Ayan. As discussed earlier, sabi ko nga po kanina, um, as I discussed earlier, uh, holders of unexpired national NC or COC2 on maintenance of landscape uh, in landscape installation and maintenance, softscape NC2 shall be exempted from the requirement of COC2 on main, maintain plants and gardens of this qualification. All right. So for this one, ah, this is this one I I discussed earlier, po. So bali ang candidate po natin, the candidate must have gained competencies through education in informal training, previous work or life experiences within the last 5 years. Within the last 5 years of in domestic work. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Within the last 10 years if he or she will opt to apply for recognition in this qualification through portfolio assessment. So who may be assessed? Any of the following actually may be may be qualified for assessment. Uh, the, as we can see here, made the yung existing and then now there's there's amended. Uh, naging more specific po tayo when it comes to the who can be assessed. And po ang nakita natin pinaka main difference dito: graduates of with training regulation or non no no, no training regulation registered programs or formal non formal informal, including enterprise-based training programs related to domestic work. Pwede po yan mag-apply for assessment. Tapos, da ang dati po natin, experienced workers, wage employed or self-employed. Pero dito naman po, naging more specific po tayo. Experienced workers who gained competencies in domestic work for at least two years within the last five years po. Yan po ang mas naging uh, specific ano po natin requirement. Also, holders of NC or Certificate of Competencies in Domestic Work NC2 are required to undergo assessment under the amended uh, TRs under, uh, I'm sorry, upon expiration of their certificate. So you, you must uh, undergo the full assessment again if you if your NC has um, expired. 
All right. So uh, for our competency assessor naman naman po. Ah uh, sorry. Ayan po. Ah uh, wala. Ayan. Sorry, apologies. All right. In accordance with the test the circular number 64 series of 2020 on the accreditation of assessment centers and competency assessors under the PTCAX amending the uh, test the circular number 15 series of 2015 and operating procedures of test the OPC03 and 04 the practitioner in the trade uh, the following are the sorry the following are the um, requirements for the competency assessor the, the practitioner in the in the trade area of domestic work who has worked locally or abroad for at least three years. Practice, practitioners refer to technical experts engaged in teaching or training workers in domestic work or supervisors tasked to lead or manage, manage uh, domestic workers and can, for, can perform the four competencies, core competencies of domestic work NC2. Secondly, a holder, the, the, the competency assessor must be a holder of the NC, of course. And uh, must be, sorry, um, must also be a holder of NTTC1 and or COC2 of uh, TM1, the conduct of competency assessment. That is COC2 of TM1. The competency assessor must also, um, for the new for the new applicants for competency assessor, he or she must have conducted an actual assessment of at least 10 candidates under the supervision of the regional or provincial lead assessor, RLA, PLA, as part of the capacity, sorry, capability, capability building of competency assessors. So for, for accredited competent, competency assessors as well, for amended training regulations, he or she um, May, o may only be required to conduct an actual assessment for at least two candidates for relate related qu qualifications under the supervision of a regional and provincial lead assessor. Po. Po. Uh, for the assessment fees, uh, we are actually going, we are having an ongoing determination of the assessment fees. Uh, uh, we ha we have the the same actually the same the same technical experts working on this the determination of assessment fees so there will be actually there will be a, a separate test the circular and it, it shall be issued upon the promulgation of the assessment fees after the um uh, the board meeting with uh, sorry the, the test the board meeting to to propose these assessment fees so separate an apoto separate announcement or separate test the circular for the promulgation of the assessment fees for dom work domestic work nc2 all right for the cats of the domestic work nc2 that is uh, for that is that is all thank you very much po for listening i shall end po my stop share thank you very much back to you po miss jack and miss mai Thank you so much po, Sir Edwin and Sir Paolo, uh, for presenting the highlights of the PRNCATS of Domestic Work, NC2. Moving on to the next PRNCATS is the Handloom Weaving Upright, NC2, to be presented by Ms. Jerry Toralde, Senior TSD Specialist of CSDB, and Ms. Fortunata Baco, Senior TSD. Good afternoon. Okay, so I'm Chair Toralde and I will be presenting the training regulations on handloom weaving upright NC2 under the creative sector. So let me introduce to you the technical experts who were involved in the development of the TR in handloom weaving NC2. So we have here Ms. Josefa Garditos from the OSTPTRI. Ms. Mary Jane, Ms. Mary Jo Juan Lesaca, former DOSTPTRI. Ms. Ermeline Tariga from San Jose Multipurpose Co-op. Ms. Anna Injele Gaspi from Heritage Arts and Crafts. And Ms. Alice Pañares from NCCA DepEd. Joining with us today are Ms. Alice Pañares and Ms. Anna Injele Gaspi. Okay. 
Okay, so the TR on handloom weaving upright NC2 was promulgated on February 18, 2020 with Test Board Resolution Number 2020-02, approving and promulgating the training regulations for handling weaving upright NC2. After this, Test the Circular Number 2020-07, implementing guidelines on the deployment of training regulation and competency assessment tools for handloom weaving upright NC2 was released on June 18, 2020. So let us go now to the content of the TR. For Section 1, Qualification Description, the Handloom Weaving Upright NC2 qualification consists of competencies that a handloom weaver, handloom specialist must achieve to be able to conduct preparatory activities prior to weaving on a loom, perform basic handloom operations, recognize and check product quality, complete the whole weaving process, including finishing and final quality assessment of the finished woven product. A person who has, um, sorry, a person who has achieved this qualification is competent to be handloom weaver, handloom weaving specialist, and handloom operator. For section two, we have the following promulgated basic competencies based on test board resolution number 2019-37. Participate in workplace communication, work in a team environment, solve or address general workplace problems, develop career and life decisions, contribute to workplace innovation, present relevant information, practice occupational safety and health policies and procedures, exercise efficient and effective sustainable practices in the workplace, and practice entrepreneurial skills in the workplace. For the common competencies, we have enhanced industry knowledge and skills, enhanced creative and artistic skills and raise cultural awareness, observe procedures, specifications and manuals of instructions, operate equipment, maintain a safe, clean and efficient work environment, manage own performance, provide and maintain effective client relations, and observe quality system. For the core competencies, we have conduct pre hand loom weaving activities, perform upright loom weaving, and conduct post weaving activities. So this slide illustrates the actual conduct of handloom weaving activities from warping to weaving textile to packaging and labeling of woven textile products. Let us go now to the section three of the TR. The nominal training duration of TR on handloom weaving upright NC2 is 429 hours, which consists of 37 hours for basic competencies 300 hours for common competencies, and 91 hours for core competencies. This TR also includes 80 hours for supervised industry learning, or SIL. For the trainee entry requirements, trainees or students wishing to gain entry into this course must possess the following requirements. Basic communication skills and basic arithmetic skills. Okay. The required training facilities of this TR is 352.20 square meters, which consists of 152.20 for the building and 200 for the workshop area. Please note that access to and use of equipment or facilities can be provided through cooperative arrangements of MOA with other partner companies or institutions. For the trainer's qualification, trainers who will deliver the training on handloom weaving upright NC2 should have the following. Must be a holder of NTTC1 in handloom weaving upright NC2 and must have at least two years job or industry experience. Okay, thank you. May I call on Ma'am Ford? for the competency assessment tools. 
Yes, chat. Thank you. I will check those slides. Okay, may na po ba? Ayan, sige. So for the competency assessment and assessment tools and assessment fees for handling reading uh, upright NC2, uh, let me give you the overview of the assessment. And uh, I don't know if it was mentioned na this qualification was done in coordination, in collaboration, I mean, with PTRI, or the Philippine Textile Research Institute of the uh, Department of DOST. Okay. So to attain the qualification, uh, we have to uh, take it can be attained through full assessment or through accumulation of certificates of competency in COC 1, 2, and 3. So it's one for uh, preparation or the pre handling weaving activities. COC2 perform upright loom weaving conduct and COC3 conduct post weaving activities. And uh, the following are any one of the following are qualified to undergo assessment and certification. Those who are graduates of this training regulation uh, program, the graduates of NTR registered programs or formal, non formal, informal training, including enterprise based trainings related to hand loom weaving upright and C2. And for recognition of prior learning for those who are workers with at least six months of apprenticeship or work experience in handling weaving upright or related or in related fields. So these are the qualifications for accredited assessor, for trainer assessor, you must be a holder of NTTC and level one in handling weaving upright NC2. And for industry assessor, must be holder of uh, NC and handling weaving upright NC2. And uh, the rest are, are the basic uh, requirements. The assessment methods for this qualification is demonstration with our questioning. The demonstration activities includes uh, interpretation of woven sampler design and calculation of the required materials that will be used, warp and loom dressing, adjusting loom parts, accessories, upright loom weaving, and producing a woven sampler, and uh, finishing this uh, product. And of course, uh, packing, labeling, labeling, storing, moving textile products, and performing good housekeeping. So for the assessment fee, uh, this was uh, this time it's promulgated already, and it, for full qualification, it's co cost one thousand two hundred ninety eight for COC one, one thousand thirty seven for COC two, one thousand two hundred sixty one, and for COC three. 855. And uh, let me please note that the uh, assessment fee for COC2 or the perform upright loom weaving includes a 650 salary of additional staff of the assessment center staff who will prepare the 10 upright looms by warping and loom dressing before the start of the assessment activity. This is because if you take the, the COC2 standalone um, assessment, the looms must have, must be the warping and the looms must be prepared already by warping and loom dressing. And it's not easy to prepare the 10 looms that will be used in COC2. Kaya po may additional na 650 pag COC2 lang. Whereas if you take the assessment, the full, asset, the full assessment, uh, yung candidate na rin mismo yung magpiprepare ng loom, magwa-warping and loom dressing as part of the demonstration. So uh, our technical experts, and they are here now, Mom Alice Marie Panyares from NCCA, or Department of Education, Mom Anne Angel Gaspi, Mom Sefa Garlitas from Philippine Textile Research Institute, and Mom Ermeline Tariga. So that's all my, my presentation. Thank you very much. So, there we go. Thank you very much again, uh, Sir Edwin, and also to Ma'am Ford. Uh, Ma'am Che, uh, Ma'am Che pala for uh, my apologies po. Ma'am Sherry, thank you very much po. And also to Ma'am Ford po for presenting to us the hand loom weaving upright NC2. Now, of course, last but not the least, we'll have the, we'll, re, we'll hear the highlights for TRN Cats of the programming Java NC2 
to be given by Mr. Samuel Calyado, Senior TSD Specialist of TSDD. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to inform that everyone that the PR for programming Java NC3 does not undergone the full PR review process. Some changes of the TR was carried out to amend the phase out Oracle Certified Associate Java Programming Certification exams and other affected requirements for program registration. So I'll begin my presentation. So the technical experts uh, during the review of the training regulations is Mr. Kanin Martin Dili Gaspi, uh, PSA Corporate Secretary and Head of the Technical Council of PSIA. Uh, he is also a member of the test the uh, technical experts panel. We have also Mr. Romel Bernard Riusi, uh, school administrator of the BCRB Tech Box Inc. Also, uh, Ms. Isaac U. Hippolito, uh, BP Academics of the STI Education Service Sector. We have also Ms. Veronica A. Peña, uh, Research Head of, for ICT, STI Education Service Sector. And Mr. Jason C. Bocchio, uh, President of Last Week. Uh, consulting services. So for the section one or qualification description of the programming Java NC3, uh, in the, we, the first paragraph of the qualification description was deleted uh, because the Oracle Workforce Development Program is uh, only a requirement for uh, higher higher educational institutions for its uh, BS programs. So we retain the second paragraph and the uh, third paragraph of the description. For the section three, section two, the competency standards for the basic competencies, common competencies and core competencies, uh, there is no amendment. For section three, training standards, uh, section 3.1, the curriculum design, section 3.2, there is no amendments for uh, section 3.1 to 3.4. And for the section 3.5, which is the training facilities, the annotation or phrase uh, below, uh, which is uh, state that uh, note the training center must be accredited by Oracle Philippines and must be a member of the work or development program. So the reason for this is this requirement is for colleges and universities as required by Oracle universities. And then next is under 3.6 for trainers qualifications. So the first bullet, uh, we replaced the Oracle Certified Professional Java Standard Edition 7 to Oracle Certified Associate Java Standard Edition 8 Programmer or Java is a Programmer 1. Um, and then um, it must be a holder of National Tibet Certificate Level 1 in Programming Java NC3 and must be physically and mentally. And then for section four, uh, for uh, item 4.2, uh, in the existing, there are two uh, certification exams, which is the Java SA7 Programmer 1 and Java SA7 Programmer 2. Uh, Unfortunately, this uh, certification, uh, two certification exams are already uh, outdated or based out the market. So 
So the recommendation for the amendments is that uh, the qualification program of Java University may be attained by passing the Oracle Certified Associate Java Standard Edition 8 Programmer or the Java S8 Programmer uh, one certifications. This uh, edition for the Oracle Certified Java set exam uh, both cover the, the competencies for the perform object oriented analysis and design and then the create some uh, learning outcomes from the create and fine tune uh, Java technology applications using object oriented programming concepts. So that's why this is the certification exam that was recommended. And then the four. 4.3, so upon submission of Oracle Certified uh, Assistant Java S8, SE8 Programmer or SE8 Programmer 1, an individual shall be issued the corresponding national certificate. Also in 4.2, the following are qualified to apply for certification as long as they are holders of uh, Oracle Certified Assistant Java S8 Programmer or Java SA8 Programmer 1 Certificate. Uh, it's either they are a graduate of formal, non-formal, or informal, including enterprise training programs, and uh, either they are experienced workers. So individuals under 4.5, individuals who already possess national certificate in programming Java NC3 are required to take the certification for this TR on or before the expiration of their NC. So our reference will be uh, section 13.1 of TESTA circular number uh, 2015-015. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Jack. Thank you so much, Sir Sam, and to all our sectoral focus from, from CSDD and CPSDD for highlighting the important the important TR, CATS, and assessment fees details of the seven qualifications. Uh, please be advised that the other six qualifications will be presented tomorrow. Now that we are on the last part of today's program, we will open the Q&A portion. Uh, same with this morning question and answer portion. Please be reminded to use the raise hand icon or the chat box. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Ms. May. Uh, just to give an overview to our participants, what are the qualifications to be discussed tomorrow? That will be seeing NC2 and 3, uh, beauty care, nail care services, NC2, barbering, NC2, uh, rack servicing, dom rack, NC2, and Commercial Air Conditioning Installation and Servicing, NC3. So again, we would like to thank our presenters and representatives from the executive offices, also to our QSO sectoral staff who provided detailed discussions on the first seven training regulations. May this provide clarity and aid to our participants as they implement these qualifications. Mm -hmm. We would like to, uh, let's give them a round of applause. So now we will proceed to the Q&A portion. So if there's any, uh, if there's for a while, okay, we have a technical difficulty here. Okay, so if there is any questions from our participant, uh, th this is the time for us to raise uh, our uh, and to address uh, those concerns po for clarity. So we do not have here. How about here in the? Ayan, hello. Ayan, can you hear me? There we go. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, loud and clear. So we have one question here in the chat box. Wait, uh, well, uh, as we review our our questions for today, here is number fourteen. 
tanong ko lang po from from this is from Grace Alcano, Ma'am Grace from Caraga. Tanong ko lang po bakit sa COC3 ng caregiving assessment fee ay mas mahal sa full qualification assessment. This is uh, relative to the assessment fee for caregiving. So may we ask our sector of FOCA to respond on the said query. Uh, thank you, Jack. This is Fortune and I will, uh, I will be answering this question. Thank you, Ma'am Grace. Ma'am Grace, oh, Alak Alcano or Karagaasa. Ma'am, very good observation. And I think you are, uh, this caregiving qualification pertains to caregiving newborn to uh, preschooler. Uh, the same observation po nung ginagawa namin yung assessment fee, the same observation with the technical experts. If you will know, uh, COC3 is for toddlers. And yung full assessment, full assessment or para sa full qualification is a combination of yung apat na ages na, na clients, newborn, infant, toddler, and preschooler. So na, na, yung mga assessment tasks po doon ay uh, randomly pick up po doon sa sa apat na COCs na yun para sa full uh, qualification. Pero dito po sa COC3, ito po ay ay para talaga sa toddlers. And if you will note, ang ang mga gamit po ng toddlers ay expensive. Uh, yung uh, creep, yung milk nila, mas malaki po, mas madami po sila makukonsume compared sa infant and the newborn kasi parking po yun ang gagamitin sa assessment. And yung kanila pong mga gamit, um, mga, mga, mga toys nila, mas expensive po yun. So yun po yung naging reason, kaya po mas ma naging mahal po yung cost ng assessment fee ng COC3. And uh, uh, makakapag-attest po dyan ang ating mga technical experts who, who were with me when, we, when uh, drafting the assessment fee for caregiving newborn to preschooler in situ. So, Mom, did I answer your question clearly? Thank you, Pop. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Fort. Uh, Sidetrack ko lang po, no? Uh, there are some uh, responses here in the chat box from Ma'am uh, Barbie, also our colleague here in QSO. The TR for the domestic work and C2, uh, this is domestic work po pala, will be uploaded in the website after the national deployment. And then from Director Patty, thank you very much, Director Patty, po, uh, for responding here in the, our chat box. The requirement of Israel is the 760R program, which is the existing Caregiving NC2. It was TESDA's existing TR that was used in the agreement between DOLE and Israel around 2014. Now, as we move forward to the next question, also uh, rel related to the caregiving, uh, yes, uh, perhaps Sir Edwin and Mom Fort will be ayon, uh, respond on this. Good afternoon, Po. Uh, this is from Mom Jenny. Jenny from Jenny Lynn of Region 4A. Uh, question po, for example, nag-enroll and natapos ako ng training sa caregiving, newborn to pre-grade schooler and C2. Tapos gusto ko uli mag-aral ng caregiving, grade schooler to adolescent and C2. Do I need to take the basic and common since parehas lang ng learning content ng lahat ng specialization ng basic and common? If no, what is the purpose of repeating the same basic and common? If no, again, what is the provision of RPL to the basic and common? RPL po is recognition of prior learning. And uh, however, if it is yes, do we have a circular or provision so we can protect our trainees about this? Yun po, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Jenny, for that very well, uh, very well, uh, maganda pong ating inquiry po regarding dito. Perhaps we can receive response po uh, from our sectoral. Yeah. Ayo po. Zeh po, Director Jojo. Yes po. Uh, yeah, this is a very good point. And uh, Edwin, please uh, take note of this so that when we prepare the IG, the moment the test the board resolution shall be promulgated, then we will include this uh, this yes. provision. Yes, there will be there will be recognition of of ano of credits credits na kasi yan ang ang prior learning kasi is wala pa siyang uh, you you learned it somewhere then you present your ano ito 
they said only the credits within the same level of qualification lahat kasi sila NC2 so kung mayroon na nga, in fact the same this is the same issue that we are resolving with our trainers methodology ngayon na inaayos natin if you remember uh, being and Cherry na yung mga basic competencies in, initially na ilagay sa TM1 then nagpapare-pareho i raised that i raised uh, practical uh, specifically those questions ano uh, anong mangyayari kay nagpapare-pareho lang naman yan but since nandito na ito then we are going to have to make provision in the recognition of credits thank you for this ano thank you for this uh, observation and we appreciate this very much Maraming salamat, Director Jojo, uh, for uh, responding to that inquiry of Ma'am Jenny from 4A. So, and, and then, uh, as we move forward po, uh, there, is, uh, there is a suggestion, I believe this is a suggestion, from Sir Lino of Region 8. Can we have one common workshop for four caregiving qualifications due to the financial constraints in constructing building or new workshops? Uh, we have already we have already an existing na lumabas na ba yung ano uh, uh, being or sol yung sa shared uh, common facilities lumabas na ba yung ano circular yung draft na ginagawa natin being uh, or vencil kasi we have already ano we we <clears throat> na 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 na, 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 na na ano this is already ano na pick up na namin ito yung not not only with the same like katulad nitong sa caregiving but even with with vertically and horizontally related qualifications anong status ng draft yung yung ginagawa nating circular na yon bing o di kaya bensil or intercluster meeting Ah, so so it is it is now for it is now for for discussion and the intercluster that would be the last stage, stage. So I think I think that that circular will apply to the situation here. So intayin tayin lang natin na 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 pick up na ho namin itong mga concerns. Thank you. Again, maraming salamat po, Director Jojo, for that uh, response po. Oh, at least po, no, we really assure our, um, our, our participants here that we are listening and we are taking taking notes po of all your inquiries then as well. So we can address yeah. it. In, uh, fact, in fact, Jack, I, I really appreciate uh, na nagsusurface itong mga issues at least uh, ako, natutuwa rin ako dahil yung mga na-pick up na natin na ina-action ngayon are coming out the same issues. So at least may, may ano na tayo, mayroon na tayong action na ginawa niyan. And uh, pag numating na, just to explain to everyone the policy, policy formulation process dito sa executive office, uh, pag, pag tapos na sa policies and plans cluster, yung sa amin, sa sa QSO planning NITS at saka PLO aakyat naman ngayon yan sa intercluster that will be for the other executive office na nasa ibang cluster na nasa uh, TESD operation nandoon naman ang certification office nandoon ang uh, ano ba bang nandoon sa kabilang ano nandoon ang ROMO nandoon so pinag-uusapan na pa rin yan doon yung, yung mga proposed policy guidelines once na pumasa na yan <coughs> excuse me and that's that's the uh, I think final stage, and I am very positive then na uh, na papa na ano yan, that will that will be endorsed. Then that will now be. Ang susunod yan is gagawa na ng QS or ng sponsoring executive office kung saan ang gagaling yung policy recommendation ng CSW for the issuance now the drafting with the draft circular papipirmahan na namin yan kay kay DG. So this just gives you an idea na. Uh, ngayon, ang mga policies na lumalabas ay ma mabusising pinag-uusapan ng lahat ng mga executive directors at saka chiefs uh, before ito na issue So that this can really be, these policies can be uh, responsive to the needs of uh, the, the operations, the operating units. 
So, just giving you an idea. Thank you. No po. Thank you po for that, Director Jojo, for giving an overview no, on how are the ang bawat uh, training regulation na binubuo po natin o dinedeploy po natin ngayon ay masusi, uh, masusing pinag-usapan, pinag-aralan po ng kada opisina dito po sa executive offices. Maraming yeah. salamat. Hindi lang, hindi lang ng QSO, Jack, ang ano nito. Uh, lahat ho ito, pinag, ano, uh, tinalakay ho ito at nag-meeting maraming beses in preparation for this deployment kaya nga nakikita niyo kami dito na mga ano ang ang hindi lang nakakatin na executive director sa iyong may mga mga meetings with the DG at saka sa Senate lalo ngayon is budget hearing budget hearing time otherwise kung walang walang ano mas mas priority meetings nandito yan sila kasama because they would like also to know this the real situation in the area na yeah. Yes po. Opo, maraming salamat. This is a good time for our uh for our um DDIs and TBIs to be heard. Opo, para marinig din po natin kung ano po ba ang kung ano po ba ang pulso, ano po ba yung nakikita nila na maaaring ika-improve po or pwede pong na-overlook po ng uh, habang eh, dito po sa mga training regulations na to. Maraming salamat po. And now for the next inquiry again aligned with caregiving. Uh, may a uh, caregiving NC2 holder be qualified to be a trainer in caregiving for elderly NC2? Ayun, pwede po siguro natin, uh, ayan, for our sectoral focus, maybe they can respond on this, or Edwin, ma'am, for it. Come again, come again, uh, Jack. Saan um, na yun? As per, as per, Uh, Judge Corpus po, may a caregiving NC2 holder be qualified to be a trainer in caregiving for elderly NC2? Well, if if he meets the documentary requirements at saka ano na ano, uh, prescribed ng, na, na nakalagay sa requirements as set by the certification office, uh, I, I see no reason. Yeah, andito si Director Pati. Thank you, Director Pati. Director Pati, yes, ma'am. Yes, po, Director Pati, you may unmute po. Host, uh, host, okay, ano nyo kay Director Pati? Okay, okay na. Okay. Uh... Yan. Thank you. Um, kasi yung uh, specific, yung specialized caregiving NC2, nakapag-RLA na kami, no? And what happened was that um, those who were already trainers, assessors, NC2 holders for caregiving NC2, actually sila yung nag-participate dun sa RLA. Uh, if you were to ask me, yung requirements din kasi ng TR ang kailangan nating i-follow. So if the requirement is an NTC, NTTC or NC in elderly caregiving NC2, then they must be holders also of the speci uh, specialized qualification. So hindi automatic na pag caregiving NC2 ka na trainer assessor, pwede ka na sa specialized kailangan mo pa rin magka-NC din sa specialized uh, qualification. Thank you, Director Pati. Yun, yun ang sinasabi ko. For as long as you meet the requirements set forth na sa trainer's qualifications ng training regulations. Thank you. Thank you so much po, Sir Jojo and Director Pati. Uh, for the next question po, From Marie Bulatao, Carbenget. Matanghina ng mic mo, May. Hello? Yes po. Uh, next, uh, thank you po, Sir Jojo. Hello? Uh, questions from Carbenget. From Marie Bulatao. Ma'am, for upright handloom, can we possibly downgrade trainer qualifications of 
TTC to be NCCA recognized trainer or certified recognized cultural master considering that it is an heirloom industry. May we ask for, for someone to respond to sa ating query, Ma'am Che? Anong nakalagay sa TR, May? Sectoral focal uh, SOS please Anong nakalagay sa TR Sa trainer's requirement Yeah okay Go ahead Jerry um, I think hindi naririnig ka Jerry Sorry Okay um, Yeah For the trainer's qualification Na ating pong uh handloom uh if i may uh um what is written in the uh the tr po is that we it is really quite for them to have the nttc so for now um that is the Anong nakalagay sa TRB? sir uh we they need to have the tmc plus the nc so that they could be and also the industry experience for them to be a trainer on this area, uh, on the handloom upright, uh, we being NC2. Okay. So, ang masasabi lang po namin uh, in this case is that since this is promulgated document, so uh, as is po ito na iro-roll out. Wala pa rin. But, okay. But we are uh, think, taking note of uh, the, the, the being, concern. Being... Yes, Paul. Bing, we have we have an we have uh, the expert uh, raising her hand. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Sorry, yes, Paul. I think uh, what they meant was if nationally we have recognized and they've been given an award. Kumbaga parang na kulit gamaba. Award man for their ma exit. Napuputol, napuputol, putol ho kayo, ma'am. Hear me now. Pick up. Try ko lang electric fan. Nadadala siguro ng electric fan. <laughs> we recognize weavers and other art. So I think tama yun na if they're already national and they have the award na uh, gama to equivalent ng national artist award among the indigenous artist gawad bandilika ng bayan we have that talo pa yan ng kaya i think we should uh, recognize the art the weavers na recognized uh, nationally si ano sa ano phd level sila sa weave Napuputol talaga. Ma'am Ma Adis, medyo chapi-chapi po kayo. As... May... So... Okay. so Jackson. Pinipin niyo ko? Yes po, pero medyo ano nga rin po. Uh, I think uh, yung internet connection po ni Ma'am Alice is uh, fluctuating din po. Opo, medyo napuputol-putol din po sa end po namin. But yeah. you were saying, ma'am, that there is this particular, um, as I captured it, there's a particular recognition, a national recognition for um, officially, rec ano yung mga ating mga artists, ating mga weavers, no, na talagang ano, uh, prestigious, uh, prestigious recognition ito. And you are suggesting as part of the industry, this, this, this can be. Uh, yes, I saw... Um, ma'am... Uh being si director Patty is raising her hand. Yes, ma'am. Okay, director Patty. Uh, uh, I remember kasi merong I don't know what that is about IP uh anong tawag sa kanila masters or something. Cultural master po. Uh, uh, recognition of, of cultural uh, master. Meron po dati tayong pinopursue ganyan. Should, uh, we, there was a implementing guidelines already on that and then we were um tasked to uh, coordinate with the NCCA because the, the NCCA really um, 
parang they are the ones who give that uh, recognition on the cultural masters. But unfortunately, the NCCA never got back to us. And uh, But we have already the design for the cultural masters that uh, we will also issue as soon as uh, makuha natin yung sa NCCA. But uh, we never got a response from the NCCA kasi siguro nun nagpalit-palit na sila ng mga leaders, ng mga chair. Oo. But uh, on that, so on that matter, I think Keso should come up na din yes. with uh, the recognition not only for the cultural masters, like for example, for cookery, kung mga chefs na sila, international chefs, do we need to give them pa na, an assessment or even the yeah. portfolio assessment to issue them an NC? Parang yun yung clamor ng industry ngayon na sila ay mm. maandun na. Uh, what can we give them? Uh, dapat siguro may guidelines tayo on that, ano, Director Jojo. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh I know uh, I will pick I will pick it up I will pick this up director party to to ano uh, pursue whatever has been started mm -hmm. sa ano uh, hindi lang sa NCCA hindi lang sa ano na ito generalize na lahat para mm -hmm. mapakinabangan ito ng lahat ng mga experts actually yun ang yun ang palagi kong sinasabi sa sa mga experts yung lalo na yung mga taas na level na experts is, ano bang magagawa naman naman ng test para sa inyo for all the, for all the help and the assistance that you have been giving us and so let uh, let me let i uh, know uh we will we will work on this and thank you thank you for this uh for putting this on i uh, uh parang na officially ano ito ngayon notice and we will pursue this uh being with with the ongoing with the ongoing revisions of the pttqf also i think if pass magandang ipasok ito director pati sa pttqf na ano magkaroon yung, ng oh, oh, yung, oh, <laughs> yung hinihingi ko na ano quality ano assessors qualification framework but uh, yeah. yung yung ating national experts actually given na yung policy meron na tayong policy na yeah. meron silang grandfather NC but for the yeah. other renowned persons <laughs> na uh, hindi naman naging expert yon what can we give them ang ang iniisip ko nga director Pati is hindi lang yung nag-develop ng cuts pati oh, yung okay. nag-develop ng ng PR na ah. na ano na na talagang ano uh, impeccable ang qualifications oh, na ano impeccable oh, na pa talaga <laughs> oh yung talagang wala ka nang masasabi wala ka nang mahigit ang mas hihigit sa sa kakayahan nila so that's what i yeah. have been uh, working on so uh, being please take note of this and uh, let's work fast on this no sa ano okay thank you maraming salamat po for for putting this on board aayusin ho aayusin ho namin lahat ito ng mga executive offices thank you Thank you very much po uh, sa uh, kay Ma'am Bing, uh, kay Director Jojo, kay Director Patty po, and also of course to our technical expert, uh, si Ma'am Alice. Thank you very much po for addressing our um, our query po oh, ng ating participant regarding sa handloom. No? Ayun po, maraming salamat now. Uh, we will move forward. Ayun, Miss Mai, opo. Oh, Would you like to add on? Ayan, tatawid na po tayo sa Domestic Works NC2 naman po. So, reiterate lang po, we have... Uh, uh, Jack? Yes po, Director Jojo. Meron isa dito from, ano, from NCR. Ah, At okay. ano? Uh, NCR ba ito? Uh, sa Region 5? Yes, ma'am. Kay Mr. Tobias Obrero. Yung question pa rin niya. The same ito sa question kanina ni Mr. Severino ng CNSAT. So, on shared facilities sa, ano, yung vertically at horizontally related uh, qualifications. So, ito, the, the, these are really related qualifications. Um, palabas na ho yan and that will be, ano, that will be, we'll pursue that. Thank you. There we have it. Ayan, thank you po, Sir Tobias and uh, Sir uh, Director Jojo for responding on the query po uh, ni uh, Sir Tobias.
Okay, so we move forward to domestic works po. Alright, so from uh, given by Ma'am Nelly of Religion 5, uh, clarification lamang po, if a candidate uh, for domestic work ay nag-apply for assessment under full qualification, pag ang result po ba nito is not yet competent, makakakupa po ba siya ng COC or hindi po? And also, yung elective po ba ng domestic work ay dapat pumili siya or mandatory na i-take up po? May, uh, perhaps our sectoral focal for domestic work may respond to this po. Yeah, we would like to hear. Uh, ano, ulit, ano ulit yung, hindi ko makita yung tanong dito sa chat box, uh, Jackie. Uh, Opo, okay po. Um, dito po, ang nakalagay po dito, um, from Ma'am Nemi po, from, of Region 5 po, if ang candidate po ba sa domestic work ay nag-apply for assessment under full qualification and ang naging result is not yet competent, makakakuha pa po ba siya, makakakuha po ba siya ng COC or hindi po? And so domestic yun, work? Po, sa domestic work yan? Opo, yes sir. Okay, uh... Sol, uh, o oh, ano, sino ba ang ano sa assessment and certification? Sol, are you around? Also po, I have to, ano po? Uh, siguro, ano, Director Jojo. Okay. Yes, yes. Pwede rin Oo. kami yatang sumagot yes, yun. Yes, yes. Oo, kasi meron namang dinefine kanina nakalist yung ano, di ba? That there are clusters of competency doon sa domestic work. Actually, there was a time na kinlarify yan uh, when uh, kung may uh, competency na binagsakan niya, so kailang, pwede siyang mag-retake ng assessment only on that particular COC kung saan siya bumagsak. So, uh, that means pwede siyang isyuhan ng COC for the other COCs na pinasana niya. I think ganun din yung presentation kanina eh, by COC mm -hmm. yung ano, may clustering of may cluster of competencies and domestic work. So, for all qualifications naman, pag may clusters of competency, iisyuhan nyo ng COC kung saan lang siya mm -hmm. bumagsak. Yeah, I think okay. that's clear. Thank you, Director Pati. <clears throat> Meron pang isa? Ano yung kaduktong? Yes po. Ano po? Actually, uh, dalawa po yung nagtanong nito. In the existing PR for DOM works, elective competencies are not required Ayun. in the program registration. So, pag bago po, ba, uh, bago po itong TR na to, mandatory na po ba to include the elective competencies? This is also in sa pangalawang tanong kanina po. Elective nga eh. Di ba? <laughs> At saka yung mga electives na yun, actually, I, uh, the Keso should uh, answer this, but as I understand it, the electives were called out from other qualifications then So meron dyan on landscaping, on agriculture production pa nga, may mga ganon. Sa iba-ibang qualifications din kinuha yung electives. Uh, uh, can I, sir? Ayun, si Edwin. Uh, in addition... In addition to what uh, Director Pat is telling, yung elective competency na yung kasi uh, was derived from former uh, domestic workers na nagsasabi na yun yung demand na kwan before. Yun yung talagang uh, elective na kailangan kunin if in case na mag-request yung, yung mga employers. Yun na mabenta before. So nakeri pa rin siya kasi uh, in some other countries, talaga meron pa namang mga potted plants, may mga yung caring for the pets, talaga meron po yan. Uh, and an ad uh, addition pa rin, ano, Edwin, kasi yung history niyan domestic work, actually that's um, also a work uh, before with the Department of Labor and Employment. They were, I think, working on... Uh, 
how to increase or how to uh, propose higher wages for the domestic work, especially for overseas uh, deployment. So ang um, kanilang proposal is that for additional competencies, they will have to be paid uh, commensurately. So dapat may additional but that's a work of the Department of Labor in their negotiations with the overseas employment. Kaya tayo, kaya tayo nag-develop ng TR na merong mga electives na sinasabi pag marunong sila nitong additional uh, competencies na to, pwedeng mas mataas yung sweldo nila. But I don't think there has ever, uh, there was uh, any agreement on that with any country pa so far. But yon ang nangyayari is those who know extra competencies, they are appreciated naman by their employers. We just don't know if they are paid uh, extra or not, but at least. So, but uh, ano lang, to be uh, clear about it, yung sa tanong, since they are electives, they are not mandatory to be uh, the uh, standards to be used for registration. So, ang atin lamang nire-require for registration would be the basic common and core competency. So good if they can also provide the other electives, but it's not mandatory. So you. Um, you. And, and also, ano lang, just advanced information. Uh, we will be discussing this further pa with the Dome uh, Department of Migrant Workers. Sinasabi lang, well, verbally, merong isang USEC doon na nagsasabi, we will make it mandatory for the domestic workers to be trained first before assessment. So, gagawin nila mandatory training. But, kasi ina-RPL natin yung iba ngayon, di ba? Even if they didn't go to, through formal training, ang ginagawa nilang training para sa assessment lang, one half day, one day, uh, nire-review sila doon sa ating assessment tool. Uh, but now, they will have to go through the, the full training. But that's, ano pa, sabi lang, uh, verbally sinabi lang, wala pa silang action on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, if I may add, Jack. Uh, yes, for, uh, for the competencies, this is uh, country specific. There's a need for the, the candidate or the would-be worker can opt for assessment in the two elective competencies for so, uh, Director Jojo, if I may. Yes, yes. So, um, following what uh, Sol mentioned, because the clamor really of um, most of the, well, these are recruitment agencies, is that our uh, training regulations for domestic work should be country specific, meaning. Uh, for example, yung cooking meals, eh, hindi sila magluluto ng for the Western country kung sa Middle East naman sila pupunta or hindi or sa Asia, sa Hong Kong sila ma madideploy. So yun sana yung um, clamor nila. But I know the response of the experts and the queso there would be minimum standard. So maybe um, the queso can elaborate on that. Kasi yung mga PBIs can register programs na yung kanilang program ay catering to a specific country. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Yeah. Pag-aaralan pag namin yan, uh, Director Pati, uh, how we can enhance that. And considering the need for yung, yung credentialing, siguro pag inoffer pag nakalagay sa CBC, at the time of the program registration, then uh, the, the TBIs uh, should issue the corresponding certificate of training for the elective. Na, kasi, unless otherwise, nakalagay sa certificate of training yung unit of competency na elective. Hindi nga lang elective eh. Kasi uh, core competency na to, for example, yeah. cook meals. But the meals that will be taught will be specific na to a particular country nga. Hindi siya yung uh, mga, for example, Western ang ating mga meals eh, na, naka, na tinuturo. Or kung hindi man, pwede nilang ituro ng institution, but our assessment 
is a uh, standard, di ba? So, hindi siya specific. Anyway, uh, so, Edwin, uh, Edwin, let us ano, subject this for further ano, for further enhancements and discussions. Kasi this is, yeah. ano, this is very, ano, this is very important to to respond to the to to international market. Oh, nga po, sir. Uh, I would agree to what Director Patty is telling us na yung yung kwan, minimum standard nga yung nakalagay doon sa core competency kaya nga generic yung nakalagay. So yung detalye niya should be in the curriculum ngayon. Uh, the question is kung yung sinasabi nga niya although na na articulate na na kwan na doon sa CBC yung sa assessment side naman ang isang titignan natin on how that would it would that be kasi kung uh, institutional assessment yan ma, ma kwan yan pero it is a national assessment that we are talking dito eh anyway let us reserve our thoughts for our internal discussion kasi baka ma pick up yan ng iba na ano and then that might be misunderstood as the already the, the policy. Uh, but uh, ano lang for purposes of ano for information of the press yeah, vocals, yeah. they of should course, be open. Uh, they should be open to the curriculum that uh, would yes. be specific to. Uh, yeah, lalo na pag ang ang institution na ang nagpropose mm-hmm. dahil may may ano sila may network sila sa mm-hmm. Mga ano other countries please let us be supportive also to our ano TTIs TVIs mm-hmm. Nandito ba yung t- mga experts niyo Si Amy for example I think they're catering to Hong Kong so mga ganon Anyways uh, ano lang to clarify also with the press focus that they really have to look at the market mm-hmm. Yeah thank you at saka pag pagkailangan niyo ng technical support uh, feel free to reach us at magtutulungan kami Thank you very much for Director Patty, uh, Director Jojo, uh, for providing answers, clarifications po regarding po dun sa concern po natin sa DOMWORKS. Uh, meron pa lang pong isa pang pahabol po regarding dito rin po. Uh, may memorandum po na ibinaba ang Office of the Director General na hindi na magre-require ng Certificate of Employment para sa mga applicants of assessment for DOMWORKS NC2. Paano po ito pagpasok ng migrated qualification since mas detailed po kasi yung nire-require na sa migrated qualification? Again po, ayan, this came from uh, Ma'am Cynthia, Ma'am Cynthia Guamos. Muli po, may memorandum po na ibinaba ang Office of the Director General na hindi na magre-require ng Certificate of Employment para sa mga applicants of assessment for domestic work and CEU. Paano po ito papasok ng may paano po ito pagpasok ng migrated qualification since mas detailed po kasi yung nire-require na sa migrated qualification. May we hear from uh from our sectoral focus? Is there a conflict of policy? May conflict ng policy ba? Meaning, yung sa issue ones and then sa requirements ngayon, may conflict ba doon? Kasi kung wala namang conflict, then I see no problem. I think first answer, if I may. If I On the context of the PR, the competencies uh common and the basic competencies are also the same as that of the uh, domestic worker. Ano ito? Assessment requirements uh, sol? May sinasabi po sa detail bagong, ang bagong PR ng domestic In fact, the 
are the same pa rin po with that of the all of the all domestic work and city. So we are asking if there's a political policy. I don't think so. So na yeah, so ang ano lang diyan kung hindi na nila require ay uh, i think uh, can we ano can we uh, uh, Cynthia is raising her hand from NCR Manila uh, po, host uh, yeah okay bali po kasi uh, doon po sa memorandum hindi po kasi nire-require na na kuhani namin o hingi namin doon sa applicant uh, o dun sa candidate for assessment yung uh, certificate of employment kasi local nga uh, usually local locally lang po yung kanyang employment so ngayon po kasi may requirements doon sa uh, sa bagong may graded qualification na uh, two years ba yung may require na uh, uh, experience niya So yung proofs lang po sana para i-attach namin dun sa application documents, hihingin pa ba na, hihingin, hihingin na po ba namin kung industry experience yung kanya pong uh, proof para siya ay makapag-assessment. Uh, anong nilagay niyo sol sa TR? Sol, or sino bang uh, assessment for sectoral focal nito? Sa'yo ba ito, Fortune? Sa akin po siya, sir. Ha? Uh, Sa'yo, Pao? Sa'yo ito, yes. Pao? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't, believe, I don't believe there's a conflict, sir. Uh, because sabi naman po dito sa Section 4, Uh, any of the following naman po are qualified for for assessment um included na mute si Paul nawala na disconnected Oh, ka pa. Ay, sorry, sorry po na, na, na click ka po. So bale po dito po sa section 4 naka indicate po dito experienced workers who have gained competencies in domestic work at least two years within the last five. I sorry, at least two years within the last five years. So pag dito um hiningi pa yung COE or certificate of employment. Uh, I believe siguro Will there be a conflict naman po? I don't believe there there will be, will be a conflict okay. naman po siguro. Kasi nga ang ano, uh, hindi na nire-require yan yung certificate of employment as hmm. per uh, as per uh, memo from the ODG. Pero diyan ngayon sa TR ay yun yun ang yun ang nakikitang conflict eh. Uh, kaya ko tinanong. So uh, is nag magre-require na ng employment certificate. When, when was the memo? Is is this ano? Is this a requirement for even for the Tibet graduates na nag-training ng domestic work yung yung employment certificate ah uh, dalawa po kasi yung requirement natin sa national certificate ah uh, uh, sa sec- section 4 ng training regulation para sa assessment ah uh, it's either training certificate po or industry experience kung wala po siyang training certificate So employment experience, uh, industry experience po. So uh, nila require po namin before is certificate of employment. Kaya lang po uh, last year, yun nga po may ibinaba pong memorandum na uh, hindi na namin kailangan hingin yung certificate of employment doon sa mga lalo doon sa domestic works kasi nga uh, parang pinap- parang 
Uh, napap napapahirapan pa namin sa pagsisecure po nung, nung COP. Kaya po, nung time na yon hindi po na nire-require yung certificate. Yes. So ngayon po ba, since meron po kasing uh, bagong re uh, additional requirement ng two years, so kailangan po sana ma-validate din namin yung mga application documents ng mga aplikante, especially kung hindi po sila galing ng training. Ngayon, kung hindi po namin i-require, application form lang din po yun na nakastate lang yung work experience dun sa application documents nila. Yun po. Anong, anong, anong provision sa TR, uh, Pao? The provision of DR, sir, is in Section 4. Yung po yung number one uh, experienced workers sir who gained competencies in the in domestic work for at least two years within the last five years po. Okay. So pwede, uh, pwede yan na hindi certificate of employment eh yung may info sheet na ini issue dati yung POEA ayon di ko na alam sa DMW parang proof na sila ay nakapag work abroad. May, may mga ganun. So it's not really just limited to the certificate of employment. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, we will we will we will uh, study that thoroughly. Uh, we will just ano clarify that provision in case na hindi maliwanag yan. Katulad ng ginawa natin sa bookkeeping uh, NC3 nung yung bachelor's degree requirement na ano pinaisuhan ni DDG Rose ng clarification so we'll will will do that uh, para in the interest of time uh, we will look into this then we'll we will give you feedback ano uh, Cynthia on this I thank you, you. um if I may director Jojo yes meron, yes director Pate. meron kasing nagtanong kung open na ang private institutions uh, open ang register um, eto fresh na fresh kakababa lang this uh, supersedes yung memo 154A nakalagay dito effective immediately propos shall be allowed to accept process and approve new applications for program registration from private DBIs this is on domestic this is on domestic work domestic ang kasunod nun, corresponding sanctions and penalties, blah, blah, blah. So I uh, would like to remind, kasi itong domestic work really is, uh, for me, dito sa amin, sa CO talagang binibigyan namin ng special attention because of so many things that are happening na medyo hindi natin pinapansin sa field. So please, 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 um, eto nandito naman ang bulk sa NCR so I know this is a lot of work for the NCR just be very careful and be very vigilant uh, dito sa ating mga institutions marami naman sila talaga na who are seriously implementing according to our standards pero marami din na nag-a-abuse uh, and ang number one abuse din na ginagawa nila is yung charging so very high fees Kaya yun ang isang uh, concern din natin. So, yun. Lalabas ito ngayon. Papadala ko na dun sa uh, yeah, record. Uh, uh, timely. So, timely. Uh, uh, thank you. Timely. Okay. Thank you, Director Pati. Thank you so much po, Director Jojo, Ma'am Director Pati, and of course, kay Ma'am Cynthia Guamos. Uh, for the next question po, we have here... May ma, 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 ano mahina ka? Hello. Okay. Hello, we uh, we have question po from Region 7 Bohol, Sir uh, Sir Pagaran. Good afternoon po. Regarding po sa number of years required po ng isang trainer at assessor, kapag po ba hindi napasok sa last number of years ang industry experience ng isang trainer or assessor, hindi na po ba siya pwede isuhan ng NTTC or Assessor's Accreditation considering po na renewal na po ito and nag full-time teaching na po siya at present. Also, kay from Carpo, from Mabel Panganiban, for the application of NTTC, it was indicated that the certificates for industry experience must be within five years. Same rin po ba kapag COE as trainer ang submitted? 
may we request po someone from to respond po sa query ng ating kasamahan. Nasaan lang sa mga sectoral focals? Yes po, uh, actually for the uh, experienced workers, yun, po, yung, yun yung po yung tanong, no? Uh, yes po, kailangan din po within the last five years din po siya. At least two years within the last five years. Yun po yung specifically na naka-state naka po sa ating implementing guidelines for this DOM work. Oh, so, oh is this for trainer? Oh, sorry. That, that is for assessor. Sir Edwin, for trainer po. Uh, uh, renewal yan, hindi ba sa CO supposedly mag kwan yan? Sa, sa atin, we're only setting yung concern eh. Entry, requ oh, entry requirement. Oh, oh. Eh, kung renewal yan, that should be the concern nung CO. Ano bang policy natin dyan? Ano yun? Si uh, Janet Aki sagot yun. Oh. Ano ulit yung ano, tanong? Sorry. Napanggit kasi ni Edwin na si OOO. Uh, regarding yung po sa number of years... Uh, sorry, Sir Jojo. Sige, sige. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sige. Regarding po sa number of years required po ng isang trainer at assessor, kapag po ba hindi na pasok sa last number of years ang industry experience ng isang trainer or assessor, hindi na po ba siya pwedeng isuhan ng NTTC or Assessor's Accreditation considering po na renewal na po ito at nag-full-time teaching na po siya at present. Also, for application of NTTC, it was indicated that the certificates for industry experience must be within five years. Same rin po ba kapag COE as trainer ang submitted? Uh, again, that will depend on what's written in the training regulations and what's required to the training regulations. If it says two years experience, uh, that and the two years experience would either be industry or training as a trainer. May mga ganun kasi dun sa TRA iba-iba. But for me, actually, yung sana inilalagay dun is industry work experience. But there are some TRs which states that a training uh, experience, so as a trainer, or uh, yun, yun, considered yun. And then, we have also the provisional, may nakita rin ako kanina, provisional NTTC. So it still, uh, it still applies yung provisional NTTC based on eyewear. Kasi yung eyewear, industry work experience, meron niyang equivalence is A, yung uh, industry work experience. So paki go back to those uh, circulars. At yung reminder ko lang, yung mga na-issuehan ng provisional NTTC, two years lang yung uh, effectivity ng provisional NTTC. So, uh, dapat wala na, hindi na valid yung kanyang pagiging trainer. You have to really also be, uh, fa ano? ano bang tawag doon? You have to make sure that uh, you are monitoring this well etong mga ganitong issuances. Otherwise, baka mawala sila dun sa registry. Eh, hindi, hindi pa naman namin iniisa-isa yan, pero kung uh, tignan namin yan, baka mawala sila sa registry. So better kayo na ang mga nasa ROPOS ang magpingin uh, yan. Pag nawala kasi sa registry, mawawala sa T2MIS at kung may scholarship sila, hindi sila mabibigyan ng scholarship if the trainer is yung walang NTTC. So uh, better uh, take care of it na. Be responsible na lang to look into that. Thank you very much, Director Patty and uh, Sir Pao as well for uh, guiding our participants uh, relative to the issue ones and the application of NTTC po. Muli, maraming salamat po, Director Patty, for sharing your knowledge uh, on uh, to our participants po on those uh, qualifications and concerns that has been raised by our participants. Uh, maraming salamat po for your time.
for being with us today din po. Um, also, i- Uh, we would like to ask if uh, Director Jojo would like, before we conclude uh, our time today, uh, would you like to uh, give message po? Or ano po? Uh, uh, ano nyo na kasi, ano, tuloy nyo na, Jack, kasi okay. ano, uh, nagsawa na yan sila sa boses ko. <laughs> okay. okay. Mukas naman, mukas naman. O, yes. sige. Uh, po, thank you very much again. Uh, that salamat, was... salamat lang sa mga ano, mga kasamahan ko sa executive offices na who are here uh, joining us, Director Patty, Director Janet, Director uh, Juliet, and and the other uh, executive directors who have been with us today. Uh, ako ay lubos na natuto at nagpapasalamat for their support given to QS. O maraming maraming salamat po. <clears throat> Thank you so much po, Sir Jojo. Uh, and that concludes the Q&A portions. We thank you for your active participation and we appreciate the productive discussion from our participants. We still have the second day. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Jojo. Thank of you course. all. It's, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Yeah. Again po, uh, reminder lang po to those who haven't completed yet the attendance sheet. The link is shared in chat. Uh, this will be one of our bases po for the issuance of the certificate. Again, we may be able to accommodate all questions for that. All remaining Thank you. consolidated and addressed officially in writing. Yes, Jack. Ayan. Uh, muli po, maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga participants also uh, for uh, rep- sa ating mga representatives from executive offices who have joined us here, gave their time and expertise, and also for our technical experts uh, for being with us today. Maraming salamat po. This is well appreciated po. Uh, this gives uh, more meaning to the uh, national deployment po ng ating mga newly promulgated DR scats and the assets Peace. Don't forget tomorrow, still the same thing, po. We'll see each other again. Uh, we will be opening the Zoom, uh, the Zoom platform as early as um 8:30, 8 o'clock to 8:30. So please be there as early as possible. Also, as we will have um as we as we conclude the 2022 national deployment. Maraming salamat. Thank you.